The life of every Uchiha from Naruto. The Uchiha clan is one of the four noble clans of Konohagakure, reputed to be the village's strongest because of their Sharingan and natural battle prowess. After helping found Konoha decades ago, the Uchiha grew increasingly isolated from the village's affairs, culminating in most of their deaths during the Uchiha clan downfall. Few Uchiha now survive into the present day. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of every Uchiha. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, do us a favor and double check that you are still subscribed if you have subscribed before. YouTube has been a little tricky lately, so this is the best way to make sure that you see all of our videos. The Omagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Baru Uchiha Born into the Uchiha clan, Baru was one of its few members who were able to awaken the Sharingan in his youth, as well as his own Mangekyo Sharingan. During the continuous struggle between Shinobi clans, Baru and his clansmen faced an opposing force who quickly wiped out Rai Uchiha's comrades with a trap. However, Rai nullified the outcome by sacrificing one of his eyes in order to use Izanagi. After the enemies were defeated, Baru challenged Rai for the leadership of their group and killed him using his own Izanagi. However, he was killed by his other clansmen when he was just celebrating his victory. Fugaku Uchiha Fugaku Uchiha was a shinobi of Konohagakure. He was the head of the Uchiha clan as well as the leader of the Konoha military police force. Background During the Third Shinobi World War, shinobi from other nations trembled at the mention of Fugaku's nickname of Wicked Eye Fugaku. In the final weeks of the war, Fugaku took his four-year-old son Itachi to the battlefield to see a mountain of corpses, with the purpose of showing Itachi the reality of the world he lived in as a shinobi. In the anime, during the war, a dear friend of Fugaku died in battle, allowing him to awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan, a fact he decided to keep hidden from everyone. In the aftermath of the war, while villagers mourned its dead at the Konoha Cemetery, a clansman informed Fugaku that there were voices to install him as the fourth Hokage as the third Hokage intended to retire. Fugaku then questioned the man on what they should do with Kakashi Harake possessing their clan's dojutsu. Understanding that Obito Uchiha fought bravely, he decided to respect the boy's wishes and let Kakashi keep his gift. When Fugaku's wife Mikoto gave birth to their second son, with Hiruzen's blessing, Fugaku proudly named the baby Sasuke after the third Hokage's father. With the nine-tailed demon fox's attack, the village accused the Uchiha clan of orchestrating the attack, as they did not take action against the tailed beast. In the anime, this was because of orders from Danzo Shimura to focus all the Uchiha's efforts solely on protecting the villagers. This, combined with the Uchiha being relocated further away from the village, caused a rift between the village and the Uchiha clan. Despite this, the villagers still admired Fugaku and the Uchiha clan's efforts of maintaining peace. This did not stop Fugaku from conspiring a coup d'etat that would allow the Uchiha clan to take control of the village out of spite. Eventually, Fugaku placed Itachi as a spy in the Anbu to pass on information back to the clan. However, Itachi secretly betrayed the Uchiha and became a double agent, leaking information right back to the village. Recognizing Itachi's prodigious mind and talent, Fugaku began training him regularly, amazed when he mastered the fire-released Great Fireball technique on his first try after witnessing it only once. Seeing such potential in Itachi and being his eldest son, hence the successor of the clan, Fugaku focused most of his attention on him, even defending Itachi when he was suspected of killing Shisui Uchiha. However, the two had a falling out when Itachi lost hope in the clan, leading to Fugaku to shift his attention to Sasuke, even teaching him how to use the traditional fire release techniques of their clan, and was impressed at how Sasuke was able to master the technique after just one week. Sasuke was finally able to enjoy his father's company, but Fugaku advised him not to follow in Itachi's footsteps. After another clan meeting about the coup d'etat, Fugaku called Itachi to speak with him privately. He revealed that the stone tablet within the Naka shrine held secrets to a better world for all, but required an evolved Sharingan to read it at all, revealing the truth about his acquisition of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Knowing of his son's hesitance for bloodshed and reluctance to attack the village, he expressed his desire for this revolution to end without any deaths, insisting that with Itachi's help, they could achieve that. Further proving his point, he revealed that he never told anyone in the clan of his Mangekyo Sharingan, in fear that they would ask him to use its power to take control of the Nine Tails to use to attack Konoha. During the Uchiha clan downfall, Fugaku quickly realized Itachi was behind this attack and confronted him via a clone, 
expressing their respective views. Itachi then confronted his parents, but Fugaku and Mikoto did not resist, and told Itachi that they were still proud of him, and to promise to take care of Sasuke before they let Itachi kill them. Fugaku was later found laying dead on top of his wife's corpse. Personality As leader of the Uchiha, Fugaku was focused on the clan's interests and welfare, and had a strong sense of responsibility. His son, Sasuke, saw him as a stern and uncaring man, while he was seen as a father figure to the rest of the clan. As Itachi was his successor as the head of the clan, Fugaku spent much of his time focusing on the development of his eldest and little time with his youngest. Sasuke trained constantly in order to get his father's attention and approval. Near the end of his life, Fugaku had switched his attention to Sasuke, having lost hope in the wayward Itachi. He was only impressed by great feats and rarely praised anyone, having high expectations. Fugaku was very serious, hardly smiling most of the time, to which he showed notable distaste towards Itachi when he would shirk his duties like attending meetings and missions. While outwardly Fugaku seemed strict and neglectful towards his eldest and youngest sons respectively, coupled with his devotion and focus to his clan's welfare led him to seem hateful and non-negotiable, he was still a very caring individual to his sons. According to Mikoto, when she and Fugaku were alone, Fugaku would mostly, if not only, talk about Sasuke. While always trying to motivate Sasuke to improve, he failed to see Sasuke's desire to be acknowledged as his son rather than compared to Itachi. He loved both his sons so dearly that when he saw Itachi slaughter their clan, he gave Itachi a chance for an explanation. After realizing he was doing this to safeguard Sasuke's life rather than resisting death as he did not want to hurt his eldest son, he and his wife willingly allowed Itachi to execute them in exchange for securing Sasuke's future and merely asking Itachi to take care of his youngest child. Fugaku also demonstrated great remorse for the turn Itachi's life had taken, blaming himself for the pain Itachi had to endure after reflecting that Itachi could have been the first Uchiha Hokage. Sadly admitting his burdening Itachi with the Uchiha clan's mission had stolen his son's future from him. In the anime, Fugaku inherited much of the will of fire. He genuinely wanted to preserve peace in Konoha, going along with the relocation despite the Uchiha clan's protests not to let the situation in Konoha worsen. He even went as far as to instruct his fellow clan members to leave Kakashi alone, who had been recently implanted with a Sharingan from Obito, wishing to honor Obito's dying decision. He asked Hiruzen to name his second son after Hiruzen's father. He was also much more wise than his clan, willing to cooperate with the relocation if the village would quell their suspicions over time, but eventually lost his patience. Even after agreeing with his plan's desire for revolution, he expressed his dismay at going about it in a way that involved the bloodshed of civilians, hoping to end it quickly and with as little harm as possible. He even chose to keep his Mangekyo Sharingan a secret from his clan in fear that it would drive them to seek greater power through immoral means. Hazuki Uchiha Hazuki Uchiha was a member of the Uchiha clan before the founding of Konohagakure. And that's it. That's all the show has said about Hazuki. Inabi Uchiha Alongside Yashiro and Teka Uchiha, Inabi questioned Itachi Uchiha about his whereabouts during the time when Shisui Uchiha supposedly committed suicide. He told Itachi that they all had an intention of duly investigating the matter, and when they presented Shisui's alleged suicide note, he stated that for someone who wielded the Sharingan, it would be no problem to forge such a note. They then left the note with Itachi, telling him to ask the Anbu to investigate the matter as well. As the men left, they passed snide, suggestive comments about Itachi's involvement in the matter, which Itaki took offense to and attacked them. Fed up with Itachi, the men asked Fugaku who had just arrived to issue the order to arrest Itachi. However, after Itachi apologized and Fugaku offered the excuse that Itachi was worn out from his other duties, the men left. Inabi and the rest of the clan were later killed during the Uchiha clan downfall. In the Book of Dark Knight, Itachi killed Inabi's wife before either were aware of his presence. Inabi attempted to attack Itachi with a fire jutsu, but Itachi cut off his head before the flames could leave his mouth. Itachi Uchiha Itachi Uchiha was a shinobi of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan that served as an Anbu captain. He later became an international criminal after murdering his entire clan, sparing only his younger brother Sasuke. He afterwards joined the international criminal organization known as Akatsuki, whose activity brought him into frequent conflict with Konoha and its ninja, including Sasuke, who sought to avenge their clan by killing Itachi. Following his death, Itachi's motives were revealed to be more complicated than they seemed, and that his actions were only ever in the interest of his brother and village, making him remain a loyal shinobi of Konohagakure to the very end. Itachi was the first child born to Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha, 
His early childhood was marked with violence. When he was four years old, the Third Shinobi World War waged, and he witnessed firsthand many of the war's casualties. The death and destruction he experienced at such a young age traumatized Itachi and made him a pacifist, leading to him training non-stop to achieve his dreams of becoming a ninja among ninja in order to erase fighting from the world. At age five, after becoming a big brother to Sasuke, Itachi was approached by Shisui, who offered to train together. Soon, the two became best friends, forming a brother-like bond as they continued to teach each other new tricks. During the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, he was home alone looking after Sasuke, followed by Itachi rescuing Mikoto from falling debris, and in the anime, seeking shelter with Izumi. The Nine-Tailed's attack had soured relations between Konoha's leadership and the Uchiha, the former believing the latter to be responsible. The Uchiha were relocated to the edge of the village, isolating them from the rest of the village and making it easier to monitor them. At age 6, Itachi enrolled into the academy, where he consistently scored the highest in each subject and quickly learned any skill taught to him, resulting in him being praised as the best of his generation. After four months, his teachers unanimously agreed to let him take the graduation exam early due to Itachi being more than advanced enough for Genin level, which he passed later that month. During this time, he began seriously studying the history of the world, gaining a great appreciation for it. On the day he graduated as the youngest post-war graduate, he was approached by Danzo Shimura, who assessed Itachi's thinking. Joining Team 2, Itachi went on to honing his skills to Chunin level, leading to him drawing the attention of Konoha's leaders. Meeting the criteria, Fugaku allowed him to sit in on clan meetings in the Naka Shrine basement. Nearly a year since graduating, Itachi had mastered ninjutsu to the extent his missions went too easy, though Yuki Minazuki didn't recommend him for the Chunin exams. After turning 8, as Team Toon's Genin had distinguished themselves the most during the year, they were tasked with guarding the Fire Daimyo during his annual trip to Konoha. During the mission, the convoy was attacked by a masked individual who killed Tenma Izumo before Itachi, resulting in him awakening his Sharingan, which he mastered at the same age. At age 10, Konoha officials allowed Itachi to compete in the Chunin exams by himself, which he passed, obviously, and became a Chunin. At age 11, he entered the Anbu, which is like the secret police. <laughs> Itachi's accomplishments were a source of great pride for his family, his father viewing him as proof of the Uchiha's future prosperity and his brother viewing him as a model to live up to. Itachi spent a great deal of his time with Sasuke, training with him, though rarely actually training him, and giving him the recognition their father did not. However, for all the attention he received, few truly understood Itachi, believing his isolation to be a result of the gap between his abilities and not his dissatisfaction with the shinobi's life of conflict. Eventually, the Uchiha's disdain for their unfair treatment led them to plan a coup d'etat, Fugaku, head of the Uchiha and the coup's chief conspirator, encouraged Itachi's advancement into the Anbu's ranks as a means of spying on the village. Itachi, however, knew an Uchiha coup would lead to intervention from other villages and would ultimately start another world war, something he could not support. He instead became a double agent, reporting the Uchiha's actions to the Third Hokage and the Konoha Council in the hopes it would help them find a peaceful resolution. Itachi shared the burden of betraying his clan with Chisui, but as time went on, it became increasingly clear that peace could not be achieved. Chisui intended to use his Koto Amats Kami on the Uchiha's leaders to compel them to negotiate, but his right eye was stolen by Danzo before he had the chance. His own options exhausted, Chisui entrusted his remaining eye to Itachi and begged him to protect the village and their family name before drowning himself in the Naka River. Itachi was anguished by Shisui's death, enough to awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan. The following day, some Uchiha, already suspicious of Itachi, accused him of murdering Shisui and staging a suicide. Itachi lost his composure and attacked them, defeating them easily. A rift was created between Itachi and his family, and his warnings to them to reconsider what they were doing fell on deaf ears. At age 12, he was promoted to Anbu captain, with his publicly disclosed promotion age being 13 due to Danzo's request and Hirozen's acceptance. Although the third Hokage still wished to negotiate with the Uchiha, Danzo recognized that there was no longer an outcome that could see the Uchiha clan's survival. He explained this to Itachi and left him a choice, support the Uchiha's coup 
and have the whole clan, including Sasuke, killed in the ensuing conflict, or accept the assignment to wipe out the clan before the coup started and be allowed to spare Sasuke. Itachi chose his brother. Despite having his choice, Itachi was tormented by guilt, especially with the knowledge that Shisui would most likely not forgive his choice to destroy the clan. However, remembering the words of his father to not let others decide things for his life, he resolved to continue his path. While making final preparations, Itachi discovered a masked man sneaking around Konoha. From observing him, he came to believe the man was truly Madara Uchiha, bent on provoking some new conflict. Itachi approached him with an offer. He would assist quote-unquote Madara with wiping out the Uchiha, taking vengeance against them for abandoning him decades earlier, if Madara would spare the village, to which he agreed. In one night, Itachi and Madara, which is Tobi, slaughtered the entire clan. Itachi took it upon himself to personally execute his parents. Despite his betrayal, they bore him no ill will, instead telling him in the moments before they were killed that they were proud of him and requesting that he take care of Sasuke. Racked by grief for his actions, Itachi saw in Sasuke the only person suitable to punish him for his crimes. In order to set Sasuke on this road, he cast himself as the villain, done by allowing Sasuke to find him standing over their parents' bodies and using Tsukuyomi to torment him with visions of the murders. Sasuke fled, fearing his own death, but Itachi chased him down to divulge the lie that he had concocted. He killed their family to test his mettle and now wanted to test himself against the only remaining challenge to him the little brother that he never loved. He encouraged Sasuke to become strong enough to kill him and take revenge, and to that end suggests that he acquire a Mangekyo Sharingan of his own. Itachi left, but was surprised to find Sasuke already pursuing him with a newly awakened Sharingan. Sasuke's attempt at vengeance failed and he passed out, but not before seeing Itachi cry with remorse. Afterwards, he disguised the Crow clone as a member of Root, to threaten Danzo that he would leak Konoha's secrets to enemy villages if he touched Sasuke, having realized Danzo could not be trusted to keep his promises. For his final business in the village, Itachi visited the third Hokage and reported his mission completed, much to the third's surprise and disappointment. Itachi requested that the third look after Sasuke, which the third vowed to do. Itachi left the village publicly as a traitor, but secretly with a new mission, to infiltrate Tobi's organization, Akatsuki and keep it from moving against Konoha. In the anime, at some point after joining Akatsuki, he was initially partnered up with Juzo Biwa. While growing accustomed to his new setting and working well with his partner, the duo was eventually given a mission in the Land of Water. After completing it, they were ambushed by a hunter nin squad led by Yagura. While initially pressed by the perfect Jinchuriki, Itachi was able to defeat him with Amaterasu, but not before Juzo was slain. Sometime later, Orochimaru tried to steal Itachi's body in order to gain the Sharingan, but Itachi easily overpowered him, trapping him inside a paralysis genjutsu and severing his left hand to prevent him from dispelling it. In the anime, Itachi expressed his disgust at Orochimaru for his inhumane experiments and was about to kill him until Kabuto came to the rescue. Later, Itachi was partnered with Kisame Hoshigaki, with whom he bonded over their shared notoriety for killing their own countrymen. To find a replacement for Orochimaru, Itachi helped recruit Deidara, whose art he defeated with his Sharingan's Genjutsu. Deidara would forever after swear vengeance for the humiliating defeat. In the anime, Itachi also aided in the recruitment of Hidan. Pain eventually caught wind of Orochimaru's attempt to destroy Konoha and requested a team to investigate, which Itachi immediately volunteered for out of concern for Sasuke's safety. At some point, Itachi contracted a terminal illness. He kept himself alive through the years with medicine and sheer willpower, so that he could live long enough to die by Sasuke's hands. After the Konoha crush and the death of the third Hokage, Itachi and Kasame use Itachi's prior experience as an Anbu to infiltrate the village undetected. They are nevertheless noticed by Kakashi, who sends Asuma and Kuranai after them to determine their identities and purpose. Itachi and Kasame lead them to an isolated location and reveal themselves. Asuma and Kuranai engage them but pose little challenge and it's only due to the timely arrival of Kakashi that they are saved. Itachi and Kakashi duel with their Sharingan, but Itachi quickly proves to be the superior and uses Tsukuyomi to render Kakashi helpless, but is surprised that Kakashi not only remains standing afterwards, but that he knows that they and Akatsuki are seeking the Ninetales. Itachi instructs Kisame to capture Kakashi to find out what else he knows and kill the others, but Kisame is parried by Might Guy, 
With things escalating, Itachi and Kisame decide to withdraw. After confirming Sasuke's safety, Itachi pretended to pursue Naruto to covertly let Konoha know about Akatsuki's goals. Itachi and Kasame track the Ninetales Jinchuriki, Naruto, to Shukaba Town. Because Naruto is under the protection of Jiraiya, Itachi uses a genjutsu on an attractive woman to draw Jiraiya away. They confront Naruto and contemplate how to apprehend him. Before they can make a decision, they are interrupted by Sasuke, who heard about Itachi's return, and attacks him with Chidori. Itachi easily deflects it and then breaks Sasuke's wrist, but Jiraiya returns before things can go further. Not wishing to get drawn into a fight with Jiraiya, but confronted by his younger brother's overwhelming desire for revenge, Itachi effortlessly overpowers Sasuke, taunts Sasuke's weakness, incapacitates him with Tsukuyomi, and then makes his escape. Jiraiya attempts to stop them with summoning Toadmouth Find, but Itachi uses Amaterasu so he and Kisame can break through. Despite his seeming intentions to capture Naruto, Itachi's only real reason for returning to Konoha were to, in the wake of the third's death, remind Danzo Shimura and the rest of the Konoha council that he was still out there, and that they should not do anything to harm Sasuke. Itachi and the rest of the Akatsuki assemble to discuss the progress of their plans, as well as Sasuke's recent alliance with Orochimaru. While sealing the One Tail, Akatsuki learns that Konoha Ninja are converging on their location. Just as Kisame volunteers to delay Team Guy, Itachi volunteers to delay Team Seven. Nagato uses his shape-shifting technique to make a body double of Itachi that he controls remotely, which he uses to intercept Team Seven. Team Seven coordinates against him, and Itachi is impressed by Naruto's growth, but he still manages to catch him in a genjutsu. He torments Naruto for his failures to protect his friends, specifically Sasuke, until the genjutsu is broken by Naruto's teammates. Itachi, his body double not having his full power, is eventually defeated by Naruto's big ball Rasengan. He nevertheless succeeds in buying enough time to complete the One Tail's ceiling. After Kisame captures the Four Tails, Akatsuki convenes to seal it. Before the ceiling gets underway, they are informed that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru after two and a half years of training with him and is now coming after Itachi. Deitara and Tobi go after Sasuke following the Four Tails ceiling, and Akatsuki later receives reports that all three have been killed. Kisame consoles Itachi afterwards for now being the last Uchiha, but he replies that Sasuke is still alive. Even had he died, he says there is still another Uchiha, alluding to Tobi's survival as well. Knowing that his end is near, Itachi sends a Shadow Clone to find and meet with Naruto. When Naruto attacks him, Itachi insists he only wants to talk. He asks Naruto what Sasuke means to him, and what he will do if ever Sasuke moves against Konoha. Naruto replies that he's Sasuke's brother, a better brother than Itachi is, and that if Sasuke ever attacks the village, he will defend it without killing Sasuke. Itachi's happy with this answer and gives Naruto some assistance for this purpose, a special crow that stores within Naruto's body. He doesn't tell Naruto the crow's purpose, but the crow implanted with Shisui's Mangekyo Sharingan will react to seeing Itachi's eyes and compel whoever has the eyes to protect Konoha, since he expects Sasuke will take his eyes at some point if he awakens Mangekyo Sharingan, and by extension learn the truth, the plan is for the crow to re-establish Sasuke's loyalties to the village after Itachi is dead. Having business elsewhere, the Shadow Clone disperses. Another Shadow Clone allows Sasuke to track him to one of Akatsuki's lairs. Sasuke attacks him, displaying the new abilities he's learned, and in doing so convinces Itachi that he's gotten strong enough. The Shadow Clone arranges to meet with Sasuke at the Uchiha hideout before it disappears. While Itachi waits for Sasuke, he has Kisame patrol the hideout's perimeter and permit nobody but Sasuke to enter. When Sasuke arrives, they start by training Genjutsu. At Sasuke's request, Itachi tells him about Tobi, who also goes by Madara, as well as the mysteries of the Mangekyo Sharingan and the even more powerful Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Itachi expresses his disappointment that Sasuke has not gained his own Mangekyo, but says he can use Sasuke's eyes to gain an Eternal Mangekyo all the same. The Genjutsu exchange ends when Sasuke breaks free of Itachi's Tsukuyomi, thus beginning the real fight. The volleys of ninjutsu quickly spill outside where Sasuke and Itachi compare their great fireballs. When Sasuke starts to pull ahead, Itachi uses Amaterasu. While trying to hit Sasuke, he ends up igniting the surrounding forest, but does finally manage to catch Sasuke. Sasuke sheds his skin to escape the flames and performs multiple fire release great dragon fire techniques while Itachi is off guard. Itachi avoids them, but Sasuke informs him that Itachi wasn't his target. After Sasuke's attack, storm clouds gather and lightning brews, allowing Sasuke to attack Itachi with Kirin. 
Although the hideout is destroyed, Itachi survives thanks to his Susanoo. With his Susanoo active, Itachi approaches Sasuke. Having used all his chakra to perform Kirin, Sasuke activates his cursed seal of heaven and out of desperation to defeat Itachi, unleashes Orochimaru. Orochimaru springs from Sasuke's body using the eight branches technique and states his intention to finally take Sasuke's body for his own. Itachi, having prolonged the battle in order to draw Orochimaru out, pierces him with Susanoo's sword of Totsuka, sealing Orochimaru away and removing Sasuke's cursed seal. Itachi resumes his approach, telling Sasuke his resolution to now take his eyes, and Sasuke makes futile attempts to keep him away. Susanoo continues to protect Itachi, but it degrades as he labors near, and Itachi starts coughing up blood. Itachi began approaching Sasuke, claiming he wanted Sasuke's eyes. When he finally reaches Sasuke, Itachi appears to grab for his eyes, but instead only pokes his forehead. The poke seals Amaterasu in Sasuke's eyes, set to activate against Tobi's Sharingan in order to protect Sasuke from him. In a similar manner to how he described death to Kisame, Itachi died in a similar manner. Unable to maintain his disguise of wanting Sasuke's eyes, he genuinely smiles and apologizes to Sasuke and says this is the end, before succumbing to his disease and falling dead with a smile on his face. When the fourth shinobi world war looms, Kabuto approaches Tobi, who survived the implanted Amaterasu, offering to join forces. To that end, he reincarnates Itachi and four other dead members of Akatsuki as offerings for Tobi's war plans. When the fourth shinobi world war begins, Itachi is mobilized with the rest of Kabuto's collection of reincarnated ninja. Itachi is paired with Nagato, who he carries because of Nagato's damaged legs. They discuss Akatsuki and how little they, particularly Nagato, actually knew about the organization. Both were only pawns kept by Tobi because of their dojutsu, and now they've been revived so Kabuto can use them for the same reason. Itachi and Nagato are found by Naruto and Killer B. Itachi learns several things as Kabuto forces him to fight them. Naruto's Ninetales chakra mode indicates he's finally gained control of the Ninetales. B's use of Samahada is proof Kisame is dead. Naruto tells him that Sasuke now works with Akatsuki to destroy Konoha due to having been told the truth of the Uchiha clan downfall by Tobi, much to Itachi's horror and dismay. Itachi and Nagato continue attacking but give advice to Naruto and B about how to evade them. When he has an opening, Itachi calls out the crow he planted in Naruto before his death and allows it to use its genjutsu on him, overriding Kabuto's control with its pre-programmed mission to protect Konoha. Now free to do his wishes, Itachi joins Naruto and B against Nagato, using Amaterasu on him and his summons. Itachi continues to eliminate Nagato's summons and also saves B and Naruto from being killed by Nagato himself. Nagato uses Chibaku Tensei to try and restrain them, but the three join forces to destroy it. Itachi stabs Nagato with the sword of Totsuka before the dust settles, sealing him away and ending the battle. Itachi then decides to personally take care of Kabuto in order to end the impure world reincarnation. Before leaving, he destroys the crow and Shisui's eye with Amaterasu so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, and entrusts Sasuke's reform to Naruto. Nagato had been able to locate Kabuto's location while they were together, and Itachi now moves on a direct course there. He inadvertently crosses paths with Sasuke along the way. Feeling he's unworthy of Sasuke, Itachi tries to avoid him and his questions. When Sasuke persists, Itachi admits that he made a mistake manipulating Sasuke along a path that he wanted which has put Sasuke in a worse position than he ever intended. As they near Kabuto's lair, Itachi tries one last time to shake him, only to be disappointed when Sasuke joins him shortly after he confronts Kabuto. Sasuke moves to kill Kabuto, but is blocked by Itachi, who explains that Kabuto must be kept alive if the impure world reincarnation is to be broken. Sasuke offers the help on the condition that Itachi will finally talk to him afterwards. Itachi agrees. Kabuto obscures his vision to prevent being caught in a genjutsu and attacks. Itachi and Sasuke block with their Susanoo, only to find that they have lost track of Kabuto. Itachi realizes that Kabuto has achieved Sage Mode and quickly defends Sasuke before he can come to harm in Kabuto's sneak attack. Itachi reminds Sasuke of a mission they went on as children to hunt a boar, which they reenact with their Susanoo against Kabuto. Kabuto avoids them and commandeers Sasuke's sword, which he uses to attack Itachi. Itachi takes the sword back from him and uses it to cut off the tip of one of Kabuto's horns. Kabuto tries to turn Sasuke against Itachi, pointing out all the lies and distrust Itachi has been showing Sasuke for years. 
Itachi admits his faults, but promises to tell Sasuke something after he's performed his Izanami. Kabuto is confident that he cannot be defeated, since they can't kill him, and because of the precautions he's taken to avoid Genjutsu. He manipulates the cave to confine them, and uses DNA to perform a variety of other ninja's long-range jutsu, trying to create an opportunity to access Itachi's head and regain control of him. Sasuke becomes increasingly earnest to kill Kabuto, but Itachi pleads for him to wait until Izanami's ready. While Itachi and Sasuke deal with Kabuto's recreation of Orochimaru, Kabuto bisects Itachi. Itachi's reincarnated body regenerates and he uses Sasuke's sword to cut off even more of the same horn as before. This creates a sensory loop independent of vision that traps Kabuto in eternal battle. That is Izanami. Kabuto has the chance of escaping Izanami by accepting the fate that he now tries to fight by taking on others' powers. Itachi is gift to him because of their perceived similarities. He raises the brill that covers Kabuto's eyes and uses a genjutsu to make Kabuto perform the hand seals that will end the impure world reincarnation. While Kabuto performs the hand seals, Sasuke tells Itachi that he won't forgive Konoha for coercing Itachi the way that he was and that he will continue to conspire against the villages despite Itachi's wishes. Itachi listens without response. When he's engulfed in light and the impure world reincarnation begins to break, he faces Sasuke and admits to everything Sasuke has been told about him, even imparting some of his own memories to Sasuke to fully dispel the lies he's told. He reaches for Sasuke, seemingly meaning to poke his forehead again, but instead gives Sasuke a head bump, symbolizing he no longer saw Sasuke as a child, but an equal. He tells Sasuke that he wants no forgiveness and promises that he will love Sasuke no matter what he decides to do. His reincarnated body dissolves, and his soul returns to the afterlife. Izumi Uchiha Izumi was the daughter of Hazuki Uchiha. Unlike her mother, Izumi's father was not an Uchiha, and for that reason, their family lived separately from the Uchiha clan for the first few years of Izumi's life. During the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, her father died while protecting her. From the grief brought on by his death, as well as feelings of guilt that he would have not died had Izumi been stronger, Izumi eventually awakened her Sharingan. She and her mother afterwards rejoined the Uchiha clan. Izumi enrolled in Konoha's academy a few years later. Like other girls her age, Izumi developed a crush on Itachi Uchiha, a boy in the class next to hers. As such, she tried to talk with him during school breaks, walk home with him after lessons, and defend him from their peers' criticism. Itachi initially took the same disinterest in Izumi as he had in all the other girls until discovering that she had the Sharingan, which he himself had yet to awaken. He afterwards became warmer to her whenever their paths crossed. One such occasion occurred shortly after Itachi graduated from the academy, which he was allowed to do early because of his prodigious skills. He ran into Izumi as they were both returning to the Uchiha compound. Izumi asked about his new life as an official ninja and Itachi asked if she'd improved with her Sharingan. When Izumi began to inquire about the secretive meetings older Uchiha were having at night, Itachi, who was not permitted to discuss these meetings with her, advised her not to bring it up again. They then walked the rest of the way home in silence. A few months after Itachi was promoted to Chunin, his father, Fugaku, encouraged him to spend more time with people his own age. As such, he had lunch with Izumi. Izumi was awed by recent news of Itachi's exploits and worried that she would never be able to match up to him. Itachi deflected that by pointing out that she would soon be graduating from the academy and a year early at that. While this didn't cheer her up, he asked why she wanted to be a ninja in the first place, as a ninja's life was fraught with hardships. She replied that her father was a ninja, and furthermore, that she would naturally want to have the same career as the person she liked. Itachi did not understand her meaning, and Izumi, upset, opted to end their lunch early. Izumi did not have an opportunity to talk with Itachi again until after she graduated from the academy, becoming a genin. They both apologized for their behavior during their previous lunch. Itachi asked her about her recent missions, which Izumi reported to be menial and easy. Izumi congratulated Itachi on his recent admission into the Anbu, but shared her concern that he was taking on too much for someone their age. Izumi continued seeing Itachi at the Uchiha's nighttime meetings, which she was now allowed to attend. Like Itachi, Izumi disapproved of the clan's growing anger towards Konoha and its leadership. Itachi's disapproval ultimately strained his relationship with the rest of the clan, causing him to stop attending the meetings at all. After the death of Itachi's friend, Shisui, Izumi attempted to visit Itachi at his home, but was informed by Fugaku that Itachi was out. As Izumi left, Fugaku encouraged her to provide the support to Itachi that he was unable to. She assured him that she would. The Uchiha clan eventually decided to try and overthrow Konoha's government. 
As the planning for their coup entered its final stages, Itachi attended another one of the clan's nighttime meetings, his first after a year-long absence. He pleaded with the clan's members to not go through with the coup and attempted to offer alternative ways of sorting things out with Konoha, but was promptly marked as a traitor and expelled from the meeting. Izumi followed after him as he left. He advised her to return to the meeting so that she would not also be labeled a traitor, but Izumi replied that she did not care. She encouraged him to continue trying to reason with Fugaku and the rest of the Uchiha, believing that he alone could get through to them. Itachi responded that it was too late and left her behind. To prevent the mass casualties that war between the Uchiha and Konoha would eventually cause, Itachi opted to wipe out the entire Uchiha clan in a single night, what would be called the Uchiha clan downfall. He decided to make Izumi his first victim. He snuck into her home, knocked out her mother, and upon being found out by Izumi, used Tsukiyomi on her. In the span of a second, Izumi lived through 70 years of an illusionary life. She becomes a Chunin, Itachi proposes to her, she retires as a ninja, she and Itachi marry, Izumi gives birth, they raise their children, the children become adults, she grows old with Itachi, Izumi becomes ill, Itachi takes care of her, she is on her deathbed. When the illusion ended, Izumi collapsed and used her final moment of consciousness to thank Itachi. She then died, the death she experienced within the illusion tricking her body into expiring as well. In the anime, Izumi first met Itachi several years earlier than in the novel when she invited him to play with her and other children their age. He declined, prompting the other children to start bullying him. Izumi alone stood up for him. On the night of the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, Izumi became separated from her parents. She was saved from falling debris by Itachi, and he then led her to a safe shelter. She thanked him and then asked if she could hold Itachi's infant brother, Sasuke. Itachi agreed on the condition that she not make Sasuke cry, which she promised to do. When Sasuke cried anyway, Itachi took him back. Sasuke immediately stopped crying upon being returned to Itachi, annoying Izumi. In the anime, on the night of the Uchiha clan downfall, Izumi confronted the masked man during his attack on the Konoha military police force's headquarters. Her attacks against the masked man failed and she was killed by him. Izuna Uchiha Before the era of ninja villages, Izuna was one of the five sons born to Tajima Uchiha. However, three of his brothers died at the hands of the Senju, leaving the second eldest, Izuna, and his oldest brother, Madara. Alongside Madara, Izuna was considered one of the most gifted members of the Uchiha. Izuna often competed with his brother as training. As a child growing up during the war-torn era, Izuna once accompanied his father on a mission to kill Hashirama Senju, whom Madara, albeit unknowingly, had been meeting. Once there, Izuna and his father were confronted by Butsuma and Tobirama Senju, the latter of whom he acknowledged by name. As Izuna clashed with Tobirama, unbeknownst to him, Butsuma had launched an attack at him, hoping to strike him down and gain an advantage at defeating the evenly matched Tajima. This attack, however, was deflected by his brother Madara, who had intervened between the two sides along with Hashirama. Izuna later showed shock when Madara noted that Hashirama was stronger than he was, but was later elated to see that his brother had awakened his Sharingan. As the battles between the two clans raged on, Izuna awakened his own Sharingan and became one of the first two Uchiha to awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan, alongside his older brother. With their newly obtained power, the two brothers became heads of the clan, with Madara becoming its leader. During a battle with Tobirama, Izuna was mortally wounded. With Madara quickly rushing to Izuna's aid, Hashirama pleaded with Madara to come to peaceful terms. Seeing his brother begin to consider this offer, Izuna told his brother not to listen to their lies, ultimately making Madara retreat with Izuna. When Madara later returned to the battlefield, he revealed that the injury inflicted on Izuna was fatal. In the final moments of his life, the dying Izuna had given Madara his eyes, so his brother could obtain the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan to protect their clan from its growing number of enemies and the Senju. Because of the blindness caused by overuse of a Mangekyo Sharingan, many people came to believe that Madara took Izuna's eyes by force to regain his sight. Kagami Uchiha In the anime, Kagami was amongst the first few hundred students to attend and graduate the academy. Having become friends with Danzo Shimura and Hiruzen Saratobi, he saved the former many times with his dojutsu. During the first Shinobi World War, he and his teammates from the escort unit accompanied the second Hokage on a mission. Pursued and ultimately surrounded by Kumogakure's Kinkaku squad, the group discussed their options, where Kagami noted that Koharu's plan of an ambush wouldn't work, and that instead, a diversion was needed to lure the enemy away. He then listened as the second Hokage, who had nominated himself as the decoy, appointed Hiruzen as the third Hokage. At some point, Kagami became a father and at the age of 25 died. His only known direct descendant, Shisui, would go on to inherit his will of fire rather than the Uchiha's curse of hatred. Kagen Uchiha Kagen worked for the Konoha military police force's logistical department, which meant he never had an opportunity to awaken his Sharingan. 
This, combined with the fact that Kagen was of unremarkable talent and had no close relatives, made him the perfect target for Root. Root killed Kagen and had the twins Gozu and Mezu, both surgically altered to look like him, split responsibilities of impersonating him in order to spy on the Uchiha clan. Madara Uchiha Madara Uchiha was the legendary leader of the Uchiha clan. He founded Konohagakure alongside his childhood friend and rival, Hashirama Senju, with the intention of beginning an era of peace. When the two couldn't agree on how to achieve that peace, they fought for control of the village, a conflict which ended in Madara's death. Madara, however, rewrote his death and went into hiding to work on his own plans. Unable to complete it in his natural life, he entrusted his knowledge and plans to Obito Uchiha shortly before his actual death. Years later, Madara would be revived, only to see his plans foiled and ultimately and finally realizing the error of his ways and making amends with Hashirama before his final death. Madara was born during the Warring States period and was the eldest of Tajima Uchiha's five sons. Madara and his brothers grew up on the battlefield waging constant war with the Uchiha's rivals, the Senju. Three of his brothers died young, leaving Madara with only his younger brother Izuna. Madara and Izuna became very close through their shared loss and constantly competed with each other to get stronger. This, combined with his naturally strong chakra, enabled the young Madara to defeat adult Senju in battle and develop a reputation as a genius. During his infrequent downtime, Madara met a boy his own age named Hashirama. The two quickly developed a friendly rivalry, be it skipping stones or urinating in rivers. Like Madara, Hashirama was also a shinobi who had lost his brothers on the battlefield. Together, they imagined a world where children like themselves wouldn't need to fight. As a precaution, Madara and Hashirama did not divulge their family names, but nevertheless discovered each other's identities. Madara was an Uchiha, Hashirama was a Senju. It was their duty to kill each other, even if they were friends. Needing to choose between his family and his dreams of peace, Madara chose to end his friendship with Hashirama so he would have no reservations over killing him in the future, a resolve strong enough to awaken his Sharingan. Over the following years, Madara and Hashirama continued to meet in combat. Madara could never defeat Hashirama, even after acquiring a Mangekyo Sharingan and Hashirama could never bring himself to kill someone he still considered a friend, resulting in a constant stalemate between the two that lasted decades. In time, both Madara and Hashirama became leaders of their respective clans, a position Hashirama tried to use to broker peace between them. Although some Uchiha found the offer increasingly tempting, Madara refused due to Izuna's death at the hands of Hashirama's own brother, Tobirama. Despite this, some Uchiha defected over to the Senju clan out of self-preservation. Madara then used Izuna's eyes in order to gain eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and restore his deteriorating vision. With this new power, he waged one final assault against the Senju and was summarily defeated. Rather than kill Madara to bring the era of war to an end, Hashirama offered to kill himself if it would stop the fighting. Madara was moved by Hashirama's gesture and finally assented to peace. The Senju, the Uchiha, and all of their affiliated clans came together to found a village of peace where children would never need to die in battle. Madara and Hashirama rekindled their childhood friendship, and Madara called that village Konohagakure, seeing it through leaves. But Madara's idea of peace differed from Hashirama's. Where Hashirama envisioned cooperation with the other newly formed villages, Madara desired control so the peace could never be lost. Evidenced by his attacking of Iwagakure's Mu and Onoki so that they would submit to Konoha's authority. When Hashirama was elected as Hokage, Konoha's leader, Madara also became concerned for the Uchiha's future, believing this to be but the first step in the Senju's dominance. The stone tablet had been in the Uchiha's possession for generations and was brought with them when they settled in Konoha. Through careful study, Madara was able to decipher enough of it to learn of the history of Shinobi, of the endless cycle of failed peace, and the destiny of battle between Uchiha and Senju, but also a means of unity for the world. With this knowledge, Madara decided Konoha was a failed experiment. He tried to convince his own clan and even Hashirama of the same conclusion, but none would hear him. Madara chose to abandon the village, returning with the nine-tailed demon fox under his control to challenge Hashirama. They fought to exhaustion, and from the carnage of their battle, the Valley of the End was formed. In the end, Madara was killed by Hashirama. News of Madara's death spread fast, and his corpse was secretly hidden to keep anyone from finding it and profiting from it. But Madara had planned ahead. He had scheduled an Izanagi to activate sometime after his death, changing reality to bring him back to life in exchange for his right eye's vision. 
He left a copy in his place of his real body and went into hiding with a special trophy from his fight with Hashirama, a mouthful of Hashirama's flesh that he transplanted into his wounds. It was not until decades later, towards the end of Madara's natural life, that the cells had any effect, awakening the Rinnegan, in the process of restoring his right eye. With the Rinnegan, he was able to summon the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he used to cultivate a mindless living clone of Hashirama from which he believed he had produced a white Zetsu army. Over the years, Madara had perfected his plans for peace in what he called the Eye of the Moon plan. But as his years waned, Madara knew he couldn't complete his plans in the time he had left. So he transplanted his Rinnegan into a young Nagato without the boys knowing, intending Nagato to someday use the eyes to restore Madara to life. If Nagato was to do that, however, Madara would need an agent to act on his behalf and guide Nagato towards this ultimate goal. So Madara waited, connecting himself to the demonic statue to keep him alive until someone could be found. Madara spent this time keeping a close eye on Konoha to find a suitable pawn to take his place. During the Third Shinobi War, Madara found a badly injured Obito Uchiha. Madara used Hashirama's cells to replace Obito's damaged extremities and placed a forbidden individual curse tag in Obito's heart as a failsafe in case Obito ever turned against him. Until then, Madara began working towards corrupting Obito. He had Kirigakure kidnap the girl Obito loved, Rin Nohara and sealed the three tails into her. He then manipulated events so that Rin would die at the hands of Obito's friend, Kakashi, while Obito watched. Driven to despair, Obito offered his services to Madara. Madara divulged to Obito the history of the Sage of the Six Paths and the Ten Tails, the details of his Eye of the Moon plan, and various techniques that Obito would need moving forward. As a final act, he left behind Black Zetsu, what he believed to be a manifestation of his will, to provide additional guidance to Obito in pursuit of this goal. With that, Madara disconnected from the demonic statue, and with his dying breath, entrusted Obito with his name, Madara Uchiha. Tobi, or Obito, acting under Madara's name, moves into the final stages of the Eye of the Moon plan by initiating a fourth shinobi world war. Before the wars start, Kabuto Yakushi approaches Tobi to try and form an alliance. When Tobi asks what will happen if he refuses, Kabuto resurrects Madara to show he knows that Tobi is not the true Madara and forces him to accept. Tobi reluctantly agrees, and Kabuto de-summons Madara. During the Fourth Shinobi World War, Kabuto decides to use Madara against the allied shinobi forces and uses Mu as a medium to summon him to the battlefield. When he first becomes aware of his surroundings, Madara believes he has been brought back by Nagato's outer path, Samsara of Heavenly Life Technique, but soon realizes that he instead has been brought back with the impure world reincarnation. Kabuto speaks through Mew, introduces himself, and explains recent developments in the world and Tobi's current actions. After Kabuto points out that he has restored Madara to a state beyond his prime, Madara tests his body by tearing through the fourth division thinning its numbers. The 4th Division's initial attempts to stop Madara fail as he protects himself with Susanoo. With the 5th Kazakage, 3rd Tsuchikage, and one of Naruto Uzumaki's Shadow Clones combined efforts, Madara is forced to activate his Renegon and absorb the attack. Realizing his enemies were too dangerous for him to hold back with Ninjutsu and Taijutsu, Madara pulls down a meteorite from the atmosphere. When the Kazakage and Tsuchikage successfully stop it, Madara adds a second meteorite to his attack, both of which fall upon and devastate the 4th Division. With most of the 4th Division dead, Madara questions Kabuto about just how far off plan Tobi has gone. Because Kabuto doesn't actually know much about the plan, Madara is left to check things for himself and tries to summon the Ninetales, only to discover that it's sealed in a Jinchuriki, specifically Naruto. Despite knowing the current Naruto was a clone, he decided to delay his plans to test out his new powers, namely the wood release Nativity of Trees, which Naruto's clone barely countered. He then moves in to finish off the remainder of the 4th Division, but is repelled by the arrival of the 5th Hokage, the 5th Mizukage, and the 5th Raikage. The 5 Kage combine forces against Madara and propel him from the immediate area. By the time Madara returns, Naruto's Shadow Clone is gone and the five Kage remain his only opponents. They battle for some time, with Madara equaling and besting the Kage's efforts. When he's hit with the Tsuchikage's Dust Release Detachment of the Primitive World Technique, Madara's armor is torn away, revealing the implant of Hashirama's face on his chest. 
<laughs> what? Madara laments Hashirama's legacy that these Kage have inherited, having been completely unimpressed by their attacks, particularly those of the Hokage, Hashirama's granddaughter. Madara then creates 25 copies of himself and has them each activate their Susanoo. By nightfall, the Kage are still alive and are able to pool their efforts so successfully that he is nearly sealed. Finally impressed by their display, Madara responds by summoning his perfected Susanoo. Before he can use it to kill the Kage, his Susanoo starts to fade and Madara is engulfed in light. Madara realizes that Kabuto has elsewhere released him from the impure world reincarnation and his soul is returning to the afterlife. Madara responds by performing the hand seals to rescind the impure world reincarnation contract that Kabuto has over him, enabling him to return to his immortal body without further interference from a summoner. Now able to do whatever he likes and bored by the Kage, Madara decides to go find Naruto and reclaim the Nine Tails. The Kage, rightfully so, try to block his escape. Uh, probably to uh, no avail. After defeating the five Kage, Madara finds and reunites with Obito while he's engaged in combat with Naruto, Killer B, Kakashi, and Might Guy. Madara notices the demonic statue undergoing a premature transformation into the Ten Tails and scolds Obito for being too hasty. After Obito returns Madara's gunbai, Madara creates a wood dragon in an attempt to capture Naruto and Killer B and complete the Ten Tails. He at one point manages to restrain and drain B of his energy, but is overwhelmed by Guy's daytime tiger. The Ten Tails is revived before he can recover, forcing Madara to make do. He and Obito leap onto the Ten Tails head and connect themselves to it, granting them control of its actions. Their four opponents put up a resistance but are no match for the Ten Tails' power. However, before the Ten Tails can finish them off, the combined allied shinobi forces arrive to join the fight, deflecting the Ten Tails' attack. The allies join forces to immobilize the Ten Tails, making it an easy target. The Ten Tails undergoes a new transformation before their attacks can connect, freeing it and letting it block the incoming attacks. Though the immediate problem is solved, Madara realizes there's another issue. The allies are being coordinated too effectively. He and Obito direct the Ten Tails to attack the distant ally HQ, something that takes several tailed beast balls due to their lack of control, which Madara attributes to Obito's failure to revive him correctly. Yeah, Obito, you failure. Although the allies' quote unquote brain is killed, the allies are given one final battle plan in the time it takes the Ten Tails to hit its target. Obito and Madara try to thin the allies' numbers before they can get into position and, when that fails, block against the oncoming attack, but the combined forces manage to break through and separate Obito and Madara from the Ten Tails. With the Ten Tails now out of their control, they must fight the alliance directly. Obito eventually disappears to the other dimension, forcing Madara to fend for himself. During Obito's absence, Madara senses that Hashirama has elsewhere been brought back to life. Excited at the prospect of fighting his rival again, Madara eagerly awaits his rival. When Hashirama eventually arrives, Hashirama sends only a wood clone to face him, being too busy restraining the Ten Tails. Yo, I love how Hashirama's like, you're not worth my time, here's a, here's a sculpture of myself to fight against. You know how like pissed Madara must have been? <laughs> oh my god. Madara decides to sit out of the fight until the real Hashirama is ready. When the wood clone persists, Madara easily defeats it. He later senses Obito's return to the battlefield and decides to make use of one of his failsafes, activating black receivers planted in Obito to force him to finally revive Madara. Obito resists and instead seals the Ten Tails into himself. Though he's frustrated by this setback, Hashirama is no longer preoccupied so Madara forces him into a fight. As their battle rages, Hashirama tries to convince Madara to postpone, but Madara repeatedly refuses. Nevertheless, he keeps track of Obito's progress and growing control of the Ten Tails' power. After Obito's defeat, Madara is restrained by Hashirama's wood dragons and the alliance moves in to seal him. With Obito no longer the Ten Tails' Jinchuriki, Madara puts another failsafe into effect, Black Zetsu. Having been in contact with it since his initial reincarnation, Madara orders Black Zetsu to take control of Obito's body and use the Outer Path Samsara of Heavenly Life technique. Restored to life, Madara is able to make use of his modified body's full power, to which he breaks free of his restraints. 
Having died with his real eyes intact and removed from his body, Madara's reincarnated eyes crumble to nothing. Sasuke attempts to burn Madara with Amaterasu, while Naruto reminds Sasuke that Madara can absorb ninjutsu. Madara, however, had to discard his armor that was burnt by the flames. To compensate for his blindness, he immobilizes Hashirama with black receivers and absorbs his senjutsu chakra, enhancing his sensory skills enough to perceive his enemies and their attacks without the need of sight. He is once again attacked by Sasuke, but instructs Sasuke to stay out of his way since he doesn't want to kill his own clansmen. Madara goes after the freed tail beast so that he can revive the ten tails once more. He attempts to take on all nine at once, failing and losing his right arm in the process. While he regroups, a white Zetsu clone brings him one of the Rinnegan that Obito kept in storage. Madara takes this and one of the Zetsu's arms, allowing him to start round two. He summons the demonic statue from Obito's body and uses Limbo, Border Jail, to repel the nine beasts. Before they can recover, he seals all of them into the demonic statue, including those sealed in Naruto and B. While the statue undergoes its transformation into the Tentails again, Madara asks the Zetsu clone how Black Zetsu is faring with taking his remaining Rinnegan back from Obito. Tobirama Senju, having been reincarnated alongside Hashirama, attacks Madara immediately afterwards, but is restrained after failing to deal any damage. Sasuke also attacks Madara, but is immobilized in mid-air. Having already warned Sasuke once, Madara turns Sasuke's own sword against him and stabs him in the chest. With nobody left to oppose him, Madara seals the Tentils into himself once the resurrection is complete. Pleased with himself, Madara sets off to regain his other Rinnegan. Along the way, he spits out the Benihisago and Kohaku no Johei, both of which were used by Obito as part of his premature revival method. Madara tries to reason with Obito, reminding him of all they planned and insisting on the impending effectiveness of the Eye of the Moon plan. Rather than be convinced, Obito stabs Madara and manages to steal fragments of the One Tails and Eight Tails chakra from him before using Kamui to escape with Naruto. Yo, this dude was just like, fuck your plan, gotcha. <laughs> While Madara contemplates his next move, he is confronted by Might Guy, a master of Taijutsu, which is one of the only effective attacks against Madara in his new form. Guy opens all eight gates and hits Madara with the Evening Elephant. Madara is taken by surprise and tries to defend himself, but other allied shinobi are able to reduce him to a single truth-seeking ball, leaving him wide open. Madara is thrilled at the prospect of such a challenging fight and is visibly battered, but not beaten, forcing Guy to use Night Guy. Madara is nearly killed by the attack, which obliterates the entire left side of his body. Thanking Guy for giving him such an entertaining battle and acknowledging him as a worthy opponent, Madara decides to show him the ultimate respect by killing him instead of letting him succumb to his injuries. However, the truth-seeking ball that Madara launches at Guy is kicked back at him by a revived Naruto whom Madara notes has somehow gained power similar to his own. Naruto sends Madara crashing through the recreation of the Tentails in its giant tree form, a remnant of Obito's earlier battle. A voice speaks to Madara, telling him to absorb it. Madara does so and becomes stronger, but is met with a new problem. Sasuke, also healed from his injuries, has joined forces with Naruto and is also in possession of new abilities. Despite Madara's efforts, he can do nothing against them. Knowing he needs his other Rinnegan if he's to end the fight, Madara steals Kakashi's Mangekyo Sharingan and uses it to go after Obito. He stops Sakura from destroying the Rinnegan, to which Obito responds by sending her back to the real world before Madara can kill her. However, Obito himself is too weak to fight back. To give Obito some final words, Madara first congratulates him for removing the forbidden individual curse tag he had placed on him. He also reveals his role in the death of Rin, in doing so admitting that he's been manipulating Obito from the start. With that, Madara takes back his Rinnegan, returning to Obito his left Mangekyo Sharingan. Black Setsu uses Obito's body to perform Kamui and return them to the real world. Naruto and Sasuke move to attack him as soon as Madara appears, so Madara delays them with multiple Chibaku's Tensei. Madara gains proximity to the moon, awakening the Rinne Sharingan in the process, and succeeds in casting the infinite Tsukuyomi. The entire world is trapped in a dream, and then wrapped into Madara's god nativity of a world of trees. Sasuke is able to save Naruto, Kakashi, and Sakura from the infinite Tsukuyomi. 
Seeing them, Madara announces himself the world's savior, one who has saved the world from itself by replacing the hells of reality with the heavens of dreams. While he's proclaiming his victory, Black Zetsu stabs him in the back. <laughs> oh my god, yo, Black Zetsu. There's so much backstabbing in the show. Black Zetsu reveals that it is not Madara's will, but Kaguya Otsutsuki's, and that he has taken advantage of him in order to bring about her revival. Black Zetsu transfers from Obito's body to Madara's, completely covering him and forcing him to start absorbing the chakra of those trapped in the infinite Tsukiyomi. After dramatically increasing in size, Madara shrinks down until the revived Kaguya is revealed in his stead. Naruto and Sasuke eventually seal Kaguya in her own dimension, along with Black Setsu, at which point she reverts into the Tentails and spits out Madara. The Sage of the Six Paths summons Madara and everyone else back to the real world, but he can do nothing to save Madara from his approaching death as a result of having both the tail beasts and demonic stature removed from his body. Madara uses his remaining time speaking to Hashirama, noting that his own dream for peace has died while Hashirama's lives on, and therefore was apparently the better of the two. Hashirama replies that they are still friends despite everything, to which Madara agrees as he dies. Mikoto Uchiha Mikoto Uchiha was a Jonin from Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. Background After marrying Fugaku Uchiha, she settled down to become a housewife raising their two sons, Itachi and Sasuke. Just before her good friend Kushina Uzumaki gave birth, she met up with her while walking through the streets and introduced Sasuke to her and Byuako Sarutobi. When Byuako noticed that they had named him after the third Hokage's father, Mikoto explained that it was so he would grow up to be just as strong a shinobi as his namesake. She agreed with Kushina's hopes that their sons would become friends, and when Kushina asked whether or not childbirth was painful, Mikoto laughed, having found one thing that Kushina was seemingly afraid of. From this conversation, she is one of the few to be aware of Naruto's identity as Minato and Kushina's son. During the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, Itachi noted that she and Fugaku weren't at home before the beast struck. In Itachi Shinden Book of Bright Light, Mikoto returned home during the attack and was relieved to find that Itachi and Sasuke were unharmed. Immediately after arriving, the rubble from the Nine-Tailed's attack was launched in their direction. In an instant, Itachi instinctively destroyed the rubble to save Sasuke and Mikoto surprising her with his display of strength. In the anime, after the Nine Tails was stopped, Mikoto went to the hospital to check on Kushina's newborn son, Naruto Uzumaki, greatly saddened by the loss of her dear friend. When the downfall of the clan was being carried out, Itachi confronted her and Fugaku, having left them until last. She knelt down beside her husband, putting up no resistance. When their son tried to explain himself, she simply told him that she understood, before allowing a distraught Itachi to kill them. This would later prompt Sasuke to want to avenge her death along with that of the rest of the clans. Personality Mikoto was a very gentle and kind woman, but could also be stern and strict when she needed to be, as seen when Itachi came back from the academy and she told Sasuke that he could not play because he had homework. She loved her sons deeply and knew how to help them with their problems. Mikoto cared for and also held high respect for her husband as well and understood the importance of his position as the Uchiha clan leader and was a dutiful and loyal wife to him. She also gave Sasuke advice and tried to reassure him about his brother, Itachi. She was a very good mother, seeing as how Sasuke was able to talk to her better than his father. At one point, in order to cheer Sasuke up, she says that when she and Fugaku are sometimes alone, Sasuke is all he talked about. Although she was Itachi's mother, she, like other clan members, grew suspicious of his strange behavior toward the end. But regardless of that, she still cared deeply about her eldest son offering comforting words before allowing herself and her husband to be killed by Itachi himself. Naka Uchiha Naka was a close comrade of Naori Uchiha. He was able to awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan and became obsessed with the technique Izanagi, which he used to kill some of his own clansmen. In order to save him, Naori used Izanami on him to force him to accept the truth and see reality. After struggling for a while, Naka eventually accepted his fate and broke the loop caused by the Izanami. He presumably died at some point, either before or during the Uchiha clan downfall, along with the rest of the Uchiha clan. Naori Uchiha Her close friend Naka Uchiha was able to use Izanagi and in time became obsessed with its power. She was determined to save him from it and ultimately cast Izanami on him in order to get him to see the error of his ways and come to accept fate. She was successful in this and Naka was able to finally accept the truth and break the endless loop the technique had plunged him into. She presumably died either before or during the Uchiha clan downfall along with the rest of her clansmen. Obito Uchiha 
Obito Uchiha was a member of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. He was believed to have died during the Third Shinobi World War, his only surviving legacy being the Sharingan he gave to his teammate, Kakashi Hatake. In truth, Obito was saved from death and trained by Madara Uchiha. But the events of the war left Obito disillusioned with reality, and he inherited Madara's plan to create an ideal world. Resurfacing under the names of Tobi and Madara himself, Obito subtly took control of the Akatsuki, using them as a means to advance his machinations, eventually going public and starting the Fourth Shinobi World War. However, towards the war's conclusion, Obito had a change of heart and, as atonement, sacrificed his life to save the same world he sought to replace. Early Life Obito grew up not knowing who his parents were. In the anime, he was left in the care of his grandmother. Feeling alone in the world, Obito dreamed of becoming Hokage so that the people of the village would acknowledge his existence. He enrolled in the academy to help him achieve that goal, where he developed a one-sided rivalry with Kakashi Hatake, whose natural talent and popularity he was jealous of. He also became a close friend of Rin Nohara, whom he eventually fell in love with. After finally graduating some years later, Obito, Rin, and Kakashi were placed on a team under the leadership of Minato Namikaze. In the anime, as a final qualifying test, Minato gave the team a bell test to test their cooperation skills. Obito could not accomplish this on his own, but by joining forces with Rin and Kakashi, they succeeded in taking the bells, teaching Obito the value of teamwork. The team later participated in the tuning exams, where Obito was defeated in the third round in a one-on-one -on -one match with Might Guy. Kakashi would go on to defeat Guy in a subsequent match, promoting him to Chunin and impressing Rin. Eager for Rin's attention, Obito trained relentlessly, eventually rising to the rank of Chunin himself. His excitement was short-lived as Kakashi soon afterwards became a Jonin, once again earning Rin's praise and Obito's resentment. During the Third Shinobi World War, Kakashi was placed in charge of the team for a mission to destroy the Kanabi Bridge, which would hinder Iwagakure from using Kusagakure as a relief point. Before beginning the mission, Minato and Ren gave gifts to Kakashi to celebrate his promotion to Jonin, though Obito had forgotten, straining their already poor relationship. Minato was soon called to the front lines, leaving the team to complete the mission alone under Kakashi's command. The three were discovered by Iwanin along the way, and Rin was captured. Kakashi elected to abandon Rin, believing it was more important to finish the mission before concerning themselves with her safety. Obito became enraged at the idea and insisted that they focus on her rescue. When Kakashi refused, Obito left on his own, remarking that Kakashi was worse than trash for abandoning his friends. Obito located the cave that Iwanin were using as a hideout, but was found by a camouflaged Taiseki before he could launch a rescue. Kakashi, moved by Obito's earlier words, arrived in time to save him from Taiseki's attack, but lost his left eye in the process. From his desire to help Kakashi, Obito awakened his Sharingan, allowing him to see through Taiseki's camouflage and kill him. Obito and Kakashi infiltrated the cave and released Rin from her restraints. Her captor, Kako, caused the cave to collapse around them. As the team ran for the exit, Kakashi was struck in his blind spot and fell. When Obito noticed that Kakashi was about to be hit by a falling boulder, Obito pushed him out of the way and became trapped in his place. With the right side of his body crushed and no way to free himself, Obito accepted his fate and made an offering to give Kakashi his left Sharingan as an apology for not getting him a present earlier. Rin performed the transplant and, once the procedure was finished, Kakashi used his new Sharingan to kill Kako. Iwa reinforcements quickly began to further compress the rubble, forcing Kakashi and Rin to leave Obito behind. As the rocks tightened around him, Obito reflected that he had finally started to get along with Kakashi and that he couldn't confess to Rin that he loved her. Kakashi and Rin were rescued by Minato, and when they returned to Konoha, Obito's name was engraved in the village's memorial stone. Saved from death In actuality, Obito was rescued by White Zetsu under orders from an elderly Madara. He brought Obito to Mountain's graveyard and tended to his injuries, removing those body parts too damaged to be healed and replacing them with limbs cultivated from the cells of Hashirama Senju. Despite his injuries, Obito's right Sharingan had survived intact. Although frightened by Madara, Obito felt indebted to him for saving his life and was willing to render any assistance he could, an offer Madara made clear he would collect upon. Obito began a long rehabilitation process, eager to recover enough for him to return to Konoha and help his friends and the village with the still ongoing war. 
With the help of White Zetsu and another spiral face Zetsu, he nicknamed Guruguru, Obito became accustomed to his replacement limbs and the abilities they granted him. All the while, Madara would tell Obito about the harsh realities of the world and his plan to save it, which the young Uchiha disregarded. During the end of his recuperation process, White Zetsu informed Obito that Kakashi and Rin were elsewhere, about to be killed by Kirigakure Ninja. Obito was insistent on helping them, which Guruguru offered to help with by encasing Obito with its body. Before leaving, Obito thanked Madara for all his help, but said he wouldn't be returning. Madara made clear his conviction that Obito would return to him. Guruguru directed Obito to Rin and Kakashi's location, along the way informing him of Minato's absence. When they arrived, they found Rin and Kakashi surrounded by Kirinin, and Kakashi plunging his Chidori through Rin's heart. Rin's death caused each of their Sharingan to mature into Mangekyo Sharingan, a process that also caused Kakashi to pass out. Enraged by what had happened, Obito used the combination of his Mangekyo Sharingan's Kamui and the wood release of Guruguru's body to slaughter the Kirigakure ninja. When all of them were dead, Obito cradled Rin's lifeless body, ignoring the unconscious Kakashi. Obito returned to Mountain's graveyard, vowing to do anything for Madara if it can bring him together with Rin and Kakashi again. Madara explained his Eye of the Moon plan, which would replace the contemporary world of violence and death with one where nobody ever needs to die. Obito was intrigued, determined to create a reality where he, Rin, and Kakashi could exist alongside each other. Madara imparted all of his knowledge and plans to Obito, taught him about abilities he would need moving forward, entrusted him with his possessions, and manifested Black Zetsu to act as a guide. Having left almost all that he had to Obito, Madara disconnected himself from the demonic statue of the Outer Path that was keeping him alive, and told Obito that until his revival, he was to act as Madara Uchiha. Moving the plan forward. Using Madara's name and concealing his identity, Obito moved in the shadows of the ninja world to acquire the remaining pieces of the Eye of the Moon plan. Shortly after Madara's death, Obito and Zetsu went to Amegakure and approached the fledgling Akatsuki with an offer of support in creating the world of peace they envisioned. In truth, he only needed Nagato, in whom Madara had implanted his Rinnegan several years earlier, and who would be needed in the final stages of the Eye of the Moon plan. While Obito was almost able to sway Nagato, the Akatsuki leader, Yahiko, declined. Obito claims he eventually agreed without informing Akatsuki's other members. In the anime, Obito learned of a conspiracy between Hanzo and Danzo Shimura to eliminate Yahiko. He intercepted and killed the members of Akatsuki that tried to rescue Yahiko, and once Yahiko was dead, encouraged Nagato in a new direction for the organization, one focusing on acquiring the tailed beasts. While Nagato became the Akatsuki leader and recruited powerful Missing Nin for their cause, Obito took an alias of Tobi and changed his personality around members to conceal his identity. In Kirigakure, Obito at some point took control of the fourth Mizukage, in effect, making him the de facto Mizukage. After Kisame Hoshigaki became disillusioned by the lies of the world, Obito, as Madara, revealed himself to Kisame and promised to make a world of truth. Kisame became his loyal servant, one of the few Kirinin to knowingly work for him. During this time, Obito discovered the circumstances of Rin's death, that Kiri had sealed the three tails into her to make her a time bomb that would destroy Konoha. At Rin's insistence, Kakashi killed her to prevent this from happening. Obito's manipulation of the Mizukage was eventually discovered by Ao, and he was forced to abandon it. Twelve years before the start of the series, Obito visited Rin's grave in Konoha. Kakashi was already there when he arrived, and Obito, watching secretly, heard him confide to Rin's grave that Minato's wife, Kushina Uzumaki, would soon be giving birth. Knowing that Kushina was the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and that the seal keeping the Nine Tails contained within her would weaken during childbirth, Obito tracked her down on the night of October 10th. He killed her Anbu bodyguards and midwives, which included the third Hokage's wife, and took her newborn son, Naruto Uzumaki, hostage to prevent Minato from interfering. Minato was able to take Naruto from him, which distracted him long enough for Obito to escape with Kushina. He extracted the Nine Tails from her body, placed it under his control with his Sharingan, and ordered it to destroy the village. Minato soon afterwards arrived to help in the village defense. Before Minato could contribute much, or even tell anyone what had happened, Obito located him and tried to use Kamui to send him away and prevent further interference. Minato was able to escape with his Flying Thunder God technique, but Obito pursued him. 
Minato didn't recognize Obito as they fought, instead suspecting he was Madara Uchiha. He initially struggled to successfully strike Obito, but after several failed attacks, Minato finally hit him with a Rasengan and branded him with a Flying Thunder God seal, allowing him to teleport to Obito whenever he wanted. He then used the Contract Seal on Obito to release the Ninetales from his control. Wounded and deprived from his best weapon, Obito fled. Minato gave his life to save the village by sealing the Ninetales into his son, and thus never had the chance to inform anyone of Obito's involvement. Konoha's leadership nevertheless suspected an Uchiha involvement, and to that end placed all members of the clan under heavy scrutiny. Years later in the anime, Obito attacked the Fire Daimyo's convoy en route to Konoha, placing everyone in a genjutsu and killing Tenma Izumo, but swiftly retreats after sensing Kakashi approaching. Years later, the Uchiha, as a result of their mistreatment, began plotting a coup d'etat. Obito returned to the village with the intention of exacerbating the conflict, but was discovered by Itachi Uchiha. Believing Obito was Madara, Itachi asked for his help in wiping out their clansmen, offering revenge against them for their treatment of Madara decades earlier in exchange for Obito's agreement to spare the village. Obito accepted and offered Itachi a position in Akatsuki. In the anime during the night of the massacre, he slaughtered the Konoha military police force and killed Izumi Uchiha. Afterwards, he collected several Uchiha corpses in order to extract their Sharingan for his own use. He also met with Danzo around this time. Following the attack, he cut his hair and brought Itachi into his organization. Kazekage Rescue Mission As Tobi, he assisted Zetsu with locating Sasori's body. Once he found it and took Sasori's ring, he expressed his belief that he would now be able to join Akatsuki. They next tracked down Daedara's disembodied arm with its ring still attached. Tobi initially believed Daedara had also died, only for Daedara to appear before them shortly afterwards. Tobi was somewhat relieved to see him but was concerned for both his well-being and capability with rather offensive jokes, provoking Daedara to strangle him with his legs. Three Tails Appearance Tobi was indeed accepted into Akatsuki as Sasori's replacement. Partnered with Daedara, he was assigned to capture the Three Tails. In the anime, Daedara treated Tobi to some dango before the mission, a ploy to get him to remove his mask. He turned away while he ate, preventing Daedara from seeing anything. They split up after eating and Tobi eventually found Konoha Shinobi using the four corner sealing barrier, which he deduced was meant to seal the three tails. He informed Daedara of his discovery and they approached and killed the two Anbu put in charge of the sealing. When they located the three tails, Tobi tried to convince Daedara to fight it in his place. When the three tails chased Tobi, Daedara used his explosive clay on it while it's distracted. The rest of the battle went unseen. After they defeated the Three Tails, Toby claimed responsibility for the beast's capture, saying his technique was flawless and that it made sense to assign him to the mission. Daedara retorted that it was actually his clay that defeated the Three Tails. Toby, unconvinced, fell asleep during Daedara's argument. Daedara woke him up by detonating a clay bomb next to him. When they got the Three Tails to an Akatsuki base, the Akatsuki members convened and sealed it. Itachi Pursuit Mission when Akatsuki assembled to extract the Four Tails, they were informed that their former member Orochimaru had been killed by Sasuke Uchiha. Daedara was angry that Sasuke killed Orochimaru before he had his own chance to, and so, after the Four Tails was sealed, resolved to kill Sasuke instead. Tobi accompanied him. When they located Sasuke, Tobi approached him first and was immediately attacked. He briefly pretended to be killed and then complimented Sasuke's speed. Having served the role of distraction well, Tobi sat back as Daedara attacked Sasuke, occasionally offering assistance by planting Daedara's explosives around the area. Daedara became increasingly desperate during their battle, forcing Tobi to retreat to a safe distance to escape the effects of his C4. Ultimately, Daedara resorted to using C0, killing himself and catching Tobi in the blast. Zetsu reported Tobi's and Daedara's deaths to Akatsuki. Shortly afterwards, Tobi met with Pain and Konan in Amigakure. He expressed his satisfaction with Sasuke's development, adding that, because Itachi's death was imminent, they would be able to approach him soon. He also remarked on Naruto Uzumaki and how impressed he was by his performance against Kakuzu. He instructed Pain to capture Naruto for the nine tails sealed within him, but warned him not to underestimate Naruto. He departed, remarking that his, Madara Uchiha's plans, would soon be complete. 
Toby continued to keep tabs on Sasuke as he moved into confrontation with Itachi. Fated Battle Between Brothers When a group of Konoha ninja were about to interfere with Sasuke and Itachi's fight, Toby intercepted them, keeping them busy until Zetsu reported Sasuke's victory. Because the Konoha ninja heard Zetsu's report, Toby quickly teleported to Sasuke's location and escaped with his unconscious body. He treated Sasuke's injuries and waited for him to wake up. When he does, Toby introduced himself as Madara Uchiha and exposed his right Sharingan to prove his identity. This triggered an Amaterasu in Sasuke's left eye against Toby. Toby retreated into the darkness while he put out the flames, returning with his mask back on to muse about how far Itachi would go to protect Sasuke. Sasuke was confused, so Toby divulged the Uchiha history, though he denied his involvement in the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack and the truth surrounding Itachi's role in the Uchiha clan downfall. Sasuke was overwhelmed with grief for having killed Itachi and resolved to avenge him by destroying Konoha. Naruto Jinraiden The Day the Wolf Howled In the novel, Tobi buries Itachi's body after taking his eyes. He speaks to Sasuke when he wakes up about the so-called justice of the ninja villages, which is built upon an endless cycle of deaths and loss. He contrasts this with hatred, which he claims to be both focused and finite. When Sasuke's eyes start to bother him, Toby offers him Itachi's eye drops and the receipt for the prescription, which sends Sasuke to the Howling Wolf Village. Six Tales Unleashed In the anime, Toby and the other members of Akatsuki gather to seal the Six Tales. Pain's Assault Because they had a shared interest in destroying Konoha, Toby convinced Sasuke and his team Taka to start working with Akatsuki. Before Akatsuki could offer its assistance, Toby assigned Taka the task of capturing the Eight Tails, one of the two remaining tailed beasts. After Taka left, Toby met with Kisame, consoling him over Itachi's death and revealing his face, allowing Kisame to recognize him as the former Mizukage. Toby also met with Zetsu, and they discussed how much easier their plans would be now that Itachi was dead. Zetsu questioned Akatsuki's recent actions, specifically the loss of five members, but Toby insisted it had all been worth it to gain Sasuke's loyalty. Taka later delivered the A-Tails Jinchuriki, Killer B, to Toby. The remaining members of Akatsuki began the sealing process, but was quickly found that it was only one of the A-Tails tentacles disguised as B. Toby was irritated that Sasuke failed in his mission, but still sealed the tentacle into the demonic statue of the Outer Path, so that it would at least have a fragment of the beast's chakra. 5 Kage Summit Zetsu reports to Toby the outcome of Pain's mission to capture Naruto. Although Konoha has been destroyed, Naruto was not captured. What's more, Pain, Nagato, gave his life to perform the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique and revive the villagers he killed. Upset by yet more setbacks, Toby assigns Kisame to capture B and tracks down Sasuke and Taka on their way to attack Konoha. He informs them that they are too late since the village is already gone and adds that they sell Oakatsuki for their failure to catch the Eight Tails. While they're speaking, Zetsu reports that Danzo is to be the next Hokage and that he will be attending the Kage Summit in the Land of Iron. Toby sees a compromise. Danzo was a conspirator in the Uchiha assassination and if Sasuke were to kill him during the Kage Summit, that would serve Toby's purposes. Sasuke agrees to the arrangement and is escorted to the Land of Iron by Zetsu. Once he and Taka get there, however, Toby instructs Zetsu to reveal their presence to the assembled Kage. While Taka is placed against the Kage's combined might, Toby meets with Naruto, who is also in the Land of Iron in an effort to understand Nagato's change of heart. Kakashi and Yamato confront him, but Toby doesn't want to fight, instead telling him about the Sage of the Six Paths, the truth of the Uchiha clan, and Sasuke's descent into darkness. They doubt the validity of what he tells them, but he's unconcerned and leaves shortly afterwards. As Sasuke is about to be killed by the Kage, Tobi rescues him. He sends Sasuke away, sending Karin with him so she can heal his injuries. Though disappointed that Sasuke was not more of a match for the Kage, Tobi is nevertheless happy by the development of Sasuke's Mangekyo Sharingan. Telling the Kage and those in attendance that he is Madara Uchiha, he explains the Eye of the Moon plan to them and concludes by asking for their support by giving him Killer Bee and Naruto. The Kage refuse, so Tobi declares war on them, all before disappearing. Tobi intercepts Danzo while he's fleeing the summit. He's attacked by Danzo's bodyguards, 
Fu Yamanaka and Torune Aburame. But other than the loss of an arm to Torune's Rinkaichu, Toby easily disposes of both. With Danzo alone, Toby teleports Sasuke and Karin to their location to fulfill his promise of letting Sasuke kill him. Toby observes the battle and is glad when Sasuke is finally able to develop Susanoo. When Sasuke emerges victorious, Toby approaches the dying Danzo to take Shisui's eye, which was implanted in Danzo's right eye socket. Danzo activates the reverse force symbol ceiling in an attempt to take Toby and Sasuke with him, but they're able to get out of range in time. Toby collects Danzo's body and suggests that Sasuke take some time to rest. At his lab, Toby discovers that Danzo destroyed Shisui's Sharingan before he died. Cursing him, Toby gets a new arm and makes plans to retrieve Nagato's Rinnegan to prepare for war. Before he can leave, Zetsu informs him of Sasuke's fight with Naruto. Toby interrupts them and advises Sasuke to save the fight for another time, in light of Sasuke's deteriorating vision. Once back at the mountain's graveyard, Toby restores Sasuke's vision at his request by implanting him with Itachi's eyes, then leaves him to recuperate. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. As he's leaving the mountain's graveyard, Toby is confronted by Kabuto Yakushi, who requests to ally with Toby in the coming war. Toby declines and attacks him, prompting Kabuto to use the summoning impure world reincarnation to revive five deceased members of Akatsuki, Sasori, Deidara, Itachi, Nagato, and Kakuzu. Kabuto offers them as pawns to be used on the battlefield, and all he asks in return is to be given Sasuke. Toby contemplates refusal, to which Kabuto responds by reviving Madara Uchiha. Horrified that Kabuto knows that Madara is actually dead, Toby is forced to accept an alliance, but sets the condition that Sasuke will not be turned over until after the war. Kabuto agrees and sends the summons away. Toby escorts Kabuto into his hideout so he can assess his battle strength and reformulate his plans for war. Toby later infiltrates Amegakure to acquire Nagato's corpse, He's immediately confronted by Konan. Toby tries to buy back her cooperation by informing her of his involvement in Yahiko's creation of Akatsuki, but she doesn't believe him. Konan turns into paper and engulfs Toby, hoping to use the exploding tags mingled with her paper in order to sacrifice herself and kill him. Toby realizes what she's up to in time and warps the explosion away, saving both of their lives but losing his right arm. Konan tries another attack detonating a constant series of 600 billion paper explosives. The explosions go on for a period of 10 minutes, longer than Toby can remain intangible for. He therefore uses his left Sharingan to perform Izanagi to survive the attack. Unaware of this and thinking he's dead, Konan lowers her guard, allowing Toby to sneak up behind her and stab her. He asks what it is about Naruto that could have caused her and Nagato to betray him in the way that they have, to which she responds that Naruto is the light that will build a bridge to peace. Tobi avows himself as the darkness that crushes Naruto's light and places her under a genjutsu to extract the location of Nagato's body before he kills her. When Tobi finds Nagato's body, he sees Nagato smiling at him, which he interprets as continued betrayal. He shuts Nagato's eyes before teleporting the body away. After replacing his left Sharingan with one of Nagato's Rinnegan, Toby receives a report about the location of Naruto and Killer B. Kabuto offers to capture them for him as a sign of good faith. He ultimately fails but does manage to bring back Yamato, who he can use in to strengthen the White Zetsu army. Toby finds this a fair alternative. Fourth Shinobi World War Confrontation when preparations are complete, the thousands of Zetsu and many of Kabuto's reincarnated ninja mobilize, initiating the Fourth Shinobi World War. In the confusion, Kabuto also captures Anko Mitarashi outside of the mountain's graveyard. Tobi suspects that Kabuto led her to their hideout and believes Kabuto plans to have the Akatsuki and the allied Shinobi forces destroy each other. Although confident that this won't happen, Tobi orders Kabuto to kill Anko. Kabuto refuses on the grounds that he can use Anko to make the impure world reincarnation stronger, something that's in Tobi's best interests. Tobi remains uneasy about Kabuto and has White Zetsu plant spores on him so that his actions can be monitored. He later learns that Naruto and B have left their confinement and joined the battle. With things moving towards their conclusion, Tobi goes to the location of the First Division where he summons the demonic statue of the Outer Path. While the statue decimates the division, Tobi seeks out the Benihisago and the Kohaku no Johei, which contained the reincarnated gold and silver brothers. 
Darui and Chikamaru conclude that he plans to make use of the brother's Nine Tails chakra as part of his plans and try to stop him. He compliments them on guessing his intentions and has the statue attack them while he escapes with the two items. As dawn breaks on the second day of the war, Toby stands behind his own six paths of pain, comprised from the reincarnated Jinchuriki. Fort Shinobi World War Climax Toby leads the six paths towards Killer B and Naruto. Naruto headbutts Toby as soon as they meet, to which Toby only responds by pointing out that Naruto couldn't even scratch his mask. Naruto notices his new Rinnegan and remarks that it's the same as the other Maduras. Realizing that Kabuto has revealed his secret, Toby quietly curses Kabuto before shedding his Madara identity, embracing the role of nobody. Toby has his six paths engage Naruto and a transformed killer B. B levels the area in an attempt to force Toby away while he seals the six Jinchuriki, which Toby counters by having the Jinchuriki enter version 2 forms. As the Jinchuriki overwhelm Naruto and B, Toby takes advantage of Naruto's distraction and nearly captures him, only to be parried by Might Guy and Kakashi Hatake. In the confusion of their appearance, the Five Tails breaks free of Toby's control, but he promptly subdues it. He then forces the Four Tails and Six Tails to fully transform in an attempt to stack the odds in his favor. The Four Tails is able to swallow Naruto, leading Toby to believe that Naruto is out of commission. Instead, the Four Tails manages to communicate to Naruto how Toby is controlling it. Naruto escapes from its mouth, locates the chakra receiver embedded in the Four Tails' flesh, and removes it. With the Four Tails free, Toby quickly summons the demonic statue of the Outer Path to reseal the beast. He has the remaining Jinchuriki transform into the respective tailed beasts to try and finally bring the situation under control. Despite the overwhelming power of the five-tailed beasts, Naruto, working in full cooperation with the nine tails, is able to neutralize all of them and release them from Toby's influence. Like the four tails, Toby seals them back into the statue. Despite the setbacks, Toby remains confident that he will emerge victorious. Sometime later, the revived bodies of the Jinchuriki, having been kept restrained by a transformed killer bee, are released from the effects of the impure world reincarnation, causing them to once again become lifeless corpses. As this could only mean that Kabuto has failed, Toby realizes that time is running out. With no other options, he tosses the Benihisago and the Kohaku no Johe into the demonic statue's mouth, which, in addition to the eight tails tentacles from the fake killer bee, completes the set of the nine tailed beasts initiating the Ten Tails revival. While the demonic statue undergoes its regeneration into the Ten Tails, Toby protects it from Naruto, B, Guy, and Kakashi. Despite their combined efforts, they are unable to get past Toby or damage him. Toby is even able to turn some of their own attacks against them, such as a lightning-infused kunai that Kakashi is forced to send away with Kamui. After this latter exchange, however, Kakashi notices that Toby's mask takes damage, Unable to attribute the damage to any of their attacks, Kakashi tests a theory. Naruto attacks Toby with the Rasengan, and when it appears to pass through Toby, Kakashi targets the Rasengan with Kamui. Toby's arm is then damaged. Kakashi concludes that his Kamui and Toby's ability share the same dimension, that attacks sent to the dimension at the same moment that Toby has transported his body parts there for safety will do damage to Toby. Now that they have a strategy to use against Toby, Naruto, B, Guy, and Kakashi begin to coordinate their efforts. One of Naruto's shadow clones attacks Toby, but the attack appears to fail and the clones disappear. The real Naruto attacks immediately afterwards with a tailed beast ball, which Toby avoids by retreating to the other dimension. There, he finds Naruto's shadow clone waiting for him, having been sent there by Kakashi's Kamui. Before he has a chance to react, he is hit in the face with a Rasengan, shattering his mask. His face revealed, Kakashi and Guy recognize him as their former teammate Obito Uchiha. Kakashi is devastated to learn that Obito is not only alive, but is now one of the world's worst criminals. Before he can find out how Obito survived, the reincarnated Madara Uchiha arrives at Obito's side. Seeing the demonic statue, Madara chides Obito for reviving the Ten Tails prematurely and reviving him in the state he is in. Obito informs him of Nagato's betrayal before returning him his gunbai and directing him to Naruto and B. While Madara goes after them, Obito fights Kakashi. He ignores Kakashi's pleas for an explanation and nearly kills him, stopped only by Naruto. When Kakashi gets over his initial shock and starts to fight seriously, Obito sends him away with Kamui. This is part of Kakashi's plan, 
as through a combination of efforts, Naruto and Killer Bee nearly destroy the demonic statue. But the attack comes a moment too late, and from the smoke emerges the Tentails. Obito and Madara take position atop the Tentails' head and attach themselves to it so they can control its actions. Because they no longer need Naruto or B, they direct the Tentails to kill them. However, the combined allied shinobi forces arrive in time to stop the attack. The allies collaborate against the Tentails and succeed in restraining it, but the Tentails matures to its next form and releases itself. Though this was countered easily enough, they have the Tentails destroy the allied shinobi forces' headquarters to prevent future collaborations. Madara remarks that the battle is more difficult than it should be and blames Obito's deviations from the original plan, namely not bringing Madara back to life in the correct way. Obito replies that he never trusted Madara would keep his word and that he now follows his own version of the Eye of the Moon plan. Obito uses the beast as a medium to fire off several wooden projectiles into the assembled alliance. Many die, including Neji Hyuga, which Obito uses to try and encourage the alliance, and specifically Naruto of the futility of their resistance. Naruto and the allies refuse to be broken by their shared loss and instead unite for yet another attack successfully separating the Tentails from Madara and Obito's control. Madara and Obito join forces against the Shinobi army, but now have the unrestrained Tentails to contend with. The Tentails prepares to use Tenpenchi, which Kakashi attempts to stop with Kamui. Obito intercepts him and together they relocate to the other dimension. With nobody to interrupt them, Kakashi again tries to speak with him, and Obito finally starts to answer some of his questions, explicitly stating Kakashi should feel no guilt for killing Rin so many years ago. Kakashi tries to explain, but Obito saves him the trouble, saying he already knows the circumstances surrounding Rin's death and that it was Rin's idea to die, which is what led him to despair at the world that forced Rin to kill herself. Kakashi persists that what Obito is doing is wrong, but Obito continues to rebuff him. In an ensuing fight, he directs the outcome to have Kakashi stab him through the heart with a lightning-infused kunai in order to get rid of the forbidden individual curse tag Madara placed on him years ago. Obito gives Kakashi a non-fatal stab in return, which causes him to fall to the ground and allows Obito to return to the real world. Badly injured, Obito teleports to the top of the Tentails. Madara senses his return and his weakened state, and exerts his control over Obito to try and force him to perform the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique and bring him back to life. Before the technique can be completed, the allies try to eliminate Obito, including a reincarnated Minato, who is able to teleport to Obito's location using the same Flying Thunder God seal he branded Obito with years earlier. Minato and Obito only recognize each other after Obito has been cut down. Madara admits defeat, but not because Obito is dead. Obito, already beyond Madara's influence, was sealing the Ten Tails into his body, a process he completed in time. Now the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, Obito begins attacking the other reincarnated Hokage, using his new abilities to overpower them and all others with ease. Attacks don't affect him, and his truth-seeking balls overcome every defense that's placed against him. The allies' only advantage is Obito's lack of control. The Tentail's power physically distorts his body, and some inner struggle deprives of any discretion or precision in his actions. Deep within his mind, Obito fights to rein in the Tentails and keep it from tearing him apart. By focusing on a picture of his old team, he's able to subjugate the Tentails' power. Birth of the Tentails Jinchuriki He hones the Tentails, composes himself, and begins a methodical attack against the allied shinobi, nullifying every jutsu they use against him. In a blind gamble, Gamakichi uses Starch Syrup Gun against Obito, which is the first attack to not be completely nullified. Naruto realizes that, despite all of Obito's new powers, he remains vulnerable to Senjutsu. With the moon nearing the optimal position to perform the infinite Tsukuyomi, Obito begins making final preparations. He traps the alliance in a barrier and creates an enormous tree with four flowers, each flower charging a tailed beast ball. The balls are fired at the Shinobi forces, but Naruto and Minato teleport everyone to safety. After repelling the two's Senjutsu-fueled counterattack, Obito summons the tree form of the Ten Tails and has it absorb the chakra of nearby ninja, taking the chakra and killing many. Obito uses this rising death toll to shatter the determination of the Shinobi Alliance, offering them mercy if they stop fighting, and allow themselves to enter the infinite dream. 
Naruto is nearly shattered, but is galvanized by Sasuke's refusal to surrender, and he rallies the shinobi forces. Naruto and Sasuke join forces, combining their own senjutsu abilities against him to increasingly greater effect. Obito, who is fighting both the shinobi alliance by controlling the tree, and Naruto and Sasuke personally, becomes frustrated with their continued attacks and Naruto's denial of his way of thinking. Obito forms the sword of Nunoboko, intending to use it to strike all of them down for good. Naruto and Sasuke realize they will only have a small window to defeat Obito, so they enlist the aid of their classmates from Konoha to help them with a combined attack against Obito. They successfully overwhelm Obito, and he begins to lose control of the Ten Tails Chakra, giving the Alliance a chance to pull it from his body. During this time, Naruto enters Obito's consciousness through their linked chakras and begins to reason with him. Though he tries to resist the pull of both Naruto's words and the Shinobi Alliance's grip on his chakra, the chakra of the Nine-Tailed Beasts is removed from him and he falls to the ground, his power and transformation gone, and his battle lost. As Obito lies helpless, Kakashi finally returns from Kamui's dimension with the resolve to kill him. Minato stops him and explains it's no longer necessary, as Obito's defeat by Naruto has finally shown him that he was wrong all this time, and that deep down, he was living a lie fighting for the infinite Tsukuyomi. As the Alliance begins shifting their attention to Madara, who's fighting elsewhere, Obito decides to use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive everyone he's killed as atonement for his sins. As he's performing the technique, Black Zetsu emerges from underground and forces him to change targets reviving Madara instead. Black Zetsu tries to take the Rinnegan Obito is using also, but realizes it will not be able to get away from Kakashi and Minato. Obito explains to them what he has been forced to do and pleads with them to destroy his Rinnegan at any cost. While he struggles against Black Zetsu's control, the demonic statue is summoned from Obito's body, sapping what little energy he has left and enabling Black Zetsu to overpower him. Obito later manages to reassert control of his body just before Black Zetsu can transfer the Rinnegan and the Ninetales Yin half, taken from Minato, to Madara, who has already regained the Rinnegan Obito hid away and become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Madara tries to convince Obito of the error he's making and lets his guard down while he gives Obito another chance. Obito opts instead to stab Madara and in the process steals fragments of the One Tail and Eight Tails Chakra embracing his identity as Obito Uchiha for the first time in years. Because Obito has all of the pieces that Madara still needs for his plans, his escape becomes paramount. Kakashi uses Kamui on him while he also uses it on himself, allowing him to flee to the other dimension before Madara can stop him. In the other dimension, Obito finds Sakura and Naruto, the former performing emergency life support on the latter because of the removal of the Ninetales Yang half from his body. Although she's skeptical of Obito, she allows him to seal the Nine Tails Yin half and the other tailed beast's chakra he has into Naruto since it's the only chance of saving him. When Naruto recovers, Obito sends him back to the real world to fight. He then asks Sakura to destroy his Rinnegan. Before she can go through with it, Madara arrives, having stolen Kakashi's Sharingan so that he could confront Obito. Obito teleports Sakura away so that Madara couldn't kill her. Because Obito is out of options, Madara gets one last thing off his chest. He orchestrated Rin's death all of those years ago in order to gain Obito's cooperation. With that said, Black Zetsu takes control of Obito's body. Kaguya Otsutsuki Strikes Obito awakens later to find circumstances greatly changed. The Rinnegan is gone, replaced by his original left eye. Black Zetsu is completely gone from his body, the infinite Tsukiyomi has been cast and the world trapped in a dream. Madara is gone, replaced by Kaguya Otsutsuki. Only Naruto and Sasuke, with help from Kakashi and Sakura, remain to resist Kaguya. They're now all stuck in a network of Kaguya's dimensions, lost within which somewhere is Sasuke. After taking all this in, Obito expresses his belief that he can use his two Mangekyo Sharingan to locate Sasuke. Naruto creates an opportunity for Obito and Sakura to infiltrate Kaguya's core dimension and then draws her away while they work. Through a process of trial and error, the stress this causes to his body being healed by Sakura, Obito searches through Kaguya's dimensions with Kamui and eventually finds Sasuke. Obito returns Sasuke and Sakura to the dimension where Naruto and Kakashi are. He watches as Naruto and Sasuke fight Kaguya. 
Their combined power is the only one capable of stopping her. Aware of this, Kaguya relocates them to a dimension with powerful gravity and pins Naruto and Sasuke down while she attacks with all killing ash bones. Obito and Kakashi, empowered by a shared memory of their past friendship, place themselves in front of Naruto and Sasuke as shields. Because his odyssey began by saving Kakashi from death by a boulder, Obito decides he must now end things by saving Kakashi's life again. He uses his left eye to teleport the attack aimed at Kakashi away, allowing the attack directed at him to connect. Obito's body begins to crumble and there's nothing anyone can do to save him. He warns Kakashi that he will not be around to save him a third time and places his faith for a better world in Naruto before dying with a smile. Obito finds himself in the limbo between life and the afterlife. There, he sees Rin waiting for him. Obito apologizes for taking so long to join her and also for many of the things he did while she waited for him. Rin assures him that it was okay because he tried his very hardest and that she was always watching him. Though he's eager to start spending time with her, he's worried that Kakashi might do something stupid like die and ruin things between them again. Therefore, he uses Kamui and has his spirit return to the living plane and inhabits Kakashi, imbuing him temporarily with the powers of his Mangekyo Sharingan. Kakashi uses them and the resulting Susanoo to provide backup for Naruto and Sasuke, giving them the opening they need to defeat Kaguya. With all scores settled, Obito apologizes to Kakashi one final time for everything, and the two part fully reconciled with, Obito now free to join Rin in the afterlife. Legacy Following Obito's apparent death, Kakashi was left greatly changed by the experience. The Sharingan that Obito gave to Kakashi helped him gain fame throughout the ninja world and earned him the nickname of Copy Ninja Kakashi for over a thousand jutsu he copied with the Sharingan. Obito's philosophy about the importance of teammates also guided Kakashi during all his future missions and, once Kakashi was old enough to begin training his own students, became the single most important lesson he wanted them to learn and demonstrate. On a more personal level, Obito's death remained ever in his thoughts and he would often spend his time visiting the Memorial Stone, where Obito's name is engraved, to reflect on events. The Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack that Obito was responsible for would end up directing the course of Naruto and Sasuke's lives. Naruto's parents died that night, leaving him an orphan. Like Obito before him, Naruto came to dream of gaining Konoha's acknowledgement by becoming Hokage and pursued that goal against all odds. The suspicion that an Uchiha was behind the attack would ultimately lead to the clan's downfall. Sasuke, the only Uchiha to be spared from death, dedicated his life to taking vengeance against those behind the death of his family at any cost. Despite the dark path he took in his life, Obito's actions eventually led the five great shinobi countries aligning with one another to form the allied shinobi forces, and later the shinobi union, ultimately fulfilling his promise of ending all wars and bringing peace to the world to Rin. Obito's grandmother. With both of her grandson's parents dead, she became Obito's guardian. On the day of the youth ninja competition, she answered her apartment door when Rin Nohara arrived and teased Obito about having a great grandchild. Later that night at dinner, Obito asked her which of his parents he took after. She responds that he takes after both of them and that he must honor them and work for the sake of others. She presumably died either before or during the Uchiha clan downfall along with the rest of her clansmen. Rai Uchiha Born to the Uchiha clan, Rai was able to awaken the Sharingan in his youth, as well as his own Mangekyo Sharingan. During the continuous struggle between shinobi clans, Rai and his clansmen faced an opposing force who quickly wiped out Rai's comrades with a trap. However, Rai nullified the outcome by sacrificing his left eye in order to use Izanagi. With the enemy slaughtered, he boldly declared that the Uchiha clan was invincible due to the powerful dojutsu. His prowess in using the forbidden technique made him the leader of the small group of his shinobi until he was challenged by Baru Uchiha, who was able to kill Rai by using Izanagi himself. Sarada Uchiha Sarada Uchiha is a kunoichi from Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. Because she was raised only by her mother without having her father around, Sarada initially struggles to understand who she is or what she's supposed to be. After meeting him with the help of Naruto Uzumaki, Sarada comes to believe that she is defined by the connections she has with others. And as a member of Team Konohamaru, she seeks to someday become Hokage so that she can connect with as many people as possible. Background 
Sarada is the only child of Sakura and Sasuke Uchiha. She was born while Sakura accompanied Sasuke on his travels and was delivered with the help of Karin in one of Orochimaru's hideouts. As such, there is no record of her birth at the Konoha Hospital. As a way to keep a connection with Sasuke, despite being happy for him, Karin kept Sarada's umbilical cord. After that, the family returned to Konoha to raise Sarada, where the two helped her learn to walk. During her father's absence from the village while gathering information on Kaguya Otsutsuki, she became ill with a high fever and afterwards began wearing glasses, which, unknown to her, were a gift from Karin. Due to the importance of the mission, her father wasn't around much, and because of this, she did not know anything about him, including what he physically looked like as an adult. Sakura did her best to comfort Sarada during Sasuke's absence, assuring her that her father loved her and that when he completed his important mission, he'd come home. When this conversation went on for too long, Sakura poked Sarada's forehead and promised to continue it some other time. As Sarada's parents continued to stay close to their own childhood friends, she ultimately got to know the kids of her parents' respective friends very well. On the day of Naruto's inauguration as the 7th Hokage, she watched the ceremony beside her mother and Chocho Akamichi. Academy Entrance Arc in the anime, on the first day of the academy, Sarada attended her class entrance ceremony and was placed in Shino Abarame's homeroom. After Boruto's suspension ended two weeks later, Chocho noted that Sarada was especially close to Boruto due to their respective parents, though Sarada voiced her dislike of being considered close friends simply because of their parents. Later, as Boruto fought against Iwabi Yuino, she watched the fight in the training hall, leading to Anko Mirarashi scolding them for skipping class. When the class began learning about the summoning technique, tension arose between Sarada and Boruto, which led to the class's two genders bickering against each other. Seeing this, Shino organized a race between the boys and girls, which involved reaching a flag on top of the academy. The challenge quickly got heated with many of the boys being taken out of the contest until only Boruto, Shikadai, and Inojin were left on their team. Getting desperate, Boruto found a summoning scroll and miraculously summoned a snake-like creature. Going on a rampage, it knocked Chocho off the roof, leading to Sarada and Boruto rescuing her until Konohamaru Sarutobi arrived and subdued the beast. During the ordeal, Sumire Kake captured the flag, though the girls chose to make peace with the boys. When Mitsuki joined her class, many girls found him very handsome, though Sarada sighed in distaste at them for judging somebody purely on looks. The next day, Sarada participated in the class's welcoming party for Mitsuki, which became a disaster after he disrupted the party with his wind release. Afterwards, a school repairman who was possessed went berserk, leading to Chocho dragging Sarada into the fray. Combating the worker alongside Iwabi, Shigadai Nara, Boruto, and Mitsuki, the students managed to subdue him. The day after Sumire turned down Magide Kakoremino, Sarada and Chocho protected her while he continued to stalk her, leading him to trapping the pair in a room while he abducted Sumire. After escaping, the group of students tracked Sumire to the academy roof, during which Sarada blocked Magide's kunai attack on Chocho. Talking to Magide, Chocho de-escalated the situation which consequently freed Magide from being possessed. On her way to reporting to her sensei after night training, Sarada bumped into Boruto and began talking about Kagemasa, during which he runs off after someone. Tracking him down, Sarada saved him from a possessed Gangoro Kamakura and managed to defeat the actor, resulting in him being freed from being possessed. With a workplace field trip coming up, Sarada and Chocho decided to do their workplace experience at a nail salon. After Sumire, Wasabi Izuno, and Namida Suzumena were attacked by a possessed villager, Sarada and the other students visited the three in hospital, where she escorted Boruto out when he arrived so it would remain quiet. Later, after practicing in a three-man team in class, Shino was called aside to discuss the absent Sumire, leaving Sarada in charge. Returning with Sumire, all the students were delighted and embraced her return. Sarada Uchiha Arc As her academy graduation neared, Sarada became jealous that her classmates had the opportunity to train with their fathers, leading her to asking Sakura about Sasuke. Unable to answer if he wore glasses, Sakura accidentally destroyed their house when Sarada questioned if they were even married, resulting in her fainting. Leaving Sakura in Shizune's care, Sarada discovered a group photo of Taka, leading her to becoming suspicious of the woman with the glasses photographed next to Sasuke. Unable to get details revolving around her birth from Shizune, she approached Chocho, who had doubts about her own parents as well. Sarada decided to seek out Sasuke, leading to her heading to the Hokage office, during which she overheard Naruto discussing plans to go and meet with Sasuke. Preparing to follow him, Chocho tagged along, and they noticed Boruto arriving late to deliver a lunch to his father. Sarada offered to take it in his place in order for her to have a reason to chase after Naruto. As she and Chocho hurried to catch up with Naruto, they were confronted by a boy with a Sharingan named Shin Uchiha. 
Sarada was surprised by him, having been informed that her and her father were the only biological Uchiha left, and so Sarada refused Shin's request to go with him. He attacked them, leading to Naruto saving them after having sensed them. Overwhelmed, the boy retreated with aid from a creature. Naruto decided it would be safer for them to accompany him rather than return to the village without an escort. During their trip, Naruto told Sarada his history with Sasuke, and that she shared his looks. Nearing Ridge Tower, Sarada excused herself to go to the bathroom, when she instead ran towards the rendezvous point, during which she awakened her Sharingan at the thought of meeting Sasuke. Entering the tower, Sasuke drew his sword on her for information, believing she was one of Shin's associates. Calling him Dad, Sasuke realized who Sarada is, just as Naruto and Chocho arrived. Reprimanding the Kage for bringing his daughter and Chocho, Sarada defended Naruto, saying that she came without his permission because she wanted to ask him if Sakura was really her mother. Not providing any clarification or explanation for his absence from her life, Sarada ran outside and cried. While being comforted by Naruto, the pair are attacked by a man also called Shin Uchiha, who is accompanied by the other Shin. Protected by Naruto from Shin's assault, he found himself crippled, leading to Sasuke having to shield Sarada from Shin's blades with his body. On the verge of defeat, Sakura arrived and immediately attacked the elder Shin. With both Shins defeated, their creature transported Sakura and the pair away. Turning their attention to rescuing Sakura, the fathers decided to go to Orochimaru for intel about Shin. Arriving at the Sanin's residence, Sarada discovered that the two shinobi in her photo resided there. Pulling Suigetsu aside and informing him of her parentage doubts, Suigetsu took DNA from her and tested it against the DNA of what he believed to be Karin's umbilical cord, which resulted in the DNA test being a perfect match. Distraught, Naruto comforted her, before the two ran outside to depart for Sakura's whereabouts, which were revealed by Orochimaru. Arriving at Shin's hideout, Sasuke immediately rescued Sakura while crippling Shin, leading to his clone sons finishing him off. While Naruto and Sasuke fought the clones, Sarada attacked the creature that the original Shin was in the process of using to escape before he died. After Naruto de-escalated the situation and calmed the clones, Sakura told her there was no doubt they were mother and daughter, to which Sarada agreed and Sasuke stated she is the proof of her parents' connection. After the ordeal, the group enrolled the clones in the Konoha orphanage before returning to Konoha with Sasuke. After spending some time with her parents, they took a family photo, and Sarada along with Sakura later saw Sasuke off as he left the village. Returning to the academy, Sarada thanked Boruto, as her act of delivering Naruto's lunch to him ultimately led her to decide on becoming Hokage. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day During the new Konohagakure holiday, Parent and Child Day, Sarada resigned herself to spend the family uniting holiday training with Boruto while Sasuke was still away on mission and Sakura had to spend much of her time at the hospital. Later, she found to her joy that Sasuke had indeed returned to the village. Having spent such little time with Sarada, the normally poised man struggled to connect with his daughter, simply trying to get inspiration wherever he could, instead simply embarrassing Sarada. Finally having enough, Sarada stormed off. She was then approached by Boruto. While Sarada feared that her father didn't really know her, Boruto countered that Sarada didn't know much about him either. At Boruto's suggestion, he insisted to just enjoy the time she has with him. Later, while working on her shuriken skills, Sasuke approached her again, applauding her on her goal of becoming Hokage. He insisted that she would make a better Hokage than he ever could and would support her through her struggles, much to her delight. As the day ended, she and Sasuke returned home where the entire Chiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. School Trip Arc in the anime, Sarada volunteered Boruto to be their class's trip leader for their upcoming trip to the Land of Water. Upon arriving in Kirigakure, the class was escorted through the village by Kagura Karatachi, during which they met the 5th and 6th Mizukage. Later, Sarada found Surushi Hachiya injured, leading to her treating his injuries and being informed of Boruto being in danger. Finding Boruto defeated at the Kirigakure Academy, she gave him first aid and was informed that Shizuma Hoshigaki was exploiting Kagura. Wanting to notify the teachers of Shizuma's intentions, Boruto stopped Sarada, as it was his job as the field trip leader to make sure it ends without an incident. After the Mizukage became aware that Kagura had betrayed Kiri alongside Shizuma's gang, Sarada and Boruto approached the pair. Being told that Kagura must suffer the consequences for breaking the rules, Sarada questioned if Chojuro truly wanted to kill Kagura before telling him that the Hokage she aspires to be would never sacrifice a life for the village. Pressuring Chojuro into making the decision look like a fight between kids rather than a rebellion, he accepted Boruto's proposition and decides to assist the pair as their guide. Confronting the group in Memorial Park as they prepared to begin their village revolution, Shizuma cast mist around the surrounding area to conceal the fight. Ichiroto Oniyuzu used Shibuki to break apart the ground, leading to Sarada falling into a cavern below. Confronted by Buntan Kurosuki, she pressured the student with her array of lightning release techniques in conjunction with Kiba. 
Managing to survive using her Sharingan, the fight came to a standstill after Sarada copied Bontan's techniques using her Dojutsu. After managing to cast Genjutsu undetected, Sarada used a paper bomb to explode the hydrogen that had been built up during their fight in the cavern, which resulted in Buntan becoming unconscious. Exhausted, she collapsed. Stopping the rebellion, Surushi had to carry Sarada on his back to her hotel as she couldn't walk. Afterwards, they departed the village and returned to Konoha, where she, Boruto, and Iwabi received punishment for their actions during the field trip. Graduation Exams Arc as ninja classes began preparing for the graduation exams, Sarada was accompanied by Sakura when Shino interviewed her about her future goals. Later, she was interviewed by Sukiya, who she told about her ambition to become Hokage. Later, when Namida and Wasabi began having a falling out because Wasabi wasn't going to continue being a ninja, Sarada was conflicted on how to help. Boruto discreetly noted that the Hokage is supposed to help end all quarrels in the village to benefit all, motivating Sarada to help her friends. Convinced by Sarada, Wasabi spoke to her parents and made them allow her to rejoin Namida in becoming ninja together. In preparation for the Genin exams, Shino hinted to his class to try stealing the written exam's test answers, which Sarada and her friends did, leading to them all passing. The next day, the students are getting set against Academy teachers and Kakashi Harake during their 24 practical portion of the exams. While the teachers would still evaluate the students' respective improvements, their true test was against the Hokage. As the test began, Sarada and Sumire fought Konohamaru Sarutobi and were quickly defeated. Regrouping with the uncaptured students, they devised a plan, which she followed to cast Konohamaru under Genjutsu in order to fool him into being eliminated. Facing Kakashi while all the students had been transformed into copies of Boruto, he repelled them all, leading to them all being in positions to restrain him so Boruto could grab his bell. Despite their effort, Kakashi was able to hold them off until the test ended. Though they didn't get the bell, Kakashi chose to pass everyone as they succeeded in the test's true goal, teamwork and loyalty. Afterwards, she was placed on Team 3 with Boruto and Mitsuki under Konohamaru's leadership. Voicing incompatibility with Boruto, the Genin sought out the 7th Okage to request to be put on another team. While en route, Mirai Sarutobi refused to let them see Naruto, resulting in the shinobi subduing her in order to approach the Kage. Changing her mind, they instead requested their team to have the designation of Team 7, which he granted. Genin Mission Arc Naruto presented Team 7 their first mission, which involved aiding Green Banks against bandits. Upon arriving, the team learned that the bandits were actually ninja, resulting in Konohamaru questioning if they should continue the mission, as it was probably too difficult for Genin to face trained shinobi. While he discussed the matter with Kiri, the Genin witnessed Ashimaru attacking the village, leading to Konohamaru forcing him to retreat. Kiri explained that the shinobi were attacking the village to pressure her into handing them the deed to the village's bridge. During the night, Team 7 noticed several villages were being controlled by Genjutsu before subduing them. Discovering Kiri was abducted during the incident, Team 7 met with the perpetrators to exchange the deed for her. After the exchange occurred, Hidari and Ashimaru decided on killing them all, prompting Konohamaru to task the Genin in fleeing with Kiri. Pursued by Ashimaru, the Genin engaged the missing nin and defeated him after Boruto and Mitsuki launched Sarada at the missing nin in order for her to punch him. Completing the mission, the team returned to Konoha. Byakuya Gang Arc in order to capture the Byakuya gang, Team 7 was assigned alongside other Genin teams to report and observe the thieves, and depending on the situation, track them. After the thieves manipulated villagers into believing the Kaminariman company conducted corrupt practices, protesters gathered in front of the company's headquarters, leading to Kotaro Fuma assigning the same teams to placate the gathering. Taking their position, Boruto noticed Team 10 abandoning their post and followed them, leaving Sarada and Mitsuki by themselves. After being informed that some protesters were being controlled by Genjutsu, Sarada released the technique from a villager before Naruto addressed the crowds and quelled the situation. Versus Momoshiki Arc After completing a mission involving capturing a bear, the team reported their success to Naruto. Later, Sarada and Mitsuki approached Boruto at Lightning Burger to get him to participate in the Chunin exams with them. Refusing at first, Sarada finally convinced him. After Sasuke showed up at her house unannounced, it shocked Sarada and Sakura. Later, after Boruto made a deal with Sasuke involving learning the Rasengan in exchange for becoming a student, Sarada saw Boruto reveal a small Rasengan to Sasuke, leading him to running off after Sasuke commented on its size. Sarada informed her father that it's rare Boruto tries like this, leading to Sasuke informing her that he intended on accepting him as his student. For the first stage of the exams, all teams were given a true or false question regarding a book. Guessing the answer and standing on the area to represent their answer, their foothold gives way to reveal a pit beneath them, leading to Sarada catching Mitsuki when he caught Boruto. Having not fallen into the ink at the bottom of the pit, the team passed. During the second stage, Team Konohamaru competed against a Kirigakure team in a game of Capture the Flag. 
After Boruto subdued the team, Sarada captured their flag after dispelling the Genjutsu protecting it, resulting in their team progressing to the finals. For the final exam, the remaining participants competed in a series of one-on-one -on -one matches in a stadium. In her match, Sarada defeated Tatui in a single punch. In the anime, Sarada participated in her semi-finals match against Araya. As their match commenced, her opponent countered all of Sarada's attacks, leading her to not be able to keep up despite using her Sharingan. After failing to catch Araya in Genjutsu, Sarada discovered that she had been facing a puppet, leading to her exposing the puppeteer that was stationed on top of the tournament. Resuming the fight against the puppet, she burnt it using her new technique Sasuke had taught her, resulting in her progressing to the finals against Boruto and Shinki. During the match, though teaming up with Boruto against Shinki, he managed to defeat Sarada before Boruto managed to defeat him. While Sarada happily applauded Boruto for his victory, she became very disappointed by him when it was learned he had cheated by using the exam Forbidden Kote to win, thus disqualifying him. When the stadium was attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Otsutsuki, Sarada began helping spectators evacuate. As a piece of debris fell towards her, Sasuke saved her. He then took Sarada to Naruto and Boruto, leading to the parents shielding their children. Becoming more dangerous, Naruto instructed Sasuke to flee with the Genin. Afterwards, Naruto is captured and taken. Staying beside an unconscious Boruto in the hospital, she informed him when he woke up that Naruto was captured, leading to Boruto and Sasuke leaving with the four Kage to rescue him. After they succeeded, Sasuke decided to take advantage of his newfound data being analyzed by Konoha to spend time with his family much to Sarada's joy. She insisted that he help her improve her great fireball technique, which he happily agreed to. A few days later, Sarada and her team was tasked with capturing the same bear a few days after the attack. Chocho Arc In the anime, when the lead actors of a popular TV drama, Tomaru and Ashina, received a death threat if they continued filming their show, Team 7 and 10 were assigned to protect the actors. Sarada and her team were assigned to watch Ashina, during which she grew concerned about Chocho when her infatuation for Tomaru made her constantly use her butterfly mode. She grew even more annoyed when Tomaru showed no respect to Chocho in her real form. Soon after, an Amegakure shinobi began attacking the set and eventually kidnapped Tomaru leading to him demanding Ashina deliver 20 million Ryo in exchange for Tomaru. When the exchange took place, the Genin stood on standby, during which Konohomaru, who had earlier defeated the Ame Ninja, made the exchange while disguised as the assailant. His actions led to Ashina being exposed as the culprit behind the kidnapping, causing her to use explosive tags which resulted in a landslide. Using wire strings with the other Genin, they stopped the rocks from falling on Tomaru. With Ashina being captured, Team 7's mission was completed. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc In the anime, during another Kage Summit in Konoha, Sarada and her teammates met Onoki. After treating the man to a tour around the village, Onoki gave the Genin the answer to a riddle Naruto once asked on what is the hardest stone. Onoki revealed that it was a riddle he once gave to Naruto, and that the answer is the core of one's being, that they must keep their core strong to endure all obstacles. Later, all missions were suspended during an investigation of an attack on two gate guards. When Mitsuki failed to show up, Boruto and Sarada asked Konohamaru about it. As it became clear that he was hiding something, the two Genin decided to spy on the 7th Hokage's meeting, during which they learned Mitsuki left the village after attacking Konoha Shinobi, as well as Orochimaru being Mitsuki's father. Ultimately, the Hokage's peers deemed Mitsuki as a traitor. While Sarada decided that they must follow orders and stay put, Boruto, who refused to believe his friend was a traitor, noted that Sarada's goal of becoming Hokage is meaningless if she has no loyalty to her friends. The following night, when Boruto found Mitsuki's snake with a recorded message on it, the two decided to go to Orochimaru for answers. Upon arriving outside Orochimaru's research lab to lure away the Konoha Jonin stationed there, Sarada transformed into Mitsuki to act as a distraction while Boruto snuck inside. While successful in luring the shinobi away, Sarada became trapped by the Jonin, leading to Karin rescuing her to Sarada's surprise. Regrouping with Boruto in the lab, Sarada learned that Mitsuki was one of many clones. As Orochimaru was unable to discover clues from the snake, he informed the Genin that it's possible to extract information about Mitsuki from the snake's memory if the pair took it to the White Snake Sage, prompting them to travel to Ryuchi Cave. On their way there, their path was blocked by Team 10. Refusing to return to Konoha, they engaged the team in battle. After the pair was subdued, Shikadai realized the situation had too many inconsistencies to brand Mitsuki a traitor. Wanting to find answers, Shikadai convinced his teammates to help Boruto and Sarada. Arriving at the cave, the Genin gained access after Boruto passed three trials. 
Inside, the shinobi met the sage, who tasked them with presenting her Gadaga's reverse scale in order to unravel the secrets of Mitsuki's snake. During their ordeal, Sasuke's summoning snake Aura came to Sarada's aid, and after Boruto entered a summoning contract with Garaga and presented them to the sage, she showed Mitsuki's snake's memories to the group, which revealed that he wasn't a traitor and he was heading to the land of Earth. As the group began to approach the land of Earth's border, Shigadai had Inojin and Chocho return to the village to report their findings. As the other genin continued their pursuit, they found a group of Konoha Chunin who were defeated by Kokuyo, who attacked and pressured the shinobi. The three are aided by Inojin and Chocho, who dealt with Kokuyo while Sarada and Boruto continued on. They were soon intercepted by Sekie, who noted that Mitsuki was with them willingly. While Boruto fought him, Mitsuki saved Sekie from an attack before assaulting Boruto into becoming unconscious, which shocked Sarada. After the foreigners and Mitsuki departed, the Ino Shikacho trio returned to help Boruto. After Boruto awoke, the group agreed to venture on to Iwagakure and retrieve Mitsuki, prompting Boruto to suggest receiving aid from Onoki. When they confronted Onoki, the elderly man was happy to see his friends again. Once they revealed their goal of finding Mitsuki, however, Onoki's attitude turned dark and he turned them away. The group was then surrounded by a bunch of Akuta that were being controlled by Ku, the leader of the conspiracy in Iwagakure, as well as Onoki's son, who was working alongside the retired Tsuchikage, much to everyone's horror. As Onoki began explaining the nature of his plans and his genuine desire to protect people, realizing that with his secret out in the open, he would have to accelerate his plans before the other great shinobi countries learned. While Onoki told his son to gently take his prisoners away, Boruto and the others chose to resist, and a fight ensued. As the battle escalated, a massive column was knocked over towards Onoki. He was narrowly saved by Boruto, who then retreated while carrying the elderly man. While Shigadai was captured, Sarada and the others scattered to escape. She soon after regrouped at the cave with Inojin and Chocho, surprised to learn that Boruto hadn't returned yet. They decided to wait and see how things played out. Deciding that they had waited long enough, the group decided to look for their friends. They instead found an injured Akatsuchi. They noticed an explosion. Realizing that it could be their friends, Inojin was chosen to take Akatsuchi back to the cave, while Sarada and Chocho went to investigate. The two Kunoichi found Boruto battling Kako, whose immense physical prowess and dust release was overwhelming him. Ultimately, Sarada found a time limit in her foe's attacks, and used it to counter. Kako pushed his body past his limit to continue attacking, which ultimately overtaxed his body, causing him to die. Onoki, who was watching, was shocked to see how the artificial soldier attacked so recklessly and against his previous orders of not hurting the Genin. Boruto insisted that despite the elderly man's belief, the fabrications did indeed have free will. Inojin arrived and subdued Boruto as he was under Kirara's genjutsu. She then arrived with the Akuta and surrounded the Konohanin. While returning to the village, Onoki was visibly horrified by the hostile takeover of the village. When approaching Ku, the second in command voiced his plan to transplant human hearts into the fabrications to sustain them. The elder, however, refused on the grounds that it went against the purpose of his goal of saving lives. Deciding that Onoki was too sentimental to see the bigger picture, Ku usurped the third Tsuchikage. Before Ku could move on with his plan, Shigadai appeared, using a diversion to help his friends escape. As the Ino Shikacho trio decided to face off against Kokuyo, Boruto and Sarada were forced to face Kirara, who voiced her desire to take Sarada's glasses on the grounds that they would look better on her. Sarada tried to battle back Kirara's Genjutsu with her Sharingan, but she was still just as quickly subdued as Boruto by her power. She had them fighting until she received word that the transplant hearts were ready, and left them with a final command to fight to the death. Sarada, however, had found an opening, using the sword's reflection to cast a genjutsu on herself and break free, and subsequently freed Boruto as well. They caught up with the fabrications as Mitsuki was about to deliver a transplant for Ku. Mitsuki's attack kept them at a distance, and Ku's earth release immobilized them. They watched in shock as Mitsuki betrayed and attacked Ku from behind. Mitsuki told them of his actions deceiving the fabrications, revealing the heart as disguised snakes. Team 7 prepared to confront the remaining fabrications. As Ku retreated to treat his wounds and decaying body, Sarada and Boruto went after him, while Mitsuki faced Sekie. Sarada confronted Kirara, catching her in a genjutsu and landing a debilitating lightning release attack. Soon afterwards, Boruto and Garaga destroyed the Akuta, a piece of which fell on and killed Kirara. Upon regrouping with Mitsuki at the Old City, they were confronted by Ku, who had recently transplanted a human heart into himself, stabilizing his body. As Ku began pressuring the Genin with his renewed power, Mitsuki unleashed his Sage Mode to push the fabrication back. While Sarada and Boruto were trapped under rubble, they were saved by the aid of Seki, who was accompanied by Onoki. Having a change of heart after seeing what became of his work, Onoki wished to help the Genin stop Ku. They brought him to face Ku, who tried to reason again on how far Ku strayed from his original path. Ku attacked the group with his Dust Release. Sarada saved everyone by breaking through the ground. 
As Ku caught up to finish the battle, the combined effort of Team 7 managed to seriously damage Ku. He attempted a final dust release on the group, only for Onoki to counter it with a much stronger one, determined not to face his late grandson again without atoning. Onoki ultimately destroyed Ku. Afterwards, the Genin approached the drained Suchikage, who spoke to them about the importance of keeping one's will strong before collapsing. Team 7 was then found by their allies from Konohagakure, and they welcomed Mitsuki back. After returning home, Sarada was hugged by an angry and relieved Sakura. She and Boruto later had their shinobi status revoked for their technical desertion. She and Boruto then found Mitsuki, who also had his shinobi status revoked. Mitsuki apologized for his recent actions and admitted to the shameless curiosity of wanting to connect with people more like him. Boruto, however, quickly accepted his apology and admitted he was glad that he got the chance to better understand Mitsuki as a person, hoping to learn more about each other, much to Mitsuki's delight. Later, due to Kurotsuchi's gratitude and recommendation, it was decided to restore Team 7's Ganin Shinobi status. Jugo Arc In the anime, sometime later, Team 7 and Team 15 were led by Konohomaru, Hanabi having had another assignment. They were assigned to investigate the random attacks on the village from its nearby wildlife. Tosaka, an ornithologist, was appointed to lend assistance with the birds. Upon arriving, the group was attacked by strange-looking birds. At the village, they learned that many people attacked by the mutated birds quickly became sick and were covered in cursed seals. The villagers also found an unconscious Jugo. Recognizing him, Sarada questioned him until one of the sick villagers went on a rampage. Jugo subdued him, causing the villagers' cursed seal to disappear and return into the forest. Konohamaru speculated that Orochimaru was involved in this and split the team up to investigate, pairing Sarada and Boruto together. Remembering how the villagers said they heard roars coming from underground, Boruto deduced that there was a hidden cave. Together, he and Sarada found Jugo, who randomly transformed into his berserk state and attacked them. Konohamaru intervened, and Sarada attempted to help with the explosive tag kunai. But Jugo just shrugged it off, requiring Mitsuki to pull her out of the way of his attack. After Konohamaru snapped Jugo out of his bloodlust, Sarada and the others followed him, finding him passed out with an injection device near him. They were attacked by another bird, but Jugo woke up and cured the bird from its cursed seal. Back at the village, Boruto stopped Sarada from updating the village headman until they had all the information. Sarada was among those tasked by Konohamaru with monitoring Jugo and finding more of his tranquilizer drug. They observed Jugo struggling to control his transformation after curing more birds. Jugo relented in letting them help after the episode. They came across Land of Rivers researchers, but lied and said they didn't have information to share. After Boruto helped Jugo with another episode, Sarada and the others discussed their lack of progress with the investigation while being spied on by one of the researchers they met earlier. Over the next couple days, the group continued to work on the birds. Sarada explained to Tosaka that she convinced Jugo to medicate regularly instead of only when he felt a transformation coming. Jugo observed that it dulled him and that he was starting to build up a tolerance to the drug. Sarada and Boruto looked out over the remaining shots and wondered what would happen once they ran out. On the third day, Jugo underwent a transformation and Sarada discovered his spare shots had gone missing. Jugo attacked the village, but it was the Land of Rivers researchers who subdued him with tranquilizers before he could hurt anyone. They exposed the Konoha Shinobi as being aware of Jugo's identity as the monster, causing the villagers to turn against them. When they mentioned having requested backup, the researchers reveal Wasabi and Namida, unconscious and infected with cursed seals. Sarada asked about Sumire, but they claimed to have only found the two. After the Genin reluctantly left the village while Tosaka was allowed to remain to help in the investigation, they found Sumire after she was knocked out by Suigetsu. Suigetsu insisted that Nue attack them first, and he only acted in self-defense. When learning that the Otonin were looking for Jugo, who left the base without permission, the Genin explained that Jugo was apprehended by the Land of Rivers researchers. While Karin treated Sumide, she voiced her joy at seeing Sarada again, saying she is dear to her despite them not being related. When Sumire awoke, she explained that two assailants who captured Wasabi Izuno and Namida Suzumeno had special collars that let them harness their curse seals of their own. Realizing that this duo was working with the Land of Rivers researchers, they concluded that the outbreak must have been started by them. While Suigetsu insisted on just assaulting the enemies and taking Jugo back by force, Karin reminded him that such reckless actions could reflect negatively on Orochimaru's already dubious truce with the world. Karin and Sarada acted as diversions to draw out the assailants while their allies infiltrated the enemy base. While initially working, their enemies quickly saw through the ruse and split up with Sasami going further to face Karin and Sarada while Momo returned to the base. Once transformed, Sasami quickly began making sport of her opponents, treating them as prey. Sarada's Sharingan let her follow her movements enough to defend. However, as her chakra quickly drained from using her dojutsu, Sasami managed to land a powerful blow on her. Karin defended Sarada by subduing Sasami with her chakra points long enough for Sarada to take some of Karin's chakra. 
This let Sarada deliver a devastating punch that knocked Sasami out and destroyed her cursed seal collar. Karin complimented her skills as Sakura and Sasuke's daughter. On their way back to the village, they changed course as Sarada realized the wild geese were about to start migrating, spreading the cursed seal infection. Sarada and Karin struggled to keep the infected geese from migrating, requesting Team 15's help when they arrived by the lake. While Jugo defeated Tosaka and later fought Nue and Boruto, Karin considered the possibility of having to kill the birds to prevent the cursed seal from spreading. She didn't think Sarada could do it, but she took the responsibility onto herself, as she was part of the team assigned to the mission. After Boruto managed to cause Jugo's transformation to recede, Mitsuki arrived with Konohamaru and Suigetsu, having acquired a serum to remove the infection. Suigetsu consumed it and merged with the lake to rain it over the birds. Sarada chastised Boruto on the recklessness of his plan to snap Jugo out of his rampage, but he retorted the plan worked. The two wondered what Jugo would do next. Konohamaru's Love Arc In the anime, Sarada joined Chocho and Boruto in seeing a romance movie, which Boruto mistook for being an action movie. Afterwards, Sarada and Chocho were baffled at Boruto's ignorance in love. Later, after Konohamaru began developing feelings for the noblewoman Remon Yoimura, she and Chocho pointed out the truth of it to Boruto. One Tail Escort Arc In the anime, having some time off with Chocho, they decided to go on a gourmet tour together. As Boruto whined about having not gotten to train with Sasuke in a while and envying his ability to travel the world, Sarada insisted that there was still much to learn from living in Konohagakure. Time Slip Arc In the anime, after Sasuke helped in delivering Shukaku safely to the village, she was given some downtime. While Sarada was happy to have her father back, she was dismayed by how little time he spent with her at home. Later, Boruto came by, hoping to train with Sasuke again. He was also hoping to learn more about Jiraiya, being Naruto's former teacher and mentor. Sarada remembered hearing how he was a famous author and wrote the Icha Icha series. As the book series was an older one, the two decided to go to the flea market in hopes of finding it. When meeting various adults who knew Jiraiya personally, they each openly praised the Sanin, describing his greatness and influence on Naruto, but also insisted that the two kids were too young to read the adult books. Later, Sarada joined the other Genin in testing out new surveillance equipment designed to follow their location. During the field test, Urashiki Yotsotsuki was spotted in the area, where Sarada joined several other Konoha Nin in pursuing him. However, it turned out to be a diversion by the alien, who placed a Genjutsu on them to let him sneak into the village. Sometime later, after Urashiki was defeated, Sumire officially was transferred to the scientific ninja weapons team. While everyone was sad to see her go, Sarada had everyone throw a farewell party for their former class rep. During preparations, they met Sumire's replacement for Team 15, Tsubaki Kurogane, a samurai student from the Land of Iron. Mujina Bandit's Arc In the anime, while Mitsuki and Boruto infiltrated Hozuki Castle as prisoners to locate Kokuri, a deserter of the Mujina Bandits, for his information on the nefarious group and to protect him from the gang's second-in-command, Tsukiyo, Sarada arrived as a guest, under the guise of being a journalism student conducting research on the place. She was shown around by Benga, and later exchanged words with Mujo, the master of the castle who was in on their mission. Later, Sarada retrieved words from Mitsuki and Boruto that their cell had a spare bed, asking Sarada to have Mujo reassign Kokuri to their cell. While Mujo agreed to help, his position in the castle was more figurehead than actual authority, as Benga, the chief officer, had final say, and declined the request. Realizing they needed to pressure Benga somehow, they learned that Benga was secretly taking various bribes from the prisoners for special requests. Sarada found a journal of his dealings and presented it to Mujo. Using this leverage, Mujo had the authority to take full command of the prison, successfully moving Kokuri to Boruto and Mitsuki's cell. Hoping to learn more about the intentions of Mujina Bandit's second-in-command, Tsukiyo, she approached the man's cell, claiming to be a reporter. However, Tsukiyo saw through her ruse and asked her why she was pretending to be a reporter. Later, deciding to find out how trustworthy Kokuri really was, they lured him away from prying eyes, where Sarada used Genjutsu to make Kokuri see Tsukiyo escape and attack Boruto. Tsukiyo demanded to know where the money was. Kokuri confessed, and that he donated all the stolen money to a medical center. Realizing that Kokuri could be trusted, Sarada and her team promised to safely get him to Konohagakure. They learned of a supply ship that regularly comes to the prison. Also, knowing they would require a great deal of water to counter the seal on Kokuri, Team 7 sabotaged the water line, knowing it would force the guards to use a backup line that they could gather water from. As they began their plan and Sarada succeeded in diverting water into a tank, she was confronted by Benga, who grew concerned from learning of Sarada talking with Tsukiyo. As he cornered Sarada, she revealed to have learned a lot about the shady dealings in the prison by Benga. Seeing her as a threat to his newfound position, Benga attacked her with fire release. The explosion from a pipeline hit Sarada hard and made her fall into a pit, unconscious. When Sarada came through, she was puzzled by the rapidly rising water level. 
She was saved from drowning by Kadama, who explained how the spring tide worked on the castle, and informed her that Benga had learned of their breakout plan. She arrived just in time to save Kokori and the others by breaking the ground, allowing the spring tide to wash over them. On the outside, Sarada and the others were attacked by Sukiyo, who was released as a last-ditch effort by Benga. Using his array of shadow manipulation techniques, he was able to pressure the Genin. As the Konoha Nin began to tire, Kokori saw through the enemy's technique's weakness to light, giving the Konoha Nin the knowledge they needed to overpower and defeat their foe. In a last-ditch effort, Tsukiyo grabbed Kokori and dragged the man with him off a ledge and into the ocean. Kokori then emerged, claiming that Tsukiyo drowned. Soon after, Sai and a group of Konoha Nin appeared, having been mobilized by Naruto after losing contact with Mujo for so long. With Benga killed by Tsukiyo and Mujo having recently recovered to resume his duties, Team 7's mission was completed, taking Kokori with them to the village to verify his infel on the Mujina bandits before releasing him. Several months later, while Team 7's on a mission to capture the Mujina bandits, Sarada punches some bandits and she asks them where their boss is. Later, Sarada is annoyed that Boruto is wasting his mission earnings by buying trading cards. A few days later, Sarada and her team were given their first B-rank mission. While intimidated at first, as such missions were usually reserved for at least Chunin, Mitsuki noted that the 5th Kazakage was known for doing B-rank missions when he was a Genin. Seeing a similarity in this fact to her desire of becoming Hokage, Sarada quickly became excited about it. Later that night, while practicing her marksmanship at home, Boruto arrived, saying that something important came up and he would not be able to join the mission. Realizing that Boruto truly felt he needed to do this, she told Boruto to handle his problem while she tells the team, admiring Boruto's newfound sense of responsibility. On the day of the mission, worried about her teammate, Sarada had Mitsuki track Boruto down to help. They arrived in time to save the paralyzed Boruto from Chojoji, quickly subduing and defeating the bandit. Later, while applauded for saving Tento and capturing the Mujina bandits, Konohamaru also said they'd have to be punished for abandoning their official mission. Kara Actuation Arc In the anime, Sarada's team was assigned to work with Mugino to find Anato, a missing researcher in the Land of Valleys. After meeting the man's wife, Mia, and learning about the village's large medical company, they were able to sneak at the last known location of Anato's team. There, they were intercepted by Victor, the company's president, and his guards. As he was also looking for Anato's team, they found that many of them were dead, it was decided to join efforts. They soon found a cave, and inside they found Anato, whose body was altered to a malleable state and mindlessly attacked them. After the team failed to restrain Anato, Victor and his crew then appeared and subdued him with a relentless barrage of lightning release. Victor promised they would return Anato to the village for treatment. With their mission technically completed, the Konoha Nin decided to return to Konohagakure. Along the way, Mitsuki became ill and his body was taking on the same properties as Anato. Mugino brought them to Yubina, a former medical nin. Sarada aided her in treating Mitsuki. Yubina determined that during the fight with Anato, Mitsuki was infected by some of the first Hokage's cellular structure. Yubina also revealed that other cases like this have shown up and that there are rumors that the black market was harvesting the late Hokage's cells for sale. It was decided that while Mitsuki should stay behind to recover, the rest would go to the Saurus in the Land of Silence. There, they learned that a worker from Victor's company came by weeks ago with the Hashirama cell before suddenly disappearing. They also heard rumors that a man was in the area with connections to the Hashirama cell. It turned out to be a missing nin named Kirisaki, with unique medical ninjutsu prowess. After Boruto lured him away, they were able to detain him. They learned that he was expecting to meet someone about the Hashirama cell the following day. They decided to impersonate Kirisaki to retrieve the Hashirama cell. Sarada stayed hidden while using her Sharingan to maintain watch. Once meeting the contact, he was fooled to revealing that the Hashirama cell was acquired by Lady Sakuya. She desired to use the Hashirama cell on herself under the misguided delusion that it would let her live forever and even more, restore her youth and former beauty. At the castle, Sarada and Mugino waited outside as a barrier around it prevented infiltration. Soon after, an alarm was sounded. It was revealed that someone had killed Sakuya and framed the Konoha Nin to safely escape with the stolen Hashirama cell. Everyone in the city began hunting them down, in the hopes of getting a reward for their capture. Upon being cornered, they were aided by a young boy named Katara. He led them through an underground network that the children of the city used for their own society. At the base, the Konoha Nin met up with Mitsuki. After he fully recovered and his antibodies helped cure Kona, she helped Mitsuki sneak into the city. The children's network was able to quickly find the true killers. Once outside the country's borders, the Genin split up from Mugino and Konohamaru split to find their targets. However, they were quickly attacked by new enemies. The attackers were revealed to be Kumo Nin, consisting of Omoe, Kakui, and Marui. Having heard rumors that the Konoha Nin killed Lady Sakuya and stole the Hashirama cell, they interrogated the Genin. Mugino and Konohamaru quickly returned and cleared things up. After explaining the situation, the group worked together to hunt down the true culprits, who were deduced to be shinobi from the Land of Haze. Along the way, they were intercepted by Deepa, who was also looking for the Hashirama cell. Omoe's team decided to face the new threat while the Konoha Nin moved on. 
Soon after, Mugino and his team was intercepted by one of the thieves, Yuga, who was determined to complete his mission of delivering the Hashirama cell to his land at all costs. He unleashed a self-sacrificing technique to ensnare the Konohanin in a barrier and summon a destructive demon. The Genin tried to hold off the demon while Mugino and Konohamaru attempted to destroy the barrier, but were quickly stopped by it. Changing tactics, Mugino restrained the demon, letting it absorb his chakra long enough for his team to destroy it. Later, after Mugino recovered enough, the team then resumed tracking the Heizenin. Upon catching up with the remaining foes, the Konohanin were tricked and caught by Hyuruga's self-sacrificing technique that produced a restraining sludge. As Sarada realized the technique would drag all near him underground, Omoi appeared. Battered, he revealed that Deepa killed his allies and was on the way to the land of Haze to get the Hashirama cell. Worrying for his remaining brother, Hyuruga cancelled his technique and rushed off. While Omoi could not join his allies, he warned them that Deepa was seemingly impervious to all forms of attack. Upon catching up to Hyuruga's older brother, Asuka, it took some convincing that Hyuruga was truly him, and that there was a new threat. Before a truce could be agreed upon, Deepa arrived and swiftly struck down the remaining quadruplets. Boruto was furious and attacked the man, only for his kunai to harmlessly bounce off Deepa's body. The man explained that he's able to manipulate all the carbon around him, including in his own body, to become invulnerable. Victor arrived and was revealed to be allied with Deepa. Victor split up the Jonin from the Genin in the team, where Sarada and her teammates faced Deepa. Sarada's Sharingan proved unable to properly keep up with Deepa's movements, and ultimately she and Boruto were knocked out. Mitsuki revealed his Sage transformation to save his friends and escape. With how severe Sarada and Boruto's injuries were, Mitsuki brought them to Yubina for care, who stabilized their condition. Soon after, Konohamaru and Mugino brought them back to Konohagakure for better care also bringing Mitsuki to Orochimaru for his treatment. After successfully undergoing an operation, Sarada was left ashamed at a defeat against Deepa. Despite this, three days later, she was able to pick herself back up and committed herself to growing stronger, seeking her father to train her. She asked him to teach her the Chidori, but he refused, explaining the risks associated with the Jutsu. Her Sharingan wasn't mature enough yet, having only one Tomoe when two were required to properly perceive enemy counterattacks due to Chidori's linear path. Sarada was disheartened to learn that one simply can't train the Sharingan to develop it, which required heightened emotional responses to extreme situations. Instead, he suggested that she master her one Tomoe Sharingan, requiring her to dodge attacks similar to Deepa's. He counseled her not to focus on all targets at once, and instead focus on the general area of the attacks. As Sarada began improving in her movements against barrage attacks, Sasuke noticed that she was still very limited on how long she could maintain the Sharingan. As she began discussing to focus on improving her stamina, Sarada insisted on strengthening her Sharingan as much as her father. She asked about the Mangekyo Sharingan, having only vague knowledge about it. Concerned about such a dangerous power, Sasuke quickly changed subject, insisting it was for another day. Soon, they were approached by Sakura. She was concerned Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she shouldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother baby her without realizing why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. The following day, as Sarada continued struggling to evade all of Sasuke's barrages, Sakura approached them again. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. She took Sarada into a sparring match with her, quickly overwhelming Sarada. Sakura noted Sarada's chakra control was still underdeveloped, quickly burning through it with all of her various actions and unleashing it randomly when attacking, affecting both her combat performance and the development of her Sharingan. Sarada's second problem was that her resolve was still too frail, fearing defeat. Determined to break past her limit, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic Sakura's movements and general timing for chakra-enhanced strength to improve her own and reach a standstill. As Sakura tearfully criticized Sarada's recklessness, she was proud to see that Sarada's inner strength was like her own, deciding to put Sarada through the same grueling combat training Tsunade did to improve her chakra control, much to Sarada's horror. Later, as Sarada's training under her parents was showing good results, she went to check on Boruto after he was discharged from the hospital following his own training. After they compared each other's growth, it felt like it was a good time to return to the Land of Valleys to return Anato's ring to Mia. Having already gained approval to leave from the 7th Hokage, the two went off. Upon returning to the Land of Valleys, they met Mia and gave her Anato's ring. They also learned that Victor reported to Mia that Anato was killed by enemies trying to steal their research. Realizing that Victor was using Anato for his own gain, Boruto decided to reveal the truth about Victor's goals, despite Sarada's protest. Suddenly, there was an earthquake coming from the company's main building. Sarada and Boruto decided to investigate. 
There, they found Konohamaru struggling to defend himself from the vicious assault of a recreated god tree. As they helped him, he explained how the god tree was not seen since the fourth Shinobi World War. Victor then approached, explaining that he took fragments of the dead god tree after the war ended, nurturing them with the Hashirama cell and the various test subjects. He voiced his joy at how the people of the Land of Valleys would be consumed by the god tree to produce chakra fruit. Victor collapsed the ground around Boruto and Sarada, sending them down to the floor below. From there, they were approached by Deepa. Sarada and Boruto were determined to stop him once and for all after all the people he hurt. Despite their improved skill and even aided by the return of Mitsuki, Deepa's carbon powers proved as infallible as ever. Sarada, however, refused to be deterred, her drive allowing both her Sharingan to advance to Tutomoe. Her improved reflexes allowed her to better dodge and deflect Deepa's assaults and getting close to attack, but his defense power still proved too great. Ultimately, by donating her chakra with Mitsuki's into Boruto, they were finally able to break through Deepa's defense and defeat him with a super compression Rasengan, during which Orochimaru destroyed the god tree and defeated Victor. As Mia promised to testify against the company's actions, Team 7 was proud of their victory. Owl Arc in the anime, Sarada attended the memorial service for the fallen people of the 4th Shinobi World War. Later, after watching Naruto test out Katasuke's new scientific ninja tool against Boruto at the training hall, the Hokage assigned Team Konohamaru's Genin to escort Katasuke and the new tool to Ryuben City, followed by testing of the technology. Catching a thunder train, the group sat with an acquaintance of Katasuke, Ao, for the duration of the trip. Arriving at the research institute, they're surprised to see Sumide working there. Having completed the escort, the Genin begin testing out the facility's scientific ninja tools. Soon afterwards, they're contacted by Naruto, who informs them that he's lost contact with Konohamaru and Mugino while they were on a mission near their location, leading him to suspending their current mission in order to search for the two. Preparing to depart, Katasuke decides to join them in his prototype battle armor, and Akita Inuzuka has her Ninken Chamaru aid them, so the four follow Chamaru to Konohamaru's location. As they begin discussing the situation, Ao confronted them, prompting him to attack the group for the knowledge they've learned. Taking cover behind a rock from his ninjutsu bullets, Katasuke has one of his suit's gauntlets taken, which Ao begins using for himself. While contemplating to use the smoke flash bomb that Akita gave him against Ao in order for them to escape, Mugino sacrificed himself to cause the cave they were in to collapse on himself and Ao. Surviving the attack, Konohamaru has the shinobi retreat before Ao could free himself. Using a scientific ninja tool to heal Konohamaru's injury, the group learned from Katasuke that the technology was used against them was stolen from him. Afterwards, the team devised a plan to combat Ao. Beginning a counterattack, Sarada repelled Ao with Taijutsu after Konohamaru and Mitsuki distracted him. Using fire release to occupy Ao as he absorbed the group's elemental attacks, Boruto attacked him, leading him to be disarmed and fooling Ao into using the Genin's chakra blade against him, resulting in Ao having a significant amount of his chakra drained. Having destroyed Ao's gauntlet, the team began dodging Ao's mirror drone attacks, during which Sarada carried an injured Konohamaru to safety. After Ao is defeated by Boruto, Sarada looked on as a giant toad crushed Ao before she questioned who the culprit was. The assailant introduced himself as Koji Kashin, and caught the team in Fuinjutsu, during which Konohamaru freed himself and faced the opponent alone. Watching the fight, Koji managed to engulf Konohamaru in flames, which triggered Boruto's Kama to activate. Absorbing Koji's techniques, the team was freed leading to Sarada coming to Boruto's aid when he collapsed. Pressing Koji for information regarding Boruto's mark, Mitsuki intervened to stop her, during which Koji retreated. Kawaki Arc Having departed back to Konoha, Sarada helped Boruto walk, during which the group discovered destroyed puppets in the vicinity of an unconscious boy. As they began to examine him, Kawaki, they discovered that he had a matching seal to Boruto on his palm. As Boruto's seal began to hurt, Kawaki also felt the pain, making him abruptly wake up and destroy the area within his vicinity. Questioning who the team were, Konohamaru identified himself and asked for information regarding the crash. Refusing to provide information and wanting to be left alone, Boruto revealed to the boy his mark, resulting in Kawaki believing they were pursuers from Kara. As they tried to correct him, Garo made his presence known, announcing his intentions of recovering Kawaki. Killing his assailant with a blast, Team 7 survived the blast upon Boruto absorbing it with his Kama. Passing out from his fight, Katasuke determined his body to have been modified into a scientific ninja tool. Ultimately, it was decided to bring Kawaki back to the village to see the 7th Hokage. In the anime, while Konohamaru went to report to the Hokage, Sarada and her team first brought Kawaki back to the research institute to be looked after where the strange boy was detained. Eventually, he was able to escape, prompting the Institute into a state of emergency. Team 7 came to the conclusion that the boy would attempt to escape via the train and went to the nearest village. As their effort failed, they heard a disturbance and investigated. 
they found Kawaki attacking Sumire. The police had also found the boy and engaged him, forcing him to retreat. Boruto looked after Sumire while Mitsuki and Sarada went after Kawaki. As the boy's rampage began causing much collateral damage, Naruto arrived. Having heard from Sumire that the boy was just emotionally scarred from his hard past, the Hokage took pity and passively subdued Kawaki. Later, Sarada went off to enjoy some pastries and discovered Kawaki being watched over by Naruto. Deciding to join the pair on their errand, it became apparent that Kawaki both had little experience enjoying the simple pleasures of life and was still as on guard as ever, even in this new peaceful environment. While browsing at Yamanaka Flowers, Sarada saw Kawaki having a panic attack and Naruto comforting him afterwards. Having bought a vase, Sarada decided to leave the pair and told Kawaki that as someone who's aiming on becoming Hokage, she can rely on him. The following day, Sarada decided to check on Kawaki at Naruto's home, taking Mitsuki along. There, they watched as Naruto began aiding Boruto in taijutsu practice. Midway, Kawaki insisted that Boruto should use his training time to become more familiar with his kama activating his own mark, which resonated with Boruto's to activate as well. As Sarada watched in amazement at such a power boost Boruto gained from using the mark, Sarada decided to train harder to not be left behind. Later that night, she approached her father, asking Sasuke to train her in using Chidori, which he accepted now that her Sharingan was advanced enough. He began drilling her in the proper execution of the technique, which Sarada continued to struggle with. Much to her annoyance, Sasuke was then called off on another mission. After learning that Kawaki and Boruto fought Delta, Sarada questioned why the pair were so comfortable with each other now. Later, watching the 7th train Kawaki in Ninjutsu with Chocho, Sarada felt jealous with how he was getting special treatment from the Hokage. After the training, Sarada questioned her teammates and Kawaki if there was any connection between Kama and the mark on her mother's forehead. Naruto informed her that Sakura's mark was the strength of a hundred seal, which led to Mitsuki informing everyone there that there was a lot about her jutsu that wasn't understood yet prompting Sarada to seek out Sakura. Finding Sakura at Yamanaka Flowers with Ino, Sarada asked for information about her mark, and learned it was a jutsu from the Sage of Six Paths era. Afterwards, Sakura asked her to take the flowers she had bought home, leading to Sarada excitedly learning Sasuke was coming home as well, during which Ino sensed a village intruder. Listening to Ino informing Naruto of them being at his location, Sarada told Sakura she was heading home, but instead decided to go to the Hokage and Kawaki's location, as she couldn't sit back and do nothing. Arriving at her destination, she found Kawaki alone and questioned him where Naruto was. Joined by Mitsuki and Boruto, she informed them that Naruto was missing, as Shikamaru immobilized Kawaki from moving and had his peers erect a barrier around the Hokage's residence. Learning what had happened and comforting Kawaki, his prosthetic arm began to work, leading to confirming Naruto was alive and forming a portal with Boruto to his location. Intent on going, Shikamaru restrained them all with his shadow, which Kawaki absorbed to allow them to enter the portal. On the other side, they arrived in a foreign dimension and found Boro, who told them the pot he was guarding contained Naruto. Engaging him in battle, the team learned that Boro could regenerate his injuries. Watching her peers be immobilized by Dark Mist, she hurled a boulder at their opponent in order to rescue and retreat with her teammates. Mitsuki shows Sarada a portion of the mist he collected, which Sarada examined with her Sharingan to determine it was a virus. Having collected antibodies from Boro, Mitsuki distributed them amongst the team to be immune to the mist. Agreeing for Sarada to become the leader, Sarada fought Boro alone and pretended to be subdued by his mist, during which she burned him in order for Boruto and Kawaki to destroy the upper portion of his body using their jutsu. Regenerating from the attacks, the battle resumed. Kawaki informed Sarada that Boro's regeneration is due to a large scientific ninja tool somewhere in his body, prompting him to suggest that she use the Sharingan to find it. Determining Boro's been moving the tool's location with hand seals, she observes where he moved it to. Unable to voice Boro's secret out loud, she decided on engaging him with a jutsu that was faster than he could form hand seals, leading her to striking the tool's location with Chidori. Successfully removing the core, Boro's body began mutating without its stabilizer. Kawaki and Boruto were able to use their kama to create a rift in the seal and free the unconscious Naruto. While the kids checked on the Hokage, Boro composed himself enough to turn his rage upon the kids. Sarada attempted a fire release, but Boro grabbed her and squeezed her. She watched as Boruto's kama evolved further, warping Boruto's personality while exhibiting a massive boost in power, which let him effortlessly destroy Boro. Afterwards, Kama deactivated and Boruto returned to normal with no memory of what happened. Sarada was concerned about the danger posed by Kama. After the team returned to Konoha via Boruto and Kawaki's Kama, they were taken to the hospital to recover. In the anime, after Naruto and Sasuke recovered from their own injuries, Team 7 and the Konoha officials discussed recent events. Sasuke was impressed that his daughter already mastered the Chidori, much to her joy. 
Sasuke revealed Kara had their own ten tails sealed away in a separate dimension. Kawaki also informed them that each member of Kara was modified with shinobi wear, granting them abilities besides ninjutsu. After the meeting was finished, Sasuke questioned his daughter about the events around Boruto's fighting. Sarada explained that Boruto had not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sarada, but Sakura told her daughter to rest, to which she agreed. In the anime, Sarada attempted to join the fight against Ishiki when he came to Konoha, but Mitsuki pointed out that she was still injured. Chunin Re-Examination Arc In the anime, following Ishiki's attack, Naruto decided to host another Chunin exam to boost morale and promote more Chunin. Sarada and her team passed the first written exam without issue. During the second exam in the Forest of Death, she was able to rescue her injured ally and take them out of the forest within the allotted time limit, while also fending off Mirai as a mock enemy after seeing through her Mitsuki disguise. She was one of 10 Genin to pass the second portion and would have to battle one of the other 9 in a one-on-one -on -one battle for the final exam. The following day, Sarada and her teammates agreed to not hold anything back, even against each other, and all vowed to perform at their very best to become Chunin. Later that day, Sarada went to her father for guidance, who told her that a shinobi must always be prepared, and shared that despite losing his Rinnegan, he had no regrets over the events, a sentiment that Sarada shared. On her way back, she met up with Chocho, amazed at her dedication to training. Both became eager to advance together. The day of the finals, Sarada was concerned by Boruto and Mitsuki's absence, thinking they might be disqualified. Konohamaru explained that as long as they were present when their names were sorted for the matches, it would be okay. Sarada watched the first two matches from the stands, and was surprised to see Shinki and teammates. She was dismayed to learn that they had already become Chunin. For the third match, Sarada was pitted against Chocho. As she prepared for the match, Sarada was convinced that she would do what was needed to win. As the match began, Sarada's craftiness quickly began pressuring Chocho. When one of her attacks hit Chocho hard, Sarada quickly stopped to check on her. Chocho found this insulting, pointing out that Sarada wasn't taking the match seriously. Realizing her mistake and remembering the words of her father, Sarada agreed to give it everything. The two began clashing with their best techniques, ending with a final flash of their butterfly mode and Chidori, respectively. The clash ended with Sarada defeating Chocho. Chocho and Sarada thanked each other for a great match. Afterwards, Sarada was delighted to see Sasuke had shown up to watch her match, but she was also annoyed to realize that Boruto and Mitsuki had still not arrived. By the time they had arrived, Sarada angrily informed them that they had been disqualified for not being present for their match against one another. She watched the final match between Denki and Tsubaki, and was impressed by the tool he designed, comparing its movement prediction feature to the Sharingan. Boruto and Mitsuki cheered her on when she and the other victors were celebrated. At home, she happily presented her new flak jacket to her parents. Days later, Sarada felt a lack of closure with Konohamaru no longer being the captain after her promotion, discussing it with Team 7. When Konoha learned that Konohamaru stayed behind as a prisoner during a mission, Team 7 was sent as their mission history allowed them to better coordinate with him. Observing the village as they arrived, they ascertained the hostage situation and Konohamaru's intent, so Boruto distracted Hyogo and his subordinates long enough for a fog to roll in, allowing them to free the hostages. They joined with Konohamaru, having closure of a final mission together, helped repair the village, and returned to Konoha, where they took one last photo as a team. She was also officially appointed captain of Team 7. While training at night, she stumbled upon Kawaki. As he was struggling with the concept of being a shinobi, Sarada made him accept that working with others would help him grow stronger. During a mission to move livestock, the team noticed two suspicious shinobi passing by. With the mission nearly over, Sarada and Boruto left the remainder of it to Mitsuki while they investigated. They found Shikadai and an injured Chocho who explained how their mission had developed. Sarada stayed behind to aid Chocho and after the mission was over, visited her at the hospital. Great Sea Battle of Kirigakure Arc In the anime, after Kawaki officially joined Team 7 as a Genin, they were assigned to escort Katasuke to a ceremony in Kirigakure for the unveiling of new advanced power plants. They were also ordered to covertly investigate rumors of a terrorist threat posed to the event. While Boruto split from the group to go visit Kagura, Sarada remained with the team. She became concerned when Boruto had yet to return when they were about to embark on an airship to visit the new power plant, but the first one to fly crashed and exploded. Sarada then subsequently tended to Katasuke's wounds after he had been hurt by the airship's destruction. Boruto later revealed to her that the attack was a diversion for a prison breakout. Team 7 procured a boat to go check on Team 5 who were on a mission in an area that was being taken over by the Funato clan. She was surprised when Kagura joined them, having recruited Buntan Kurosuki, Hebichigo, and Kyoho Fuefuki. As they sailed, Sarada continued to distrust the swordsmen, butting heads with Buntan when she wanted to engage in combat to eliminate pirates instead of remaining hidden. 
Kagura explained they wouldn't try anything and revealed they had been branded with cursed seals he could activate to blow up their heads. After escaping from Funado pirates when Kawaki's seasickness exposed them, they arrived at Doto Island, which had been occupied by the Funado clan. Kagura decided that Sarada and Mitsuki would act as scouts, and Sarada warned Boruto to keep an eye on the swordsmen. They discovered the villagers were being forced into labor. The two eventually met up with Team 5 who explained the situation. Devising a plan, Sarada and Mitsuki rescued the hostages, defeating a few Funado soldiers to conceal their escape. After getting on the ship acquired by Team 5, Sarada helped to keep Funado soldiers from boarding until the ship departed. On the way back to rendezvous with Kagura and the others, Iwabi alerted them of a massive chakra cannon from the enemy's fortress ship. After narrowly dodging the first shot, everyone was saved by Kagura's team, having turned the chakra cannon back on the fortress. After picking up Kagura and the others, Team 5 was horrified to see the members of the new 7 Ninja Swordsmen. Sarada, however, assured them that they were technically allies now, before they all returned to Kitagakure. The following morning, Taiki was discovered to have been murdered. Suspicion fell on Kyoho, who was found cleaning blood off Kabutawari, and who had recently gone through a rage he had no memory of. He claimed innocence. Sarada partnered with Buntan to search the ship. A witness came forward with damning testimony, but Kawaki noticed inconsistencies in it, and, already suspicious of how fast word of the murder had spread, set up a trap by faking Kyoho's death. This exposed Kobasoza, who was chased to the engine room, where he killed himself to damage the ship's engine. Eventually, they were discovered by master shipbuilder Kajiki. Unable to repair the engine, Kajiki instead towed the ship back to his port for proper repairs, during which Sarada joined Kagura to report back to Kirigakure. On the phone, they learned that the situation continued to worsen as more sympathizers joined the Funado clan, forcing Chojuro to join the front lines. Later, Sarada delivered a message from Kirigakure to Kagura, determining that the swordsman's sentences would only be reduced by three years. Sarada expressed support when Kagura intended to appeal on the swordsman's behalf. Team 7 discussed how to proceed given their original mission. At night, the Funado clan attacked the island. By morning, the attack had been repelled and everyone joined in investigating it. Sarada learned that Kagura and Denki discovered a coded message where one of the fights took place. Sarada struggled to decipher the message until Iwabi made an origami-related comment that inspired Kagura on how to fold the paper revealing the message. The Funado planned to use the sea battle as a distraction so they could launch a sneak attack on Kirigakure while most of its forces were away. Sarada agreed that as allies, they should help. Kagura took them to his childhood village, which was on the route the Funado forces were taking, hoping to intercept them. Sarada noted a ravine where the Funado would be at a disadvantage, and Buntan suggested destroying two bridges to funnel them there. Sarada was assigned to fortifying the village's defenses and ended up getting along better with Buntan. The next day, as preparations were completed, they received word that Funado had sent scouts ahead. While most villagers were evacuated, three children were missing, one of them with Kawaki's Konoha forehead protector. Kagura left Sarada in charge of the village while he and the others went to find the children. Later, Metal revealed that Habichigo had deserted the group after Kagura removed the swordsman's cursed seals. Sarada was apprehensive in letting Buntan and Kyoho go after her, but Kagura trusted them to the task. As the group finished preparing their traps in the ravine, Sarada shared Kawaki's apprehension about the swordsman's absence. When the Funado arrived, their scouts foiled their traps, having launched a counterattack of their own. Despite the backup from the returning swordsmen, Funamushi's water release Furious Roaring Tornado took advantage of the enclosed terrain to ravage the area. The attack was blocked by Team 5, allowing everyone to retreat to the village, where remaining non-combatants were evacuated and water sources were blocked to deter Funamushi's jutsu. When the Funado arrived, Sarada parted with Buntan, both of them using lightning release against them. Determined to get revenge for Siren, Funamushi drained his own men of their blood to use his jutsu, requiring Kagura to channel most of his chakra into Hiramikare to cut through it. Left weakened, Kagura was taken hostage by Funamushi, forcing everyone to drop their weapons. They watched in shock as he stabbed Kagura through his chest. Furious at Funamushi, everyone retaliated. While he initially repelled them with his water release, Boruto overpowered him by activating his Kama and landing a Rasengan, prompting a Funado retreat. Sarada and Iwabi attempted to heal Kagura, but his wound was too severe. Kagura asked them to protect the village as his final request. After his funeral, everyone agreed to take Sarada's lead, and she decided that the best way to honor his wish was to stay in the village instead of pursuing the Funado, who would still return wishing vengeance on them for Saiden. Later, Sarada and Team 7 asked Boruto about his earlier Kama use, but he assured them he was still in control and had no intention on relying on Momoshiki's power. While recovering from the attack, Iwabi reported to Sarada that the village's food storage had been destroyed. She agreed to Denki's suggestion to forage for food and Mitsuki's to search the area for the Funado with his snakes. 
When Boruto, Kawaki, and the swordsmen wished to pursue the Funado, she countered that if they all left the search, the village would be vulnerable to attack, and it would allow them to follow up with their Kirigakure ambush. She wants them to follow her orders so no one else dies, honoring Kagura's last wish to protect the village. When foraging didn't amount to much, the village had to ration food. The villagers were foregoing eating so that the shinobi could be better prepared to defend them, but they chose to let the villagers eat instead. Sarada settled on a plan to hunker down and allowed Denki and Iwabi to go gather fruit, guided by some village children. After the children returned, telling them that Denki and Iwabi were captured by the Funado, Mitsuki discovered some of them around the village. Sarada took note of their positions, and Buntan advised her not to get so tense before a fight. Sarada was adamant that as a captain, it was on her to make sure that no one else died. The next day, the surviving Funado attacked again, harder than before. When it began to rain, Funamushi used his water-release raging jellyfish to cause widespread destruction, Mitsuki having to pull Sarada out of the way of an attack. Team 7 drew his attention, allowing Hebichigo to immobilize him with Nuibari. He managed to break free and landed a fatal attack on Hebichigo, but Boruto was able to defeat him with a Rasengan. He managed to grab Boruto like he did with Kagura, but Buntan killed him before he could kill Boruto. Hebichigo died, Sarada felt responsible as captain. After burying her beside Kagura, everyone began rebuilding. Two days later, while searching for Denki and Iwabi with metal, Team 7 discovered an injured Funado soldier. They brought him back to the village, where Sarada treated him, considering him a potential source of information on Denki and Iwabi, despite the swordsmen and the village being against it. She talked to Boruto at Kagura and Hibichigo's graves. The next day, they found Denki and Iwabi, who shared their theory on why Funamushi merely kept them as prisoners instead of killing them or using them to negotiate. That night, Sarada was alerted of an attack and arrived in time to protect Boruto from Kobuna and Gokai's attack. They retreated and Boruto explained who Kobuna was, causing Sarada to also feel conflicted on how to deal with the Funado. She was shocked to learn that Ikata was a Funado and Siren's sister. As everyone began struggling to believe this news, they learned on the radio that Ikata was indeed a member of the Funado, having joined his father in an all-out attack on Kirigakure. As Boruto voiced his desire to stop the war and save Ikata from his hatred, Sarada joined Boruto and Mitsuki in heading to Kirigakure to aid the Mizukage, with Sarada also wishing to return Hiramikare. While they were initially stopped by Buntan and Kyoho, who insisted that they must face the Funado, Denki and Iwabi fended them off to let Team 7 escape, except for Kawaki, who remained firm that war was inevitable and decided to stay. After an initial struggle to get help sailing, Kajiki agreed to help them get Chojuro, Sarada, and Mitsuki holding onto the ship due to the rough waters. Upon meeting up with Chojuro, they supported Boruto's request for the end of conflict and were surprised when Chojuro revealed Isari's attempt at peace and death by his own weapon. Boruto managed to convince Chojuro to let them try talking Ikata out of the conflict, so they returned to Kajiki's ship to get to the Funado. Sarada offered to steer the ship and Boruto asked her and Mitsuki to trust him and cover for him. Team 7 arrived at the main Funado warship, but had their ship destroyed by Ikata. As each of Boruto's appeals were in vain, Sarada assured him that he tried more than enough. She pointed out to Ikata that they knew how it felt to lose someone that they cared about, and that they were also putting those feelings aside to end the conflict. She was shocked when Boruto offered his life to end the war. Ikata agreed to the terms if his teammates didn't interfere with his death or sought revenge after it. Sarada and Mitsuki protested it, but Boruto made them promise to honor his choice. They struggled watching Boruto being attacked by the Funado. After Boruto jumped into the water when Kobuna hesitated to push him, Sarada admitted she did hate the Funado for it, but wouldn't seek revenge because she promised Boruto. Impressed by their dedication, Ikata saved Boruto himself, to Sarada and Mitsuki's relief, and declared the war over. Following the Funado surrender, the Konoha Nin returned home to report. There, they learned from the Mizukage of how the Funado lost much influence in the country. As Boruto asked about Ikata's fate, he and Kawaki got into an argument about whether Ikata deserved punishment. As the two continued to argue their views, they ultimately came to blows. Sarada watched them fight in annoyance, shocked by how calm Naruto and Mitsuki were about it. After the two collapsed against each other, working out their aggression, they put aside their differences. Code Arc Following the defeat of Ishiki Otsutsuki, Sarada was saddened to discover that her father had lost his Rinnegan during the fight. Also, when Boruto was indefinitely put off of active duty to be monitored for his comma, Sarada had mixed feelings on this, as it meant that Team 7 was suspended. She talked with her friends, who were all concerned about Boruto's future. In the anime, proper dosage with Amato's drug halted the comma's progression, and they wondered if this would allow them to resume taking missions. Later, Kawaki joined Team 7 in training drills, who quickly grew annoyed by the basic shinobi training methods. As Sarada insisted that basics were important, Kawaki decided to prove his point by attacking his friends, insisting that extreme combat is the best way. 
Sarada reluctantly agreed and fought back. As Kawaki proved to be quickly adapting his body modifications to his newfound ninjutsu, his attacks became more aggressive, forcing Boruto to voice his displeasure. Boruto and Kawaki made the bet that the winner of the fight would dictate their training style. Ultimately, Boruto won. Kawaki honored the bet, but still voiced his distaste at Boruto's methods, vowing to himself get stronger by any means, shocking Sarada with his still sour attitude. After Boruto was killed by Kawaki and resurrected through Momoshiki's Kama, Sarada and Mitsuki checked on him, looking at his scar. Unaware of the truth, Sarada was concerned that his fully Otsutsuki body would make him a target for Code to sacrifice the Tentails. Sasuke arrived, agreeing with her. Later, she and Mitsuki watched as Boruto and Sasuke talked. Sarada felt a mix of shock, relief, and anger over the situation. She wondered if they're undependable, and Mitsuki asked her if she had feelings for Boruto. She insisted her wanting to protect Boruto was independent of feelings, pointing out Mitsuki's own focus on him. She was annoyed that Sasuke spent so much time with Boruto when he was her father first, and the two decided to get stronger, Sarada feeling she wouldn't be fit for Hokage if she didn't. Sasuke Uchiha Sasuke Uchiha is one of the last surviving members of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. After his older brother Itachi slaughtered their clan, Sasuke made it his mission in life to avenge them by killing Itachi. He is added to Team 7 upon becoming a ninja, and through competition with his rival and best friend Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke starts developing his skills. Dissatisfied with his progress, he defects from Konoha so that he can acquire the strength needed to exact his revenge. His years of seeking vengeance and his actions that followed become increasingly demanding, irrational, and isolates him from others, leading him to be branded as an international criminal. After learning the truth of his brother's sacrifice, later proving instrumental in ending the Fourth Shinobi World War, and being happily redeemed by Naruto, Sasuke decides to return to Konoha and dedicate his life to help protect the village and its inhabitants, becoming referred to as the Supporting Kage. Early Life Sasuke is the second and youngest son of Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha. They named him after Sasuke Sarutobi in the hopes that he would someday be just as strong as Shinobi. Sasuke grew up in the shadow of his older brother Itachi, a natural prodigy who many in the Uchiha clan and the village would constantly compare Sasuke and any of his accomplishments to. Sasuke himself adored Itachi, never passing up an opportunity to spend time with him. Although Itachi welcomed his company, letting Sasuke watch him train and taking him on adventures into the forests, Itachi in return rarely helped Sasuke himself become a better shinobi. When asked, he would often instead poke Sasuke's forehead and promise to do it some other time. Sasuke found this annoying, but didn't allow it to blemish his high opinion of his brother. On entering the Konoha Ninja Academy, Sasuke proved to be the standout of his class, consistently getting top grades. However, he could never meet these same milestones Itachi had set, resulting in their father paying Sasuke little attention. Aware of this neglect, Itachi, despite being increasingly busy, tried to stand in for their father by giving Sasuke the recognition he craved, at times even blackmailing Fugaku to spend time with Sasuke. As time went on, Itachi started becoming distant and cold towards their family, culminating in a falling out with much of the Uchiha clan on their suspicion that he'd killed his best friend, Shisui Uchiha. Sasuke did not understand the reason for this, but he didn't mind the side effect. His father began taking an interest in his development. Fugaku taught Sasuke how to perform the Great Fireball technique, which he mastered in a week. Fugaku stated his pride in Sasuke for this accomplishment, but at the same time encouraged him not to follow in Itachi's footsteps. After a long day of training, Sasuke returned home one night to find the streets littered with the bodies of the Uchiha. He rushed home to notify his family of this Uchiha clan massacre, only to find Itachi standing over the bodies of their parents. Sasuke tried to solicit help and comfort from Itachi, who responded by using Tsukiyomi on him to torment him with visions of him murdering their family. Horrified by what Itachi had done, Sasuke pleaded for an explanation, to which Itachi replied that it was to test his own power. Fearful that he would be next, Sasuke tried to run. Itachi cornered him and explained that Sasuke, as he then was, would not be worth killing. Only by becoming stronger, such as by acquiring his own Mangekyo Sharingan, could he prove a worthwhile challenge to Itachi's abilities. Before leaving, Itachi encouraged Sasuke to hate him, to desire revenge, and to gain power from that. Sasuke immediately followed through, pursuing Itachi and using his newly awakened Sharingan to attack him. The attack failed and Sasuke passed out, but not before glimpsing Itachi crying. Sasuke would forget this had happened for many years. Sasuke, now one of the last surviving Uchiha, was alone. He spent his first few days after the massacre wandering his family's compound, reflecting on the people who were now gone, killed by Itachi. Sasuke decided to do what Itachi had instructed and dedicated his life to vengeance, having no other interest than bringing about Itachi's death. 
He threw himself into his studies at the academy, making no efforts to form friendships and ignoring all the girls' attempts to gain his affection. One of his classmates, Naruto, disliked Sasuke's cool personality and the attention he received, and developed a one-sided rivalry in his pursuit to prove himself as good as, if not better than, Sasuke. For his part, Sasuke thought little of Naruto and was usually annoyed by his outbursts, but would at times secretly smile at how Naruto worked because of him. Ironically, for all the attention he received, Naruto was the only person among his peers who understood Sasuke due to the painful experiences he had. Prologue, Land of Waves. Upon graduating from the academy, Sasuke is added to Team 7 under the leadership of Kakashi Harake. Sasuke makes clear during their first meeting how little interest in the team he has, his only goal in life being to kill Itachi. One of his teammates, Sakura Harano, tries to bond with him by sharing her envy of their other teammate, Naruto Uzumaki's lack of parents, but this only offends Sasuke. To test their qualifications, Kakashi gives the three a bell test, stating that whichever of the three takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become a genin. Of the three, Sasuke comes closest to taking a bell, his skills being great enough to force Kakashi to stop reading his copy of Icha Icha. He ultimately fails, just like Naruto and Sakura. Kakashi explains that the goal of the test was to use teamwork, to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He's persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. They feed him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together. Kakashi sees this, and because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7, escorting Tezuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers. Naruto is paralyzed with fear, forcing Sasuke to step in to disarm them and protect Tezuna until Kakashi can capture them. Tezuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him, but that he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. For his earlier indecision, Sasuke declares Naruto a scaredy cat, also known as a bibiri-kun. When they arrive in the Land of Waves, however, they are confronted by Zabuza Momochi. Sasuke experiences a crisis of his own, overwhelmed by the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza. He quickly regains his composure, and when Kakashi is caught in a water prison, he teams up with Naruto to break him out. In the end, Zabuza is seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tazuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice to improve their chakra control, which will help them against Zabuza. Although Sasuke's control is initially much better than Naruto's, Naruto improves rapidly using advice from Sakura, who herself mastered it from the start. Sasuke asks Naruto to share Sakura's advice with him, and from competition between them, they each climb to the top of their trees. Naruto is exhausted from the training, so Team 7 leaves him behind the next morning as they resume their escort duties. They're met by Zabuza and Haku, the latter of whom Sasuke faces in battle. Because of Sasuke's speed and refined chakra control, Haku imprisons him with his demonic mirroring ice crystals. Naruto joins to help, but unaware of how Haku's mirrors work, joins Sasuke within the prison. Sasuke is unable to melt the mirrors with his fire, and Naruto is unable to break free with his shadow clones, leaving them at the mercy of Haku's senbon. As time passes, however, Sasuke becomes increasingly able to dodge Haku's attacks, a benefit of his awakening Sharingan. Seeing this, Haku decides to finish off Naruto so he can focus on Sasuke. Sasuke shields Naruto from Haku's attack with his own body, when Naruto asks him why, Sasuke claims his body acted on its own. Sasuke seemingly dies from his injuries. In truth, Haku only struck Sasuke's vital points to put him in a temporary death-like state, so he wakes up a short time later. By the time he does, both Haku and Zabuza are dead, so their bodyguard services are no longer required. When their injuries heal, they return home via the newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. For their performance in the Land of Waves, however, Kakashi decides to enter them in the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha. Because they've only recently graduated from the academy, the three feel they must give strong showings to prove themselves. When they arrive at the exam hall, Sasuke first uses his Sharingan to dispel a Genjutsu intended to discourage unqualified Genin, and then agrees to spar with Rock Lee. Lee's speed and Taijutsu skills impress Sasuke enough to use his Sharingan in their fight. Although he's able to see Lee's movements better, Sasuke can't physically keep up and Lee nearly performs the front lotus on him. Lee is stopped by his teacher, Might Guy, whose emotional method of punishing Lee disturbs Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura. During the exam's first stage, the participating Genin are given a written test. Sasuke is unable to answer any of the questions, causing him to realize that the purpose of the first stage is to cheat without getting caught. 
He therefore uses his Sharingan to mimic the pencil movements of other examinees. Team 7 continues to the second stage in the Forest of Death, where to pass they must obtain a pair of scrolls, one of which they're given at the start, the other of which they must take from another team. Soon after entering, Sasuke discovers that what appears to be Naruto is an Amenin, Oboro in disguise. He drives Oboro off and locates the real Naruto. To prevent this from happening again, Sasuke comes up with a complicated password that they'll share to confirm their identities in case they get separated. They're immediately attacked, and when they regroup, Naruto correctly recites the answer. Knowing Naruto could have never remembered the password, Sasuke attacks the imposter. The imposter, Orochimaru, is far too strong for them to contend with and may very well kill them. Sasuke tries to forfeit their scroll in exchange for their lives, but Naruto, upon locating them, stops him. Believing Sasuke may also be an enemy ninja in disguise because the Sasuke he knows would never surrender. Naruto engages Orochimaru in combat, defeats his snake, and calls Sasuke a scaredy cat before Orochimaru finally renders him unconscious. Amazed by Naruto's performance and encouraged by Sakura, Sasuke picks up where he left off by pinning Orochimaru down and attacking him with the dragon fire technique. Orochimaru is impressed by Sasuke and brands him with a cursed seal of heaven to reward him before leaving. The pain of the cursed seal overwhelms Sasuke and he passes out. When Sasuke regains consciousness, he finds Sakura badly injured, Rock Lee defeated in battle, and Team 10 defending them from Team Dosu, an Oto team. Sasuke questions Sakura on the identity of who hurt her, which Zaku Abumi takes credit for. Under the Cursed Seal's influence, Sasuke attacks Zaku and breaks both of his arms. He prepares to do the same to Zaku's teammates, but Sakura's pleas for him to stop bring him back to his senses and the Cursed Seal recedes. The Genin teams go their separate ways, and Team 7 spends several days recuperating from their ordeals. On the last day of the second stage, they go looking for the second scroll that they still need. They're found by Team Oboro, which Naruto distracts while the rest of Team 7 sneaks behind and knocks out. With two scrolls, Team 7 is able to advance to the preliminary round. Sasuke is paired against Yoroi Akado for the first match. Before the fight starts, Kakashi warns Sasuke that use of the Cursed Seal will disqualify him. Because he can't use Chakra without the Cursed Seal activating, Sasuke is forced to only use Taijutsu, something that proves difficult when Yoroi absorbs his Chakra whenever he gets close. Sasuke ends up mimicking the portion of Rock Lee's front lotus he saw a few days earlier, inventing the lion combo to defeat him. Afterwards, Kakashi takes Sasuke aside and uses the evil sealing method on his cursed seal so that it won't flare up as often. Sasuke loses consciousness from the application, and by the time he wakes up, the preliminaries are already over. For the final matches taking place in a month, Sasuke was to face Gara of Tsunagakure in the first round. In order to prepare him for this fight and to give him an alternative to the Cursed Seal's power, Kakashi teaches him how to use Chidori and helps him further emulate Lee's speed and fighting style. Their training runs long and Sasuke in fact arrives late for his match, but he finds that they waited for him because the audience has anticipated the fight so much. Sasuke uses his speed to attack Gara from multiple angles in a short time, leaving his shield of sand unable to block anything. Gara surrounds himself with his sand so that Sasuke won't bother him while he prepares for the fight. Unable to get through the shield with physical attacks, Sasuke pierces it with Chidori. Gara's arm is wounded and his shield dissolves, but not before Sasuke briefly senses Shukaku within him. Before the fight can continue, however, a genjutsu descends on the stadium. Konoha Crush The invasion of Konoha begins, forcing the cancellation of the Chunin exams. As Konoha Nin in the stadium start engaging the invading Suna and Oto forces, the exam proctor Genma Shiranui sends Sasuke after the escaping Gara. Konkuro attempts to delay Sasuke, but Shino Aburame appears to fight Konkuro in Sasuke's place. By the time Sasuke catches up with him, Gara is already in the process of transforming into Shukaku. Gara attacks with increased speed and strength, which Sasuke is only narrowly able to avoid. He counters with Chidori and succeeds in injuring Gara yet again, but Gara is still able to continue fighting. Sasuke, who has already reached his limit of using Chidori twice a day, is low on options. He's able to use a third Chidori by using his Cursed Seal, but is left paralyzed afterwards and at Gara's mercy. Sasuke is saved by the timely arrival of Naruto and Sakura, sent by Kakashi to provide assistance. Sakura is quickly captured and Naruto initially struggles against Gara. Sasuke volunteers to use what little strength he has to distract Gara while Naruto escapes with Sakura, but Naruto is unwilling to do so. Instead, Naruto taps into a mysterious chakra source, creates a thousand shadow clones, and soon after summons Gamabunta, each of which amazes Sasuke. Naruto ultimately defeats Gara, but he's not able to move. Sasuke collects him and takes him back to Konoha with Sakura. A few days later, Team 7 attends the third Hokage's funeral. Search for Tsunade Sasuke arrives at a dango shop to meet Kakashi for lunch. Not only does he find that Kakashi has arrived uncharacteristically early, but Kakashi abruptly cancels soon afterwards. 
When Sasuke stops by Kakashi's home later that day, he finds Kakashi is comatose. The assembled Jonin avoid divulging what happened to him until Alba Yamashiro unwittingly reveals that Itachi has returned to Konoha in search of Naruto. Sasuke immediately starts tracking Naruto down so that he can, in turn, fight Itachi. He stops by Ramanichiraku and is informed that Naruto has gone to Shukuba town with Jiraiya. Sasuke locates the inn where Naruto is staying shortly after Itachi does the same. Itachi allows Sasuke an opportunity to demonstrate how much stronger he's become, which he does by attacking with Chidori. Itachi easily blocks the attack and breaks Sasuke's arm, but he is stopped from going any further by the arrival of Jiraiya. When Jiraiya states his intention to defeat both Itachi and his partner Kisame Hoshigaki, Sasuke demands that Itachi be left for him. Uninterested, Itachi kicks Sasuke away and uses Tsukiyomi to force him to experience their parents' murders over and over again. Before Sasuke passes out, Itachi informs him that he is still weak. Sasuke is hospitalized, comatose like Kakashi before him. It isn't until Naruto brings Tsunade to Konoha that the trauma to their minds is healed. Land of Tea Escort Mission In the anime, Team 7 is sent to the Land of Tea to protect Idate Morino. During the mission, they are brought into conflict with Aoi Rokusho. Although Sasuke is able to help break Aoi's sword of the Thunder God with his Chidori, he is injured during the fight and must be hospitalized when they get back to Konoha. Sasuke Recovery Mission while recuperating, Sasuke reflects on his encounter with Itachi, along with Aoi's mocking in the anime, and is upset that after all this time, Itachi is still so much stronger than he is. He is also jealous of Naruto, who, despite being the worst student in their academy class, has seemingly surpassed Sasuke, evidenced by his defeat of Gara. Determined to prove himself superior, Sasuke challenges Naruto to a fight when he comes to visit him in the hospital. At first, Naruto refuses because Sasuke is still in no condition to fight, but Sasuke persists and Naruto agrees. The fight escalates quickly, culminating with Sasuke using Chidori and Naruto using Rasengan. Kakashi arrives and deflects their attacks into opposing water towers before they can clash. Sasuke initially believes his Chidori was at least stronger based on the damage to their respective water towers, but upon closer examination finds that Naruto's water tower is destroyed. Sasuke leaves, jealous of Naruto's development. Kakashi tracks Sasuke down afterwards and lectures him. The Chidori is supposed to be used to protect friends, not attack them. Kakashi reminds Sasuke that no matter how painful the losses of the past are, it would be worse to lose the friends he still has. Kakashi leaves him to think over what he said, and Sasuke becomes conflicted between his desire for revenge and his friendship with Naruto and Sakura. Before he can take Kakashi's words to heart, Sasuke is confronted by the Sound Four. Sent by Orochimaru, the Sound 4 fight with Sasuke to test his abilities and quickly defeat him. He tries using his Cursed Seal to gain the upper hand, but discovers that they each have Cursed Seals too. The Sound 4 offer to take him to Orochimaru so that he can gain strength like theirs, which he'll never achieve if he remains in Konoha. Desperate to become stronger than Itachi, Sasuke decides to take the Sound 4 up on the offer and leaves during the night. As he approaches the village's exit, he is met by Sakura, who tries to persuade him to stay so as to not break up Team 7. When this doesn't work, Sakura confesses her love for him and asks to be allowed to accompany him at the very least. Sasuke refuses again, so she threatens to call for help. He stops her by knocking her out, but thanks her before he does. He meets the Sound 4 outside the village and they start guiding him to Orochimaru. Once they're far enough away from Konoha, the Sound 4 gives Sasuke some medication that will mature his curse seal to a second, stronger state. He's left unconscious while his body adjusts to the drug, but when he finally wakes up many hours later, his body is much stronger. Ecstatic, Sasuke continues on to Orochimaru by himself, paying little attention to the Sound 4's ongoing battle with the Sasuke recovery team. Sasuke is stopped at the Valley of the End by Naruto. Sasuke ignores his pleas to return to Konoha and is unmoved by Naruto's warnings that Orochimaru will take his body, believing that such a sacrifice is worthwhile if it will lead to Itachi's death. Naruto starts attacking him, ready to take him back to Konoha by force if necessary. Sasuke returns the attacks as a way of resuming the fight that Kakashi interrupted earlier. He also decides to kill Naruto, remembering Itachi's explanation that killing one's closest friend will awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. With his cursed seal, Sasuke is able to land a number of serious blows. Although Naruto didn't want to believe that Sasuke would really kill him, his mounting injuries convince him otherwise and force him to call on the powers of the Nine Tails within him. Sasuke is surprised by the insidious chakra he senses, the sudden healing of Naruto's wounds, and the increases to his strength and speed. Sasuke becomes angry and asks Naruto why he would go so far for him, to which Naruto responds that Sasuke is like a brother to him and he simply can't let him go. 
Sasuke acknowledges their bond and promises to sever it, but does at least put on the forehead protector that until now he refused to, to do Naruto the courtesy of wearing. He boasts that Naruto will not even be able to scratch the forehead protector. They continue trading blows, with Naruto eventually manifesting a fox-shaped cloak, and Sasuke entering his cursed seal's second level. Sasuke clashes his Chidori with Naruto's Rasengan, and within the dome of resulting energy, they finally trade blows. Sasuke punches Naruto, and Naruto scratches Sasuke's forehead protector, proving his earlier boast wrong in the process. When the energy dissipates, Sasuke stands over an unconscious Naruto, wounded and with no energy left to finish him. He decides not to kill him since that's what Itachi would want him to do, and he refuses to let Itachi decide his actions. He leaves his forehead protector behind with Naruto and continues on to Orochimaru by himself. When he finally reaches Orochimaru's lair, he discovers that Orochimaru has already found a new body. Sasuke is unconcerned, only wanting whatever power Orochimaru can give him. In Naruto's footsteps, the friend's paths. In the anime, approximately two years into his training with Orochimaru, Sasuke volunteers to deliver some research material to one of Orochimaru's hideouts. While there, Sasuke releases one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Suigetsu Hozuki, from his confinements, and then helps Karin capture Suigetsu yet again. Pleased with what he witnesses of their abilities, Sasuke resolves to win them both over so he can have them as allies in the future. Tenshi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission Two and a half years after leaving Konoha, Sasuke waits impatiently at one of Orochimaru's hideouts in Kusagakure. When Orochimaru finally returns, Sasuke demands that he resume their training. Before complying, Orochimaru introduces him to Sai, his replacement in Team 7, but Sasuke isn't interested. Sai tries to engage Sasuke by discussing Naruto, prompting Sasuke to knock him over with killing intent. Sai persists, telling Sasuke that Naruto thinks of him as a brother. Sasuke replies that he only has one brother whom he will kill. Sai tracks him down later as he rests. Sasuke demands an explanation for the disturbance, and Sai reveals that he wishes to reunite Sasuke with Naruto so as to re-establish the brotherly bond they had. Annoyed, Sasuke attacks him. Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato, Kakashi's replacement, are attacked at the site of Sasuke's attack. Sai is unharmed and is prepared to help them bring him back to Konoha. Sasuke reacts with indifference to Sakura and Naruto, chastising the latter for still pursuing him after all these years. Sasuke also goes on to tell Naruto that he couldn't simply break their bond by killing him, and that he only spared Naruto's life from their first fight on a whim, but intends to kill him for real this time. To demonstrate that they mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all, his growth under Orochimaru being far greater than any of them expected. Naruto, frustrated by this, struggles to avoid the temptation of using Ninetales. Seeing this, Sasuke enters Naruto's subconscious using his Sharingan and suppresses the Ninetales, but not before the beast noted Sasuke's similarity to Madara Uchiha in terms of visual prowess and chakra. He escapes Yamato's attempt to capture him and prepares to kill them all, but is stopped by Orochimaru. Orochimaru points to their recent successes against Akatsuki, the organization that Itachi belongs to, and explains that letting them live may further weaken Akatsuki, thereby making it easier to kill Itachi. Sasuke accepts this reasoning, and they leave Team 7 behind. Three Tails Appearance In the anime, Sasuke meets one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Yukimaru, who is picking white camellias. Itachi Pursuit Mission after defeating hundreds of Otogakure forces in a training match without receiving a scratch and without killing his opponents, Sasuke decides there's nothing else he can learn from Orochimaru. He decides to kill Orochimaru before he goes, finding Orochimaru's pursuit of power for power's sake distastefully similar to Itachi. Because his current host body is in the process of rejecting him anyway, Orochimaru vacates it and attempts to take Sasuke's. Sasuke repels the attack and cuts up his body, but the exposure to fluids in Orochimaru's body paralyzes Sasuke, allowing Orochimaru to initiate the living corpse reincarnation. Orochimaru starts imprisoning Sasuke within his own subconscious, but Sasuke reverses the process with demonic illusion shackling stakes technique, imprisoning Orochimaru in Sasuke's subconscious instead. Before leaving the base, Sasuke releases Suigetsu Hozuki from the tank he was kept stored in and invites him to join a team he's forming. When Sasuke explains that he's dealt with Orochimaru, Suigetsu tests his abilities to make sure his victory wasn't a fluke, and satisfied, agrees to join him. They travel to another hideout to recruit Karin, and release the prisoners kept there so that she wouldn't have other commitments. Karin refuses to join their team, but claims that she happens to be going in the same direction as they are. They visit another hideout to recruit Jugo, the origin of Orochimaru's cursed seals. As they approach, they are confronted by a horde of escaped cursed seal recipients, but easily deal with them all. Although they locate Jugo easily enough in his cell, he's unwilling to go with them, afraid that he'll kill them in a violent rage. When Sasuke demonstrates that they can keep Jugo's rage under control, he agrees to go with them. Sasuke takes the others to Soraku to stock up on supplies, after which he explains that their team, called Hebi, has been assembled for the sole reason of finding and killing Itachi. They then split up to search for leads. 
While trying to pick up Itachi's trail, Sasuke is confronted by Tobi of Akatsuki, who distracts him while Daedra attacks above with his explosive clay. Sasuke summons a snake to shield the blast and then immediately retaliates, seemingly cutting Tobi down, although he gets up unfazed. Daedra attacks with a volley of additional explosives, which Sasuke is able to deflect with his Chidori Senbon. Daedra takes to the air with a C2 dragon, and Tobi plants explosive mines underground, cutting off Sasuke's escape. Sasuke enters the second stage of his cursed seal, and by sacrificing his transformation's left wing, he is able to propel Daedra's dragon onto the minefield. Frustrated that Sasuke keeps defeating his explosives, Daedra uses C4 to cover the area in microscopic bombs that destroy anyone who inhales them from the inside out. Able to see the bombs of the Sharingan, Sasuke uses a Genjutsu to fake his death while he sneaks up behind Daedra. This is a trap as Daedra has trained himself to be immune to Genjutsu, and Sasuke is trapped in a sphere of C4 explosives. Having earlier noticed that the explosives can be diffused with Lightning Chakra, Sasuke escapes with Chidori and quarters Daedra. He starts asking for Itachi's whereabouts, deactivating his Sharingan since he thinks the battle is over. This insults Daedara, who uses his last result, C0. Daedara dies in the explosion, and Sasuke only narrowly avoids the same fate by summoning Manda and placing it under his control so Manda can jump to the Ryuchi Cave, thereby escaping the explosion. However, before Manda was de-summoned back to the Ryuchi Cave, they were hit by the explosion, which ultimately killed Manda. Manda uses his dying breath to curse Sasuke. Sasuke regroups with the rest of Hebi, and they locate a place to rest. After a few hours, Karin reports that Konoha Ninja are approaching their location. Assuming it's Naruto and the others, Sasuke takes Hebi to one of the nearby Akatsuki bases that Jugo learned about. Sasuke goes in by himself and finds Itachi waiting for him. Sasuke attacks and defeats Itachi with his Chidori Sharp Spear, impressing him enough to divulge where the real Itachi is before it, a crow clone, disperses. Sasuke leads Hebi towards Itachi's location. Fated Battle Between Brothers as they approach the Uchiha hideout where Itachi's waiting, Kisame Hoshigaki meets them and allows only Sasuke to proceed. Sasuke instructs Hebi to wait for him and goes on alone. When they finally are face to face, Sasuke and Itachi start by trading Genjutsu, within which they trade Taijutsu attacks. During a temporary lull, Sasuke questions Itachi about a suspicion he's long had, that someone had helped Itachi kill the Uchiha clan. Itachi confirms that he was helped by Madara Uchiha, one of Konoha's founders, but Sasuke doesn't believe him. While explaining Madara's history, Itachi also reveals that the use of the Mangekyo Sharingan eventually causes blindness, which can only be cured by taking the eyes of a sibling. Intending to take Sasuke's eyes for just this reason, Itachi uses Tsukiyomi on him, which Sasuke is able to break out of to Itachi's surprise. Sasuke and Itachi abandon Genjutsu and switch to Ninjutsu, the volley of attacks quickly spill outside where Sasuke and Itachi compare their great fireballs. When Sasuke starts to pull ahead, Itachi uses Amaterasu, igniting Sasuke and seemingly killing him. As Itachi approaches to take his eyes, Sasuke, having shed his skin to escape Amaterasu, attacks with multiple great dragon fire techniques. Itachi avoids them, but Sasuke informs him that Itachi wasn't his target. Storm clouds gather and lightning brews, allowing Sasuke to kill Itachi with Kirin. The hideout is destroyed, and Sasuke briefly believes he's won, only for Itachi to reveal that he has survived thanks to his Susanoo. Angry that Itachi could endure his strongest attack, and having exhausted his own chakra reserve, Sasuke activates level 2 of his cursed seal. Orochimaru, sensing Sasuke's desperation, calls out to him from within his subconscious, promising to help him if Sasuke lets him out. Having exhausted all of his chakra reserves and having none left to suppress Orochimaru, he emerges from Sasuke's body, attacking Itachi with his eight branches technique. Itachi uses Susanoo to behead Orochimaru's jutsu, but he isn't concerned, having decided to take Sasuke's body while he's weak. Itachi stops him by stabbing him with the sword of Tatsuka, sealing him away and removing the cursed seal from Sasuke's body. Itachi approaches Sasuke, repeating his intention to take Sasuke's eyes, and Sasuke makes futile attempts to keep him away. Susano continues to protect Itachi, but it degrades as he labors near and Itachi starts coughing up blood. When he finally reaches Sasuke, Itachi appears to grab for his eyes, but instead only pokes his forehead. Itachi smiles, apologizes to Sasuke, and says this is the end before falling dead. Sasuke is confused about what has happened, but smiles for finally avenging his family before passing out. When Sasuke wakes up, he finds his injuries being treated by Tobi, who reintroduces himself as Madara Uchiha. When he sees Tobi's Sharingan, Sasuke's eyes suddenly use Amaterasu on him. Tobi escapes the flames and marvels at the lengths Itachi would go through to protect Sasuke. Sasuke doesn't understand this and accuses Tobi of lying to him, but Tobi insists that everything he says is true that Itachi killed the Uchiha clan on orders of Konoha's leadership in order to protect Sasuke. Sasuke is unable to process this and passes out again. 
When he wakes up, Toby starts over, explaining the Uchiha's history, Konoha's history, and Itachi's history from the beginning. Sasuke tries pointing out how hard Itachi tried to kill him, to which Toby replies that it was only to draw out Orochimaru so as to stop him from manipulating Sasuke any further. Sasuke starts recalling memories he blocked out, things Itachi said, and occurrences that make more sense with Toby's version of events. Realizing how much Itachi loved him, Sasuke is overcome with grief. Naruto Jin Raiden, The Day the Wolf Howled In this novel, Sasuke starts experiencing eye irritation in the days after Itachi's death. Toby gives him a bottle of Kotaro, a medicine that Itachi used to use. It helps, but very little of it remains. Hoping to get more and to verify parts of the story that Toby told him, Sasuke goes to the Howling Wolf Village. There he meets Kina and Reishi Kodan, two brothers whose relationship is very similar to the one Sasuke used to have with Itachi when they were younger. They recognize Sasuke before he even introduces himself, having heard so much about him from Itachi that they feel as though they already know him. They explain that Itachi would visit them for a couple times every year to get another prescription of Kotaro, and that while waiting for it to be prepared, he would tell them warmly about his beloved little brother. Itachi also explained to them that if Sasuke ever stopped by, it would be because he had died. So they share their condolences. Sasuke is saddened by his confirmation that Itachi was a good person. Wishing to be alone, he places an order for more Kotaro before going off to rest in the same shack Itachi used to stay in. During the week it'll take the Kotaro to be made, Kina convinces Sasuke to help him investigate a series of murders that have been taking place in the area, hoping it will redeem their Kodan clan. During the course of the investigation, Sasuke discovers that Kina is behind the murders, killing villagers who pick on him by inadvertently releasing Rowan, a monster sealed within him. Every time this happens, Reishi wipes his memory so that he won't be traumatized by what he did. With the village starting to suspect that one of the brothers is responsible, Reishi asks Sasuke to help convince them that he is the murderer in order to spare Kina. Sasuke, again reminded of the relationship between Itachi and himself, agrees. Kina, however, doesn't want anything to happen to Reishi, and once again inadvertently releases Rowan and starts attacking the Howling Wolf village. Because of the nature of the seal containing Rowan, they now only have 10 minutes to perform another seal or Kina will die. Sasuke suggests a new seal concocted by Itachi before he died. Sasuke keeps Rowan busy with his Mangekyo Sharingan, it having finally awakened on coming to terms with Itachi's death. Reishi performs the seal, trapping Rowan in a nearby shrine at the cost of his life. Kina is saved and is given sole credit for stopping Reishi and saving the village, Sasuke having altered the villagers' memories with Genjutsu. Kina, unable to remember anything, doubts this story is true, unwilling to believe Reishi was a murderer. Sasuke offers to take Kina with him and train him to be a ninja, but Kina refuses, wishing to stay in the Howling Wolf village to help people like Reishi did. As in the manga and anime, Sasuke gathers the members of Hebi with Tobi watching from nearby. Having finally accepted that Itachi was a good person who was wronged by Konoha, he decides that the new mission for their team, now renamed Taka, will be to destroy Konoha. Pain's Assault Tobi offers to help Taka destroy Konoha, but in exchange first asks that they help Akatsuki by going to Kumogakure to capture the Eight Tails. Sasuke agrees, but makes it clear he plans to kill only the elders involved in the massacre and the rest of the villagers will be spared. They track the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, Killer B, to the Valley of Clouds and Lightning and confront him. Sasuke and Suigetsu attack him with their sword, but he proves to be a better swordsman than they are and stabs Sasuke with several of his Super Vibrato Lightning Release Swords. After Kareen heals his injuries, Sasuke attacks B with Chidori, but it has little effect. B enters a version 1 form and attacks. Sasuke, recognizing it from his fight with Naruto, tries halting B with Genjutsu. B pretends to be paralyzed by it, causing Sasuke to lower his guard and allowing B to attack him with Lariat. Sasuke is left badly injured and it falls to Jugo to heal him. B enters Tailed Beast mode and attacks Taka with a Tailed Beast Ball, which Suigetsu uses his body to block. He survives, but is knocked unconscious. Unwilling to lose his teammates, Sasuke uses his Mangekyo Sharingan to perform Amaterasu on B. As B writhes in pain, he nearly crushes Kareen with a tentacle, prompting Sasuke to sever it to protect her. B's transformation recedes, Taka collects his body, and they deliver it to Tobi. It's revealed that in an earlier secret conversation with Tobi, Sasuke admitted that he not only wants to kill the elders, but all the residents of Konoha. Sasuke explains that the grief of losing Itachi and everyone being ignorant of how Itachi sacrificed his life for peace made it impossible for him to follow in Itachi's footsteps, and he felt that the villagers are just as guilty, even going as far as to threaten to kill the loved ones of anyone who dared to oppose him. As they recuperate, they discover that they've been followed by Kumonin. They escape before they can be drawn into battle and set out for Konoha. Past Arc, The Locus of Konoha in the anime, on their way to Konoha, Taka passes a construction site that reminds Sasuke of Team 7's mission to rescue Naho. 
5 Kage Summit. Toby intercepts Taka on their way to Konoha, explaining that the bee was a fake, the real bee having escaped when Sasuke severed the tentacle. While trying to decide if and how they will compromise, Zetsu appears and announces that Konoha has been destroyed already and that Danzo Shimura has been appointed the next Hokage. Because Danzo was the main conspirator in the Uchiha clan's assassination, Toby comes up with an alternative for capturing the Eight Tails. Taka must go to the Five Kage Summit being held within a few days to kill Danzo. Sasuke accepts these terms and is led to the Land of Iron by White Zetsu. On arrival, White Zetsu points Danzo out to them and Taka finds a place where they can ambush him. Taka's presence is discovered, exposed by White Zetsu on Tobi's orders, and the country's samurai mobilize to capture them. Sasuke kills dozens of samurai, attracting the fourth Raikage to their location. Taka engages the Raikage and his bodyguards. While Sasuke neutralizes C, Jugo fights and is defeated by the Raikage. Sasuke and the Raikage turn their attentions to each other, but Sasuke is unable to pierce the Raikage's lightning release chakra mode. The Raikage's lightning augmented physical attacks prove similarly formidable, and it is only by manifesting an underdeveloped Susano that Sasuke survives the Raikage's Liger Bomb. Sasuke tries to discourage further contact from the Raikage by coating Susano with Amaterasu's flames, but the Raikage attacks regardless willfully forfeiting his left arm in order to avenge Killer B, his younger brother. Sasuke and the Raikage prepare to attack each other yet again, but are stopped by Gara, now the Kazakage. Gara asks for a chance to speak with Sasuke, which the Raikage agrees to so he can have his arm healed. Gara shares his own experience with loneliness and vengeance and how he came to decide that they were not worthwhile pursuits. He discourages Sasuke from making the same mistakes as he did, but Sasuke refuses to listen because all he can see is darkness. Unable to get through to him, Gara and his bodyguards attack. Sasuke escapes by caving the room in with his Susano and locates Karin. While telling her to leave, Suigetsu and Jugo behind to have her guide him to Danzo. Danzo flees as soon as they arrive and Sasuke's attempt to pursue is blocked by the fifth Mizukage. With his chakra running low, Sasuke nearly succumbs to her boil release, only to be saved by White Zetsu's spore technique. He escapes from the Mizukage but is met by the third Suchikage, who seemingly vaporizes him with dust release, detachment of the primitive world technique. Sasuke is saved at the last moment by Tobi, who sends him to Kamui's dimension to keep him safe. He also sends Karin with him to revitalize him. Tobi releases both of them later once he's tracked down Danzo, making good on his promise to help Sasuke avenge the Uchiha clan by killing him. Before they start fighting, Sasuke asks for Danzo to confirm that Itachi really was ordered to kill the Uchiha by Konoha's leadership. Danzo, assuming Sasuke heard this from Itachi, criticizes Itachi for revealing the secret and concludes that Itachi, in doing so, is a traitor to Konoha. Taking this as confirmation, Sasuke uses Susano to crush Danzo in anger. Danzo, however, appears unharmed and starts attacking Sasuke. Sasuke counters a number of times, even evolving a Susano to a completed form, but each time Danzo is seemingly fatally wounded, he emerges a short distance away unharmed. From observing Danzo during their fight, Sasuke notices that he has many Sharingan embedded on his arm, and that they close at regular intervals. He concludes that this is the key to Danzo's survival and that when all eyes close, he won't be able to avoid injury anymore. Danzo confirms this as Izanagi. Their battle continues on until Danzo is left with only one Sharingan remaining, at which point he and Sasuke clash, stabbing each other. Danzo waits for Izanagi to undo the damage, only to realize that what he thought was a remaining Sharingan was Sasuke's Genjutsu and that his injury is irreversible. Desperate to escape, Danzo takes Karin hostage, threatening to kill her if Sasuke comes near. Sasuke doesn't hesitate to stab through her with his Chidori sharp spear in order to fatally wound Danzo. Dying, Danzo staggers closely to Sasuke and Tobi and activates his reverse force symbol ceiling in order to kill them both, but they escape. Satisfied with his revenge on Danzo, Sasuke states his intentions to continue on to Konoha. Tobi advises that he rest, as he's already starting to experience blindness from overusing the Mangekyo Sharingan. He also suggests that Sasuke finish off Karin and then leaves with Danzo's body. Sasuke approaches Karin and bids her farewell as he prepares a Chidori, but he is stopped by the arrival of Sakura. She tells them that she's defected from Konoha and is prepared to help him in his goals, even if that means destroying the village. Suspicious, Sasuke tells her to kill Karin to prove her loyalty, but as she nears Karin, Karin warns her that Sasuke is attacking her from behind. His attack is blocked by Kakashi, who is furious at Sasuke for trying to kill Sakura. Kakashi explains that he's aware that Sakura came to kill Sasuke and doesn't want her to need to go through with that because of his own failings as their teacher. Kakashi tries to discourage Sasuke from the path of vengeance he's on, which Sasuke laughs at, having grown tired of people trying to change his mind, and then shouts that he will only stop if his clan is brought back to him. Realizing Sasuke is serious about his threats to kill everyone, Kakashi sends Sakura away to heal Karin. As they start fighting, Sasuke once again refuses to listen to Kakashi about giving up on his revenge and says that he wants to hear their screams and anguish for laughing at Itachi's sacrifice. 
and also states that Kakashi's Sharingan is yet another example of Konoha profiting off the Uchiha's downfall. The rage of this realization brings his Susanoo to evolve yet again, but it dissipates immediately afterwards, his eyes on the verge of blindness. Sakura then tries to kill him from behind, but she ultimately can't bring herself to do so. Sensing her, Sasuke grabs her by the throat, takes her kunai, and tries to kill her, but she's rescued by Naruto, who is intent on stopping the fighting. When asked by Naruto why he would attack Sakura, Sasuke announces his plan to destroy the village and kill all the residents to avenge Itachi, as well as admitting to murdering Danzo and his desire to do the same to them. Sasuke and Naruto clash with Chidori and Rasengan respectively, but their mental states connect. Sasuke offers Naruto two choices, kill him or get killed, but Naruto rejects both. The impact of their attacks send them flying, and Sasuke is saved by Tobi. As Tobi tries convincing Sasuke to retreat, Naruto tells Sasuke that they have become equals and they will both die the next time they fight. Although angry at Naruto for refusing to give up on him, Sasuke accepts this and vows to kill Naruto first. He finally agrees to leave with Tobi, and when they get back to the mountain's graveyard, he asks for Itachi's eyes, needing to restore his sight if he's to become stronger than Naruto and kill him. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. After transplanting Itachi's eyes into Sasuke, Tobi advises that he rest until he gets used to them. Sasuke claims that he's already more powerful because he can feel Itachi. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation. Sasuke asks Zetsu if he can take off the bandages over his eyes. Zetsu tells him to be patient. By the next day, Sasuke is tired of waiting and removes the bandages anyways, killing White Zetsu with his Susano in order to test his new powers. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax. Sasuke leaves the mountain's graveyard and wanders through two towns, but finds both strangely empty. When members of the White Zetsu army come after him, Sasuke asks what's currently happening in the world. The Zetsus avoid answering and try to capture him. He destroys most of them with the Matarasu and interrogates one with the Genjutsu. The Zetsu reveals that Tobi has initiated the Fourth Shinobi World War in order to capture Killer B and Naruto. Sasuke decapitates this last Zetsu and then goes looking for Naruto himself, intending to make good on his promise to kill him. Immediately upon entering a nearby forest, Sasuke sees Itachi going in the opposite direction. Sasuke gives chase, desperately wanting to speak to Itachi. Because he has business elsewhere, Itachi doesn't stop to talk, but he does field some of Sasuke's questions. Itachi has been brought back with the impure world reincarnation. He spared Sasuke all those years ago because Sasuke was only a child, innocent of the rest of the Uchiha's conspiracies against Konoha. He pushed Sasuke onto a path of vengeance because he regretted killing their family and wanted Sasuke to hold him accountable for his actions. The criminal activities Sasuke has been involved in since his death are not what Itachi wanted, as he wished for Sasuke to be regarded as a hero for killing him. This only angers Sasuke, who says Itachi had no right to decide his fate. As he approaches his destination, Itachi tells Sasuke to remain outside. Sasuke ignores him and follows him into the cave where the user of the impure world reincarnation is hiding. Sasuke initially believes the user is Orochimaru, but on closer inspection recognizes him as Kabuto Yakushi. Confused with the situation, Sasuke demands answers and Kabuto gives him the goal behind the war. By capturing Naruto and B and using all nine-tailed beasts, Tobi plans to resurrect the Ten Tails, become his Jinchuriki, and cast infinite Tsukiyomi on the world. Sasuke also learns that he had been promised as a compensation for Kabuto by Tobi in exchange for his cooperation. Disapproving of Tobi and Kabuto's war against the nations, Sasuke is angry for being used and manipulated all along. Because Itachi's mission is to stop Kabuto, so as to end the impure world reincarnation, Sasuke tries to end things quickly by simply killing him. Itachi blocks this attack, explaining that the impure world reincarnation will not be ended if Kabuto dies, and their only option is to trap him in a genjutsu. Aware of this, Kabuto avoids making eye contact with either of them, instead sending out his snakes to attack them. They counter with their Susano, but Sasuke notices that the snakes, as well as Kabuto himself, display abilities similar to Suigetsu and Karin. Kabuto explains that he's altered his body using Orochimaru's research on both of them, and he's done the same for Jugo, which has enabled him to enter Sage Mode. In Sage Mode, Kabuto shields his eyes so he's immune to Genjutsu. Needing to coordinate, Itachi reminds Sasuke of a mission they went on as children to hunt a boar, which they reenact with their Susano against Kabuto. Kabuto avoids them and commandeers Sasuke's sword, which he uses to attack Itachi. Itachi takes the sword back from him and uses it to cut the tip off of one of Kabuto's horns. Kabuto tries to turn Sasuke against Itachi, pointing out that Itachi has been lying to him for most of his life. Itachi admits to having made many mistakes in how he's handled Sasuke, but he promises to tell Sasuke something after they've stopped Kabuto, for which purpose he's already started using Izanami. Kabuto resumes his attack using a variety of jutsu available to him through Sage Mode and his research of others, namely the Sound 5 and even Orochimaru. Because his body is immortal, Itachi focuses on protecting Sasuke from harm while waiting for an opportunity to complete the Izanami. 
When the opportunity presents itself, Itachi allows Kabuto to take Sasuke's sword again, which Itachi once again takes back and uses to cut the tip off of the same horn. This creates a loop of sensation that is independent of vision, trapping Kabuto in a genjutsu and ending the battle. Itachi then instructs Kabuto to end the impure world reincarnation. As Kabuto does the hand seals, Sasuke tells Itachi that he can't do as Itachi wished and forgive Konoha for taking his clan and brother. Itachi apologizes for ever expecting him to, remarking that the clan's destruction might have been avoided if he had been honest with Sasuke from the start. As Itachi begins to disappear, Sasuke says he intends to destroy Konoha no matter what Itachi says, and Itachi recognizes that he cannot change Sasuke's mind. Rather than poke Sasuke's head as he always did, Itachi rests his forehead on Sasuke's and tells Sasuke that he will love him no matter what choice he makes. His soul then departs to the Pure Land. With Itachi's parting words, Sasuke starts to question the meaning of a shinobi, a village, and a clan, and doesn't know what he should do now. When he's found by Suigetsu and Jugo, they inform him that Madara Uchiha, unrelated to Tobi, escaped the release of the Impure World Reincarnation, leaving Itachi's last mission unfinished. Before deciding how he feels about this, Sasuke decides he wants to find Orochimaru. To that end, Jugo locates Anko Midarashi, who has a cursed seal. Sasuke then uses the evil releasing method on her to revive Orochimaru from her cursed seal. Although insisting he still desired revenge, Sasuke explains to Orochimaru that he wants to understand the world better so that he can, in turn, understand Itachi and decide which side of the conflict he should pick. Curious about this change that has come over Sasuke, Orochimaru leads him, Suigetsu, and Jugo to the Naka Shrine in Konoha. There, Orochimaru releases the souls of the first four Hokage from the stomach of the Shinigami, and then uses the white Zetsu spores that Sasuke was secretly planted with as sacrifices to reincarnate the Hokage. Sasuke briefly summarizes the current events of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Before he chooses which side to take in the conflict, he wants to know more about what Konoha is and also what it was intended to be, which may in turn help him understand the sacrifices Itachi made when he was alive. Each of the Hokage gives their own thoughts on Konoha and the Uchiha and what they did while they were in office to reconcile the two, at times, opposing forces. From listening to them, particularly the first Hokage, Sasuke decides that Konoha is worth protecting, as its destruction would only nullify everything that Itachi did in his life. He heads towards the battlefield and allows the Hokage to accompany. As they leave, Karin tracks them down and vents her anger at Sasuke, who immediately forgives Sasuke's earlier attempt on her life after he simply apologizes to her. The Hokage reach the battlefield before he does, but he's no less willing to help the allied shinobi forces defeat the Ten Tails. With the exception of Naruto, all of Sasuke's former comrades are confused and suspicious of his sudden arrival and demand an explanation. Sasuke replies he has decided to protect the village and he wants to be Hokage to change the current ninja system. When they retort that's impossible and remind him of his past actions, Sasuke says he doesn't care about that. Nevertheless, he joins forces with Naruto and Sakura along with the original Rookie 9. The now reunited Team 7 charges into battle, cutting through the Ten Tails army of clones. Because the clones' numbers are too great, Team 7 decides to perform their own summons so that they can focus on the Ten Tails itself. Sasuke summons Aoda. Once close enough, Sasuke and Naruto combine efforts into the Scorch release, Halo Hurricane Jet Black Arrow Style Zero, successfully damaging the Ten Tails' arm. Naruto wants to free the captured beasts, but Sasuke prefers to let them burn. Tobi, who is revealed to actually be Obito Uchiha, appears above the Ten Tails shortly afterwards and starts performing a jutsu. Sasuke and the rest of the allied shinobi forces try and stop him, but fail and Obito becomes the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Sasuke allows the Hokage to attack Obito first, taking advantage of their immortal bodies to test Obito's new abilities. When the first three Hokage are quickly defeated, Sasuke prepares to join in with the Susano, but Obito's truth-seeking balls quickly pierce through it and Obito grabs both him and Naruto. The fourth Hokage rescues them and tries fighting Obito on his own, but he suffers a defeat just like the other Hokage did. After regrouping, Sasuke and Naruto, with assistance from the 4th and 2nd Hokage, use another attack on Obito and smile when they succeed in landing a direct hit. Although this attack actually succeeds in hitting Obito, they discover that his new body is impervious to most conventional forms of attack. From testing with different jutsu, Naruto notices that Obito is vulnerable to senjutsu. He and the 4th exploit this weakness by entering Sage Mode and attacking. Seeing how strong Naruto has become, Sasuke grows jealous and angry. After he recovers, Obito recreates the God Tree in order to carry out the Eye of the Moon plan, as well as to decimate the allied shinobi forces. As some allied shinobi, including Naruto, start fearing that the battle is lost, Sasuke uses his Susano to cut through one of the tree's roots and berates Naruto for nearly giving up, which inspires Naruto to continue fighting. Sasuke then has Jugo imbue his Susano with Senjutsu Chakra, allowing him to assist Naruto in Ninetales mode in attacking Obito. 
Despite working together, Naruto and Sasuke attack separately, which Obito proves consistently able to avoid or block. Deciding to combine efforts, Sasuke coats his Susanoo around Naruto's tailed beast mode, increasing its offensive and defensive capabilities. With further assistance from the rest of the Konoha 11, they succeed in cutting Obito down and ultimately removing the tailed beasts from his body. Obito is unable to move after his defeat, and Sasuke prepares to finish him off. Kakashi stops him and offers to deal with Obito himself, sending Sasuke to help Naruto deal with Madara, who is fighting the first Hokage. By the time he arrives there, however, Madara has been restored to life and has neutralized the first. Sasuke was quick to notice that Madara had been restored into living flesh and tries to burn him with a Matarasu. When this failed because Madara absorbed the flame, Sasuke resorts to physical attacks with his sword, but Madara dodges and asks that Sasuke join forces with him, impressed by his abilities. When Sasuke refuses, Madara advises that he stay out of his way or else he will die. Madara goes on to recapture the tailed beasts, including those sealed within Killer B and Naruto. As he prepares to revive the Ten Tails and become its Jinchuriki like Obito before him, Sasuke attacks him but is caught in mid-air by Madara. Having already warned Sasuke once, Madara stabs him in the chest with his own sword. Sasuke tries to get up, determined not to let Madara win, and in turn let Itachi's memory be sullied, but he passes out as the life fades from him. On the edge of death, Sasuke is met by Hagoromo Otsotsuki, the famed Sage of Six Paths. Hagoromo warns Sasuke about the infinite Tsukiyomi that Madara is planning to use. Because Sasuke is the reincarnation of Indra, Hagoroma's oldest son, Hagoroma can give him half of his power that, in combination with the heavy gifts of Naruto, the reincarnation of Hagoroma's other son, Asura, will enable them to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi. Sasuke agrees and receives the Six Paths Yin power. He regains consciousness and finds that the damage to his body has been healed by Kabuto, who escaped the Izanami and now feels indebted to Itachi. Sasuke's left eye, meanwhile, has become a Rinnegan. Sasuke releases Tobirama from Madara's restraints and has him teleport to Naruto's location. Arriving as Naruto is facing Madara, Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to see Madara's invisible doppelganger. When Madara tries to steal Sasuke's left eye, Sasuke switched places with his sword, causing Madara to impale himself. While Madara recovers from the injury, Naruto and Sasuke attack from opposing sides in an effort to activate the seal given to them by Hagoromo. Madara escapes at the last moment and goes after Kakashi, taking his Sharingan. Sasuke catches up to Madara and bisects him, but he uses Kamui on his upper half to swap dimensions. Sasuke is later surprised to see Sakura appear after Obito used Kamui to save her from Madara. Regrouping with Team 7 and unsure when he'll return, Sasuke warns the others to be on guard. While they wait, Kakashi remembers when his team first introduced themselves years ago and wonders what Sasuke's intents are now that Itachi's gone. When asked this, Sasuke doesn't reply and Kakashi doesn't push it because they have more things to worry about. Sensing Madara coming, Kakashi reminds him of Team 7's first lesson, the importance of teamwork. Madara eventually returns with his other Rinnegan. Sakura launches the first attack and Sasuke follows close behind her. When she's stabbed by Madara's rod, Sasuke uses Chidori's sharp spear to cut off the rod and allow Naruto to get her away. Sasuke sees four more Madaras and has Naruto fight them while White Madara moves into position to use the infinite Tsukiyomi. Madara rains numerous Chibaku Tensei down on Team 7. Sasuke cuts through several with his complete body, Susano, but isn't able to reach Madara in time to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi from being cast. Kaguya Otsotsuki strikes. Sasuke hurries back to Naruto and uses his Susano to shield him, Sakura, and Kakashi from the infinite Tsukiyomi's effects. Naruto tries to go and check on the others, but Sasuke tells him to be patient. Sakura asks what's happening, but Sasuke tells her and then Kakashi they don't need to know because there's nothing they can do and assumes leadership of Team 7 because he believes that only he can stop the infinite Tsukiyomi with his Rinnegan. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world of trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts and that only Team 7 as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries, which Sasuke retorts that Madara is disillusioned. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, and his body is converted into Kage Otsutsuki, which leaves Team 7 shocked. Sasuke and Naruto recognize Kaguya from their meeting Hagoromo as the origin of Chakra. Although she now has access to the chakra of those trapped within the infinite Tsukiyomi, she wants Team 7's too, specifically Naruto's and Sasuke's. She transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Sasuke summons Garuda to save himself and Naruto, ignoring Kakashi, Sakura, and an unconscious Obito Uchiha. Sasuke reminds Naruto that only they can stop Kaguya, and therefore what happens to the others doesn't matter. Naruto understands, but he can't actually help but save them anyway, reminding Sasuke of when he saved him in the Land of Waves. Naruto engages Kaguya while Sasuke attacks from above with his Susanoo, 
Kaguya repels him and he nearly falls into the lava. He drops his sword and loses it to that fate, but he's able to teleport to safety with Emeno Tejikata. When they try to come up with a way to place Hagoromo's seal on her, Kaguya sneaks up behind Naruto and Sasuke, paralyzes them with Black Zetsu, and starts absorbing their chakra. Black Zetsu reveals its role in manipulating the Uchiha clan as part of its plan of resurrecting Kaguya, which angers Sasuke. Naruto breaks them free and distracts her with his sexy reverse harem technique, which nearly allows them to initiate the seal. She shifts dimensions before they connect, encasing them in ice. Sasuke shatters the ice with the blaze release Kagetsuchi, only for Kaguya to then grab him and send him off by himself to a dimension of sand dunes. Sasuke wanders the dunes, finding the spot where Naruto's chakra signature is strongest. There, he is shortly afterwards found by Obito and Sakura, who with considerable effort are able to briefly open a portal between dimensions. Sasuke uses Ame no Tejikara to teleport to Sakura's side by switching places with her flak jacket, catches Sakura as she's about to collapse from exhaustion, thanks her and Obito, and is then reunited with Naruto. Frustrated that her attempt to separate them failed, Kaguya shifts to a dimension with powerful gravity immobilizing them while she kills them with her all-killing ash bones. Kakashi shields Sasuke from her attack, while Obito shields Naruto while using Kamui to warp the bone that was meant to hit and kill Kakashi. Only Obito dies. Sasuke forces himself up and nearly hits Kaguya with a Chidori, forcing her to shift dimensions to somewhere with normal gravity. As Naruto stays with a dying Obito, Sasuke goes after Kaguya on his own. Sasuke uses Susano to fight her by himself until Naruto, done grieving for Obito, comes to join him. Naruto's super tailed beast Rasen Shuriken destabilizes the tailed beast's chakra within her, prompting her to create an expansive truth seeking ball to destroy them all. With the end near, Team 7 mobilizes for its final assault. Kakashi, using chakra received from Obito, pierces through her. Naruto, with additional help from Kakashi, uses shadow clones to exhaust her countermeasures. Sasuke teleports closer to her in order to initiate the seal and prepares his left eye to fire Amaterasu in the event that she tried to teleport to the ice world again. Sakura punches her when she tries to escape. When both Naruto and Sasuke make contact with her, the tailed beasts are removed from Kaguya's body and she, as well as Black Zetsu, is entombed within the six paths Chibaku Tensei. Having been waiting for this, Hagoromo then summons them all back to the real world with the help of the dead Kage and congratulates them for their victory. Madara has also been returned, so Sasuke prepares to kill him, but Hagoromo stops him, explaining that Madara is dying anyway. After Madara shares his dying words with the first Okage, Hagoromo returns the Kage's souls to the Pure Land. Hagoromo also informs Naruto and Sasuke that they can release the world from the infinite Tsukiyomi by simply joining hands. However, Sasuke has other things he'd like to do first. He starts by placing the tailed beasts under his control with a genjutsu, traps them with Chibaku Tensei, and promises to release the infinite Tsukiyomi only after he's killed the current Kage. Sasuke explains that the tailed beasts have too often been a source of conflict and that the Kage have consistently failed to keep the peace. The world would be better off without any of them. Because Naruto is the only one who can challenge him at this point, Sasuke states his intention to kill him. Sakura dissuades him by telling him that she still loves him and pleading for him to return home if he ever loved her. However, Sasuke uses his Sharingan Genjutsu to make Sakura fall asleep. Condemned by Kakashi for this, Sasuke tells Kakashi that there is no reason for him and Sakura to love each other, and her love is a remnant of a failed past. Sasuke then travels to the Valley of the End, the same place where he and Naruto first fought, and waits for Naruto to come to him. When Naruto arrives, he tells Sasuke it's impossible to do everything alone like he plans to, pointing to the missteps Itachi made and their own successful teamwork against Kaguya. Sasuke replies that he only wants to remake a better world, one where he can, like Itachi before, be solely responsible for the difficult decisions that must be made so nobody else needs to. This is what he believes a true Hokage to be. To do this, Sasuke says he intends to erase the past by severing all his bonds and killing Naruto. Enraged, Naruto insists that he will be Hokage, not Sasuke, because Sasuke is still going against what Itachi wanted for him, and they start fighting. After a brief exchange of blows reminiscent of their fight years ago, Naruto and Sasuke start trading punches with their tailed beast mode in Susano. Sasuke chastises Naruto for not attacking with an intent to kill, but Naruto, like last time, is unwilling to do that, not wishing for either of them to go without the other. Sasuke uses his Susano to perform Chidori, and Naruto uses tailed beast mode to make a tailed beast ball, which they clash with. The collision of the two attacks creates a large explosion, doing noticeable but not debilitating damage to their respective avatars. As they mentally connect, Naruto says there's no guarantee his plan will work, and Sasuke replies that it doesn't matter, because thanks to his six paths power, he has options for immortality to allow him to watch over the world for eternity. 
Each, therefore, powers up the avatars, Sasuke by channeling the captured tailed beasts into a Susano, and Naruto by merging his avatar with the avatars of two shadow clones. The two meet attacks once again, this time creating a giant explosion that strips away their avatars and leaves them with too little chakra to use it practically. They instead resort to taijutsu, kicking and punching each other into the night. As they near exhaustion, Naruto musters what little chakra he can, which Sasuke immediately absorbs. However, as the chakra was not molded to fit Sasuke's chakra signature, he wasn't able to utilize it. Having expected this, Naruto delivers a solid punch, finally irritating Sasuke over the endless repetition of their fight. Sasuke uses Chidori and Naruto, taking the last remaining chakra that Ninetales can give him, counters with the Rasengan. With Naruto waking up earlier to find that much of the Valley of the End had been destroyed, that they each had lost an arm, and that neither could move. Sasuke wakes up afterwards and asks Naruto why he continues to try to stop him, and never gives up on him. Naruto's usual response that they're friends doesn't convince Sasuke since it obviously goes beyond that. So Naruto elaborates that he experiences pain whenever Sasuke is going through a tough time. Sasuke is shocked, knowing full well that Naruto has experienced various misfortunes in his life, smiled through all of them, yet would suffer without him. Sasuke thinks about their childhood of being orphans, and how Sasuke came to see Naruto as a friend because they shared the same pain. Both went to sleep again because of exhaustion. Sasuke dreams of his brother and recaps all the obstacles Naruto went through to get stronger. Sasuke has an epiphany. After years of trying to push the bonds with his friends away, Sasuke realizes his desire to return to them and feels guilty for having rejected them for his selfish goals. When they wake up the next day, Sasuke is surprised that they're still alive and laughs when Naruto is angry and still wants to beat him as he's too weak to fight him in this condition. Sasuke finally admits defeat as he's come to accept that Naruto is just as vital to him as he is to Naruto. He asks Naruto to give his Rinnegan to Kakashi in order to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, but he wants to end his own life in order to atone for his sins. But Naruto refuses and vows to be there for his friend no matter what, which moves Sasuke to tears. Sakura and Kakashi arrive, and Sakura begins healing them. Guilt-ridden for the pain he put Sakura through, Sasuke tries to speak to her, but she tells him not to because she needs to concentrate on healing them. Sasuke then apologizes to Sakura for everything he's done, which she tearfully accepts, and Sasuke smiles at her. All the while, as Kakashi looks on with joy as Team 7 reunites for good. Sasuke and Naruto do a rat hand seal to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi and free everyone and the tailed beasts. As they do so, Sasuke talks about how he and Naruto have come to understand each other's feelings and pain, and he finally understands why Naruto never gave up on him. In the anime, following the war, Sasuke is kept in the custody of the Konoha Torture and Interrogation Force until his fate is decided. Blank period. Several months later, Sasuke is pardoned for his crimes based on his service in helping undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, along with the good word of Naruto and Kakashi's influence as a world hero and the new Hokage, respectively. While offered to be given a fully maneuverable prosthetic arm made of Hashirama Senju's cells to replace his lost one, Sasuke declined the offer as it would take months. Instead, he decided to immediately leave Konoha to wander the world, curious how different it will appear to him now that his outlook has changed. Sakura offers to come with him, but he declines, explaining that his journey is also one of atonement and that she has no part in that. He then pokes her forehead, promises to her that he will see her when he returns, and thanks her. As he leaves the village, he's met by Naruto, who returns to him his forehead protector. Sasuke accepts the headband and credits Naruto for teaching him the true meaning of a shinobi. While on his travels, Sasuke would often help the Great Five Nations wherever something tried to disrupt the peace. Although he often did this without being seen, he often left subtle hints that he was responsible. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the war, Sasuke crosses paths with Hiyashi Hyuga, who falls unconscious in front of him. He returns Hiyashi to Konoha, and while there, discovers a series of meteorites from the moon bombarding the village. When one particularly large meteor makes it through the village's defenses, Sasuke quickly destroys it. Sasuke vanishes afterwards, lingering only long enough to note to Kakashi that Sasuke himself is the only one who can protect the village when Naruto is away. In the end credits, in correspondence to Naruto and Hinata's wedding, Sasuke continues his journey through the desert. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love, riding upon a spring breeze. Rumors start to spread that someone fitting Sasuke's description is conspiring to destroy Konoha. Konoha sends repeated messages to Sasuke to try and confirm or deny the rumors, but he doesn't respond to any. Naruto's hypothesis that he finds the rumors too ludicrous to give them any attention. However, when one of the messages mentions Sakura has been captured, he immediately returns to the village. Sakura is able to deal with most of her captors herself, but Sasuke finishes off the few remaining. He then leaves without even saying hello to his friends. At the end of the novel, it's hinted that Sasuke returns to the village to be with Sakura when he states, I'm home, Sakura. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. 
on Naruto and Hinata Hyuga's wedding day, Sasuke sends a congratulation message by Hawk to their wedding reception, which Sakura collects. Akatsuki Hiden, Evil Flowers in Full Bloom During his journey, Sasuke meets two boys that tell him stories about Akatsuki. After he leaves them, he meets another boy who confuses him for Itachi, who the boy had met many years earlier. He tells Sasuke that Itachi was a very good person, which Sasuke agrees with before departing once more. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise As Sasuke starts investigating Kaguya Otsutsuki during his journey of redemption, he is forced to examine his former role as an Avenger and how his past will influence his future. During his traveling, he receives a message from Kakashi regarding the disappearances of Konoha, Kumo, and Kiri Shinobi, and Sasuke agrees to investigate. On his way to the Land of Lightning, Sasuke arrives at a bamboo village in the Land of Hot Water, and learns from the villagers of a rogue ninja group called the Dark Thunder Group whose leader, Karyu, admires Sasuke yet wants to kill him in order to surpass him. At the village, he meets two wandering shinobi, Chino and Nawaki. Sasuke finds the group attacking the village and defeats them, saving all the villagers from harm. Karyu admits he has admired Sasuke since the latter attacked the Kage summit, much to Sasuke's dismay that Karyu is tarnishing his name. Before he can turn Karyu over to Konoha, Karyu is killed by the father of one of his victims. When the Genjutsu fails to dispel after Karyu's death, Sasuke suspects the real culprit is on the loose. Sasuke later meets with Orochimaru and his former team Taka comrades to investigate the matter further. Sasuke maintains contact with Sai when Konoha is attacked and discovers the origins of the Dark Thunder group. He finds most of the missing Kiri and Kumo Shinobi on an isolated island and through luck discovers that Chino and Nawaki are in fact responsible for the disappearances. As they flee, Sasuke delivers the shinobi to their villages and thanks to advice from the Raikage, goes to Yukakure, where he finds and battles Chino. She reveals that she is seeking revenge due to that she is from a clan that was eliminated due to her village fearing its Ketsuryugan and she holds the Uchiha clan partially responsible. Because Sasuke understands her pain and hatred, he defeats them without seriously injuring them and convinces them to accept defeat. Sasuke drops them off at the village's prison, but he leaves a good word for them to be forgiven. After resuming his journey, Sasuke receives a letter from Naruto that mentions Sakura comparing his efforts to protect the village to that of his childhood dream of joining the Konoha military police force. Sasuke decides his home is with Sakura and makes the decision to return to Konoha, where he's greeted by Sakura. Welcome back, Sasuke, and he replies, I'm home, Sakura. New Era Two years after saving Konoha from a meteorite, Sasuke traveled alongside his now pregnant wife Sakura, who refused to leave his side. On the journey, Karin helped deliver the child, Sarada Uchiha, at one of Orochimaru's hideouts. Afterwards, Sasuke raised his daughter for some time, but he left Konoha early in her childhood, leaving Sarada with few memories of him. Years later, at the time Naruto became Hokage, Sasuke was investigating Kaguya within her sand dimension. During his investigation, Sasuke comes to suspect that she created the White Zetsu army in order to face some greater threat. He returns to Konoha, where he tells his hypothesis to his wife and the five Kage at the summit being held. Not wishing to cause a panic, the Kage agree to keep this to themselves for the time being. Wanting to safeguard the future of his daughter and the new generation, Sasuke continues his wanderings as he tries to find more information, using his Rinnegan to inspect other dimensions. Academy Entrance Arc In the anime, after a remnant of Root failed to destroy the village, Naruto brought the research of Gozu Tenno to Sasuke. Realizing the true nature behind it, Sasuke was amazed at how close Danzo came to replicating Kaguya's technique. After noting that it would help in his investigation, Naruto suggested that Sasuke return to the village for a while. Sasuke, however, simply asked Naruto to apologize to Sakura for his continued absence before leaving. Sarada Uchiha Arc Searching through Kaguya's dimensions, Sasuke returns to the earth through his portal. Upon arriving in a forest, both of his dojutsu weaken from overuse. Immediately after, Sasuke is attacked by a hooded figure. Fending him off, Sasuke discovers the assailant to be a young boy with a Sharingan whose clothes bear the Uchiha crest. As he questions who the boy is, the child retreats, which prompts Sasuke to send a message by Hawk to Naruto to inform him of the encounter and to ask for a meeting with him at Ridge Tower. After waiting for a while, he's found by Sarada, who left Konoha to find her father. Seeing her with the Sharingan and having the Uchiha crest on her back, Sasuke suspects she's connected to the boy and almost attacks her until she calls out to him as dad, and he realizes she is his own daughter. When Naruto arrives shortly afterwards, Sasuke reprimands him for bringing children like Sarada and Chocho Akimichi along. Sarada defends Naruto, insisting that she came against his wishes because she wanted to meet Sasuke, wanted to know where he'd been all these years, wanted to know if Sakura was her real mother, and who Karin in the photo with Team Taka is. He ignores her questions and says his actions have nothing to do with her, causing her to storm out, crying. 
When Sasuke senses Naruto and Sarada being attacked by Shin Uchiha, the father of the boy from before, Sasuke rushes out to lend assistance. He swats away Shin's projectiles, and when Shin takes his sword, he blasts him with a great fireball and takes the sword back. However, this brief contact allows Shin to control the sword remotely with his Mangekyo Sharingan, which he uses when he has an opening to stab Naruto. Shin turns his attention to Sarada and Sasuke and rushes to protect Sarada from Shin's follow-up attack and has all the blades land at him. Sakura then appears and incapacitates Shin with a punch. Sakura apologizes to Sasuke for not making things clear to Sarada about his mission, but Sasuke insists he's at fault before one of Shin's creatures teleports him and Sakura away. Unable to locate their whereabouts, Sasuke believes Orochimaru knows where Shin is, and learning Shin is targeting Sarada, he decides to take her with him to ensure her safety. When they arrive, Sasuke promises retaliation against Orochimaru if he in any way is involved in the attack on his daughter, or the kidnapping of his wife. Orochimaru denies responsibility, confessing that Shin is an old experiment he has long before lost control of, and says that Shin's sons are actually his genetic clones. To help them deal with Shin, Orochimaru offers some suggestions about where they might find him. When Orochimaru suggests Sakura is already dead, Sasuke denies this as a possibility due to her not being a weak woman, stating that she likely will have already finished Shin off by the time they find her. When his Rinnegan recharges from his earlier dimensional travels, Sasuke manifests his Susano and transports Naruto, Sarada, and Chocho to Shin's hideout. As Sasuke guessed, Sakura is already in the middle of combat when they arrive, and Sasuke uses his Susano to punch the largest clone as he grabs Sakura. He pulls all the scalpels out of her arm and burns them with a Matarasu before asking if she can heal herself now. Sasuke and the others proceed to fight Shin, who is stabbed by the clones who then turn on Sasuke and Naruto. When the spying creature tries to teleport Shin once again, Sasuke calls out to Sarada to warn her about that, and then she kills the creature before activating her Sharingan and using her chakra-enhanced strength to defeat some of the clones, making Sasuke smirk with pride. When the battle's over, Sasuke comments how soft Naruto is for offering to do no harm to the clones if they surrender, but agrees to drop them off at the Konoha Orphanage. When Sarada learns that Sakura really is her biological mother, she asks her father if he feels truly connected to Sakura. He says yes, because Sarada, as their daughter, is proof of their bond, moving Sarada to tears. Sasuke spends some time with Sarada and Sakura in Konoha, even posing for their first family photo. After some time, Sasuke is about to leave again and hugs his daughter as she sadly asks him when he will come back. Sasuke tells Sarada not to make such a face and pokes her on the forehead, promising to come home soon, which makes her very happy and prompts her to smile at Sakura. Sakura then gives him a bagged lunch and hopes for a kiss in return, but he leaves without further comment, only smirking in amusement as he walks away. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day as Sasuke finished business with a village near Konohagakure, he decided to return home to visit his family. There he learned from Boruto of the new village holiday, Parent and Child Day. Told where Sarada was, Sasuke decided to spend the day with his daughter. While Sarada was overjoyed at the idea, the normally poised man struggled to connect with his daughter, simply trying to get inspiration wherever he could, instead simply embarrassing Sarada. Finally having enough, Sarada stormed off. Sasuke was then approached by Sakura. He discussed with her his problem in connecting with Sarada. Sakura noticed that, having spent much of Sarada's life away and only hearing stories about Sasuke and his various exploits, Sarada probably became disillusioned at who Sasuke was as a person and his attempts at being a doting father seemed lame. Ultimately, Sakura suggested that he should approach Sarada more like Sasuke's relationship was with his father and brother back in the day, just enjoying the time they have together and talk about their goals. Later, while working on her shuriken skills, Sasuke approached her again, applauding her on her goal of becoming Hokage. He insisted that she would make a better Hokage than he ever could and would support her through her struggles, much to her delight. As the day ended, she and Sasuke returned home where the entire Uchiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. Versus Momoshiki Arc As Sasuke continued his investigation, he found the remains of a stronger crop of white Zetsu in the mountain's graveyard, which he proceeded to destroy with a Matarasu. Upon arriving at Kaguya's ice dimension, Sasuke locates a scroll in Kaguya's palace. There, he's attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Yotsotsuki. While capable of fighting the former on equal terms, he realizes he can't take them both on at once. By using his Rinnegan's abilities, he is ultimately able to escape. Unable to read the scroll with his Rinnegan, Sasuke takes it back to Konoha to have it deciphered. He stops at Naruto's house to deliver it to him, but is attacked by Naruto's son, Boruto Uzumaki, who mistook Sasuke for his father. Sasuke easily blocks the attack and asks for Naruto's whereabouts. Hinata, Naruto's wife, tells him Naruto is still at the Hokage's office. On finding Naruto, Sasuke remarks that Boruto is quite similar to him. Naruto disagrees, thinking he has more in common with Sasuke, but retracts and says Boruto isn't like him either. 
Naruto thinks they are behind the new generation, which Sasuke disagrees with because the nature of Shinobi never changes, and they make a bet over this. As Sasuke leaves to go home to his family, Boruto launches a sneak attack. Sasuke once again avoids it effortlessly and pushes Boruto over. Impressed, Boruto asks Sasuke to train him, having heard that Sasuke is Naruto's only equal and thus best qualified to help him become stronger than his father. Sasuke tells Boruto to ask him again after he's learned to use the Rasengan. Boruto does just that and demonstrates it after he becomes able to form it. On seeing it, Sasuke remarks that Boruto's Rasengan is quite small, which Boruto wrongly believes is to mean he's been rejected, causing him to subsequently run off. Sarada then reveals herself to her father and tries to convince him that he's being too hard on Boruto, and he usually didn't apply that kind of dedication to anything. Sasuke tells his daughter that Boruto jumped to the wrong conclusion and that he was going to agree to make him his student. In truth, Sasuke was quite satisfied, further impressed by the lightning nature Boruto applies to his Rasengan. The next day, Boruto demonstrates a normal sized Rasengan, which Sasuke recognizes to be a result of using the Kote. Boruto tries to cover this up by boasting about his exceptional skill being the reason for the remarkable progress of his Rasengan. Sasuke cryptically references the fact that Boruto was willing to cheat to attain his goals by saying Boruto was quite different from Naruto and hoped it wasn't the case. Nonetheless, he agrees to train Boruto since he had already met his requirement. He later spoke to Boruto's Jonin sensei, Konohamaru Sarutobi, who agreed to let Sasuke take over his actual training. After his day training with Sasuke, the two sit by a fire and talk. Boruto starts asking about his father's weaknesses. Sasuke explains that Naruto has many weaknesses, but nonetheless managed to pull himself up and become Hokage. Believing Boruto's approach to be incorrect, Sasuke explained that Naruto is better understood by the hardships he overcame in his life than the flaws that he may have. This doesn't satisfy Boruto, so he throws himself into training for the upcoming Chunin exams, Shuriken Jutsu figuring prominently in Sasuke's lessons. While training, Boruto struggles with bending his throws, complaining that Shuriken Jutsu is Sarada's specialty because she is Sasuke's daughter. Sasuke retorts this assertion by applying the same reasoning to Boruto regarding the Shadow Clone technique, of which Boruto can only create two as opposed to his father who can create thousands. Sasuke keeps tabs on how deciphering the scroll is going, but it isn't until the day of the Chunin exam's finals that it is finally finished. Reading what it says, Sasuke finds his suspicions about the threat Kaguya was preparing for confirmed and rushes to inform Naruto. When he arrives at the stadium where the finals are being held, Kinshiki and Momoshiki are already attacking. Sasuke rescues Sarada from falling debris, but is confronted by Kinshiki when he tries to get her to safety. Shikamaru Nara briefly restrains Kinshiki and Momoshiki, allowing Sasuke to tell Naruto that the scroll says that Kinshiki and Momoshiki harvest planet's chakra in order to prolong their lives, and that Kaguya was building a white Zetsu army to prepare for their inevitable invasion. As Momoshiki starts attacking, Naruto forms his tailed beast mode around Boruto and Sarada in order to protect them. Sasuke layers his Susanoo over this to provide additional protection. The shield is insufficient against Momoshiki, so Naruto instructs Sasuke to focus on protecting the children while he fights Momoshiki alone. Sasuke does so, staying with Boruto and Sarada, and as a result, preventing them from stopping Naruto's capture. With his father gone, Boruto feels guilty about how he treated Naruto and reprimanded himself for being so uncool. Overhearing this, Sasuke affirmed Boruto's words and noted that if it weren't for his mother and sister, he would be in the same position Naruto would be in the past. After Boruto asks Sasuke how his father overcame his hardships, Sasuke suggests Boruto ask Naruto in person and also telling him Naruto is stronger than him up until now, and to that end invites Boruto to join him in rescuing him. When Boruto asks why he'd been invited, and why Sasuke agreed to train him in the first place, Sasuke explains that Boruto is an exceptionally gifted shinobi and has the potential to surpass Naruto because he hates to lose. The five Kage then reveal themselves and offer their assistance to rescue Naruto, revealing that they are on friendly terms with Sasuke. Before they leave, however, Sasuke lends his forehead protector to Boruto, who had his confiscated by Naruto for cheating in the exams. Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to open a portal to Momoshiki's planet. Before they leave, Hinata tries to stop Boruto from leaving, who then puts on Sasuke's headband and affirms confidently that he's going to go save his father, reminding Hinata of Naruto when he was young. Sasuke approves of this demeanor and notes that Boruto is finally starting to carry himself like a true shinobi. When they arrive on Momoshiki's planet, which has long since had its chakra harvested, the group frees Naruto from Momoshiki and Kinshiki, who had him bound to a tree resembling the god tree, and immediately engage them in battle. Sasuke assists the 6th Mizukage and 4th Suchikage with restraining Kinshiki, and then joins Naruto, the 5th Kazukage, and the 5th Raikage against Momoshiki. He warns them not to use ninjutsu since Momoshiki can absorb them. Kinshiki breaks free and drives them back, then allows Momoshiki to absorb him to become stronger. Naruto and Sasuke start fighting Momoshiki with Taijutsu, during the course of which Sasuke is badly burned. 
Naruto catches him and heals his wounds with the Ninetales Chakra, allowing them to continue their tailed beast mode and Susano to strike him down. With Momoshiki down, the uninvited Katasuke tries to finish him off. This unwittingly revives Momoshiki, giving him a chance to paralyze Naruto and the Kage with Shadow Paralysis Jutsu while Sasuke elsewhere protects Boruto. Sasuke suggests that Boruto attack Momoshiki with his Rasengan, depending on its lightning nature to catch him off guard. This works and the Kage are freed, but an earlier injury prevents Naruto from fighting. He adds his chakra to Boruto's Rasengan, which Sasuke then helps him find an opening to use to destroy Momoshiki with. After the battle, Sasuke tells Naruto he won their bet when they return to Konoha, and Sasuke posed for a photograph with Naruto, Boruto, and the other Kage. However, in the anime, before they departed from the other dimension, Sasuke managed to catch a glimpse of Boruto's conversation with Momoshiki's fading spirit thanks to his Rinnegan, as well as notice that some technique had been used to stop the flow of time so the conversation passed unseen for everyone else. After everything returns to normal, apart from concern about the third Otsutsuki foe who escaped, Sasuke meets with Boruto again. He reveals that he knows about his mark from Momoshiki, insisting that Boruto let him know if anything had happened from him. He also let Boruto keep his old forehead protector as a sign of being Sasuke's official pupil. Sasuke decided to take advantage of his research being analyzed to spend a few days with his family. Later, Sasuke and Sakura, both smiling, watched Sarada and her teammates leave for a mission. Soon afterwards, Sasuke returned to his investigation of the Otsutsuki. In the anime, Sasuke came back to the village to give Naruto information and told him not to promote Sarada to Chunin due to refusal to obey direct orders. One Tail Escort Arc in the anime, having notified Tsunagakure that the Otsutsuki were searching for Shukaku, Sasuke, alongside Gara, Kankuro, and a Tsuna Genin team assembled at the Tailed Beast's location. Sasuke sent a messenger hawk to inform Konoha of the location and that he might be on Urashiki Otsutsuki's tail. There, Sasuke and Gara fought Urashiki and his puppets. As the two sides battled evenly, Boruto suddenly appeared, prompting Sasuke to protect his student, leading him to become distracted and Urashiki taking some of his chakra. As Sasuke leapt towards his opponent, Urashiki teleported him to another dimension. He ultimately arrived in Kaguya's ice dimension. While unharmed, his battle exhausted him too much. Sasuke was forced to spend time to recover his chakra to return to Sunagakure, as his Rinnegan was too weak to maintain a portal. Once recovering enough chakra, he detected Urashiki's repeated dimension hopping and teleported in time to stop the foe from striking down Boruko and Shinki. Sasuke's return prompted Urashiki to retreat. Sasuke brought the Genin to Konohakakure for treatment and reported the events to Naruto. There, it was decided that Shukaku would remain in Naruto's protection until better precautions were made. Time Slip Arc In the anime, as Sasuke began enjoying some downtime in the village, he was approached by Boruto. The pupil asked Sasuke about the nature of Jiraiya's worth as a ninja and his relationship with Naruto. Sasuke admitted that Jiraiya was a remarkable man, whose influence and guidance strongly shaped Naruto into the remarkable man he is today, even noting that they ultimately shared a father-son relationship. When Boruto asked if Sasuke could get him an Icha Icha book to learn more about the man, Sasuke bluntly refused, knowing that Boruto was too young for such an adult book. Later, Sasuke learned from Naruto and Shikamaru that Urashiki was on the move again, being even more indiscriminate in his stealing of chakra. Later, when Boruto was annoyed that he was the only genin that was put off of the mission to hunt Urashiki due to the Otsutsuki's previous vendetta against him, Sasuke however offered him an alternate plan of making Boruto a two-man team with him while staying within the village, which Naruto agreed to. Later that night, Urashiki was discovered and most of the Konoha Nin in the village went after him. Sasuke, however, doubted that things were working so smoothly, especially after learning that Genjutsu specialist Mirai Sarutobi went missing knowing of Urashiki's ability to replicate people's techniques from their chakra. Boruto doubted Urashiki would go after his father as he was still well guarded. He then realized Urashiki's true motive was an artifact found by the Konohagakure archaeological research team. His hunch is proven true when he and Sasuke engage in combat with Urashiki. The artifact turned out to be a turtle belonging to the Otsutsuki named Karasuki that required enough chakra to operate. Urashiki activates it while Boruto and Sasuke followed him. They entered a void where they battled, knocking Urashiki off a ledge too soon for him. When Karasuki finished its operation, Boruto and Sasuke found themselves back in Konohagakure, but to their shock, they realized that they had been sent to the past. Realizing Urashiki's plan was to acquire Kurama's chakra from Naruto as a child, Sasuke asked Karasuki about the enemy. The turtle explained that due to Sasuke's interference, Urashiki would not arrive in this time period for a few days. It also warned Sasuke and Boruto to avoid as much interaction with the past as possible or risk severe changes to the timeline as they know it. Taking this to heart, Sasuke and Boruto disguised themselves and stressed their situation to Boruto as he discovered how different the village was. 
Soon afterwards, Boruto and Sasuke bumped into Naruto and Jiraiya, who were in trouble for peeping on the women's hot spring. Jiraiya handed Boruto his binoculars, trying to frame him for his peeping, but the issue was quickly resolved as Tsunade arrived and scolded both Naruto and Jiraiya for their actions. Tsunade asked about Boruto and Sasuke's arrival, and Sasuke claimed they were traveling performers who utilized ninjutsu during their performances. Still somewhat suspicious, Tsunade ordered Naruto and Jiraiya to guard Boruto and Sasuke, proclaiming that a recently defected Genin, as well as Konoha still recovering from an assault during the Chunin exams, they needed to remain on their guard at all times, and couldn't afford to let strangers walk into their village. However, as soon as Tsunade leaves, Jiraiya left Naruto to take care of Boruto and Sasuke, much to Naruto's annoyance. As they walk around the village, they come across Sakura, and while Naruto approaches her, Sasuke leaves the area, warning Boruto that since he and Sakura were close, she could recognize him and drastically alter the future, and informed Boruto to remain by Naruto's side at all times before leaving. Days later, Sasuke bumped into Sakura again, dropping an old smeared letter from Sarada in the process. Eventually, Boruto confronted Sasuke about his past, having deduced the truth about his past self's absence. Still ashamed of his past mistakes, Sasuke simply admitted that at the time he saw no other way to accomplish his goal of revenge. When Boruto suggested finding his younger self to reason with him, Sasuke bluntly said they can't make such a risk. The following day, Urashiki finally appeared, prompting Sasuke and Boruto to guard the future Hokage. Urashiki acted quickly and struck Naruto with his hook, shocked to see that it failed to gain any chakra. Deciding the best course was to capture Naruto, Urashiki subdued Naruto and trapped Boruto and Sasuke, along with Jiraiya who happened along inside a stone prison. Sasuke explained to Jiraiya that he and Boruto were actually ninja from a distant village with a mission to stop Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, and that Urashiki had ties to Akatsuki. While seeing that they were still hiding some truth, Jiraiya decided to work with the duo, breaking them free by summoning a giant toad. Soon, Sasuke locked onto Naruto's location from detecting the tailed beast's chakra beginning to leak out. Along the way, having realized that the 8 trigram sealing style was stopping Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, Jiraiya placed powerful seals on Boruto and Sasuke to protect them as well. Upon finding Naruto, Urashiki's actions forced the boy into his version 1 state. While Sasuke engaged Urashiki, Jiraiya and Boruto went to subdue the rampaging Naruto. Boruto attempted to reason with his father, believing that talking would restore his sanity, but quickly became horrified as his efforts failed and Naruto ended up nearly killing him before Jiraiya subdued Naruto. After Urashiki retreats, Jiraiya tends to Boruto's wounds and talks about Naruto's lonely childhood and hatred suffered by the villagers, and suggests that Boruto train with him alongside Naruto, knowing the foe would return and believe that the two children's compatible nature, they would work and learn well together. The following day, Sasuke watched from afar as Jiraiya began instructing Naruto and Boruto on how to synchronize their chakra to create a new cooperation ninjutsu. As the day continued and the two children struggled to complete the task, Boruto, still reeling from being attacked by Naruto's berserker attack while influenced by Kurama's chakra, decided to distance himself from the increasingly angry Naruto. Jiraiya then approached Sasuke, asking him to deliver Naruto some food while he dealt with something. Sasuke reluctantly agreed. Upon confronting his best friend's past self, Sasuke was amazed to learn how even back then how committed Naruto was to save Sasuke from his dark path. Ashamed to see how much pain he put Naruto through, Sasuke told Naruto about how a friend struggled for years to help him after he lost his way, but never gave up until finally succeeding. After renewing Naruto's conviction, Sasuke left. He was then approached by Jiraiya again, shocking Sasuke by deducing who he really was. As Jiraiya dryly laughed off his accusation, he remained firm on his suspicion that he was connected to the rogue Genin. Jiraiya could tell that Sasuke and Boruto's desire to protect Naruto was genuine and that they had their reason for keeping secrets. He made a deal with Sasuke not to delve deeper into their true identities, provided that Sasuke reveal all he knows about Urashiki. Sasuke then explained all he knew about the alien's abilities. After hearing all this, Jiraiya deemed that the best course of action would be to seal away Urashiki. Before they could formulate a proper plan, Sasuke detected Urashiki's return, speeding off with Jiraiya to help Boruto and Naruto. With Sasuke still drained from Urashiki's theft of his chakra, Sasuke struggled to keep up with the foe, even with the Sanin's aid. As Urashiki repeatedly evaded his foe's attacks, he smugly told them that he can see the future. Finding Urashiki's newest technique too dangerous, Sasuke tackled Urashiki and himself into the river to give his allies a chance to escape. While Urashiki escaped from the river unharmed and furious at Sasuke's constant interference, an unconscious Sasuke was fished out of the river by Sakura, who hid him and began treating him with a medical ninjutsu. Soon, Sasuke awoke, accidentally thanking Sakura by her given name. While not fully recovered, Sasuke decided to go help his friends. 
Sakura began asking him questions, but her efforts at healing him exhausted her and she fainted. Sasuke gently lay her down before heading off. He arrived to see his allies facing a transformed Urashiki. Their combined efforts barely were able to compete with the foe. Ultimately, seeing his friends get hurt made Naruto unleash his version 1 cloak again and went on a rampage. Boruto, however, managed to reach Naruto and together they were able to perfect their new collaboration technique. With the combined effort of Jiraiya and Sasuke, the two kids were able to plow through Urashiki's final attack and obliterate him. Days later, after everyone recovered from battle, Sasuke and Boruto decided to leave soon as their mission was complete. They were approached by Sakura, who demanded for Sasuke to reveal how he knew her and what the contents of his letter were about. While Sasuke struggled to answer, Jiraiya gave a convincing alibi that Sasuke and Boruto were in fact such avid fans of his, they studied up on his entire life and wished to train under him, which Boruto and Sasuke awkwardly agreed to. The following day, after Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase the memories of everyone in the past they had made contact with to protect the timeline, the master and student used Karasuki to return to their time. Also, knowing that it was too dangerous for anyone else to wield the turtle's power, Sasuke and Boruto convinced it to go on a journey of self-discovery to find its own path. Once arriving in their present, Sasuke informed Naruto about the recent adventure and of Urashiki's demise. While Naruto was glad that the peace had been restored to the world, Sasuke insisted that there were still hidden sites of Kaguya that he would have to investigate, but noted that he would make sure to visit his family much more regularly. Mujina Bandit's Arc Boruto later tells Sasuke of his encounter with Momoshiki and informs him of the mark on his palm, leading to Sasuke telling Boruto that it wasn't normal and also to be on guard. After Shojoji was apprehended, Sai and Sasuke come in to interrogate him. As he questions Shojoji about the mark on Boruto's palm, Shojoji reveals that it's associated with the organization known as Kara, and the mark's nature is vaguely similar to Orochimaru's Juinjutsu. Kara Actuation Arc In the anime, after Sasuke finished probing Shoichi's mind, he learned that Kara was allegedly last seen in Amegakure. Sasuke was aided by Team 25 to investigate this new shadow organization. There, he learned that the village had decayed greatly since the last Great War. After Sai's team mapped out a series of underground tunnels, Sasuke and Sai went in alone. As they entered the area, they were assaulted by Garashi Tono, an orphaned citizen of Amegakure. He insisted that they were enemies who killed his friends. He was quickly subdued, and they explained their situation. Calming down, Garashi explained how a group of people were conducting an experiment underground. Garashi agreed to take them through the tunnels. This, however, turned out to be a trap as Garashi ensnared the Konoha Nin and gassed them, revealing himself to be a supporter of Kara after the struggles he had to endure since the Fourth Shinobi World War. Sasuke saw through this deception after recognizing the look of shameless anger about him, using shadow clones to bait him. Before they could get information from him, Garashi was also tricked by Kara as his gas mask was tampered with and he succumbed to the poison gas. As the tunnels began to collapse from another trap, they learned that Kara had been stationed there and was performing biological experiments. Sai and Sasuke reported their findings to Konohagakure. Afterwards, with the growing threat of Kara, Sasuke feared for his disciple's safety and loaned Boruto his other glove, instructing him to keep his Kama hidden at all costs. Sasuke learned that Victor, president of the Land of Valley's premier medical and research company, was in fact a member of Kara and somehow acquired a sample of the first Hokage's cells. After Team 7 was defeated by two inners of Kara, Boruto and Sarada both approached Sasuke for help in growing stronger. He agreed to train Sarada, but upon learning of Boruto's desire to improve his Rasengan, Sasuke directed him to Kakashi, as Boruto didn't want to detract from his father's work, and Kakashi was the only other Rasengan user in the village. As Sarada began her training under Sasuke, she asked him to teach her his Chidori for superior penetrating power. Sasuke noted Chidori is a dangerous technique that draws its strength from a fierce linear path, and as such, only a superior perception can offset the normally reduced field of vision, something that Sarada's lesser Sharingan couldn't handle, as its natural range of vision was still too limited. Deciding to help Sarada master and improve her Sharingan, Sasuke focused her training on dodging a barrage of ball bearings similar to her previous enemy's technique. He would drill her on not overly relying on the Sharingan's natural insight, but rather focus on the entire area and let the Sharingan fill in the blanks. As Sarada began improving in her movements against barrage attacks, Sasuke noted that she was still very limited on how long she could maintain her Sharingan. When he suggested improving her stamina, Sarada asked about the Mangekyo Sharingan. Concerned about such a dangerous power, Sasuke insisted it was for another day. Soon, they were approached by Sakura. She was concerned Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she couldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother coddle her so, refusing to see why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. 
Along with his wife, Sasuke admitted to worrying about the path Sarada was potentially walking, but insisted she is as strong as they were back then. The following day, as Sarada continued struggling to evade all of Sasuke's barrages, Sakura approached again. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. She forced Sarada into a sparring match with her, which Sasuke agreed to as Sakura's insight could determine things he couldn't. After Sakura quickly overwhelmed Sarada, she noticed that Sarada's biggest problems were her still underdeveloped chakra control and fear of defeat, which were inhibiting her development. Determined to break past her limits, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic the movements and general timing of Sakura's attacks to mimic Sakura's chakra-enhanced strength and reach a standstill. Sasuke was impressed by his daughter, and Sakura was now determined to help Sarada overcome her limits by joining in her training. Owl Arc during Naruto's fight against Boruto at the training hall, Sasuke watches the match from the sidelines. Afterwards, Sasuke arrives at the Hokage's office, where he tells Boruto of the value of scientific ninja weapons and that the danger of the world has yet to be driven out. He explains of a coming danger of enemies like the Otsutsuki clan. Naruto also admitted to knowing about Boruto's mark on his right palm, which was another reason Naruto approved the development of this advanced weaponry. While Boruto still insisted that they would rely solely on ninjutsu like in the Chunin exams, Naruto noted that the Chunin exams were to test one's growth as a ninja, whereas they are now in a battle for survival. Katasuke then arrived to retrieve his prototype, to which Naruto assigned Team Konohamaru a C-rank mission to escort the lead scientist back to the lab in Ryuben City. While Boruto stormed off in a huff, Sasuke is certain Boruto will calm down soon enough. Kawaki Arc Sasuke was sent to investigate coordinates discovered in intel recovered by Konohamaru a location accessible only through space-time ninjutsu. He discovered an Otsutsuki-related site, which contained records on some of their members, specifically those who had been to their world, which also led him to believe Kaguya came to this world with a partner. There, he also discovered another Ten Tails imprisoned. Sasuke managed to hide when Jigen arrived, but was left terrified when the leader of Kara absorbed some of the Ten Tails chakra for himself, briefly taking the form of Kaguya's supposed partner. As Jigen left to retrieve Kawaki, Sasuke determined the situation to be direr than he expected and felt the need to inform Naruto at once. Jigen later attacked Konohagakure and sent Naruto to an unknown dimension. Just as he was about to leave Naruto stranded, Sasuke, having detected Naruto's chakra and followed him there, appeared and kicked Jigen away to stop him from leaving before proceeding to team up with Naruto to fight Jigen, free to fight at full power, but even then Jigen successfully pressured them with his ability to seemingly conjure black rods from nowhere to stab them. However, Sasuke eventually deduced that Jigen's ability allowed him to shrink matter to microscopic levels and return it to its original size instantaneously, but told Naruto that wasn't his only secret uneasily. Recognizing Sasuke's impressive analytical skills and prowess with his dojutsu, Jigen noted that he must eliminate Sasuke first. Naruto and Sasuke continued to engage Jigen, eventually pushing him into a corner, at which point Jigen responded by progressing his karma to the next stage, worrying Sasuke who saw it firsthand. Sasuke informed Naruto that Jigen's appearance was similar to an unknown Otsutsuki he had witnessed earlier, as well as that he was aware of the existence of another Ten Tails. Deducing that Jigen is planning on draining the world of chakra, Sasuke activated his Susano while Naruto entered tailed beast mode. Jigen effortlessly overpowered the two, and despite their collaborative efforts, Jigen managed to impale Sasuke and Naruto with his black rods. Jigen resolved to seal Naruto and move to kill Sasuke, though was hindered by Naruto's shadow clones. Despite Sasuke's protests, Naruto convinced him to return to Konoha so he can live to fight another day. As Jigen was about to land a finishing blow, a heavily injured Sasuke teleported to Sakura's side, praying that Naruto would survive his entrapment before he passed out. Sasuke, still unconscious, was taken to a hospital where Sakura proceeded to heal him and managed to pull him out of critical condition. After Sasuke recovered, he learned that Kawaki used Boruto and Kawaki's Kama to go to the separate dimension and manage to save Naruto. When they returned and were treated in the hospital, Sasuke questioned his daughter about the events. Sarada explained to her parents how during their battle against Boro, it was only thanks to a strange new evolution of Boruto's Kama that they were able to defeat him. She noted that Boruto not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye, with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sasuke, but Sakura told her daughter to rest, which the father agreed. Afterwards, Mitsuki decided to talk with Sasuke privately. He noted that Kara had taken a special interest in Boruto, calling him Momoshiki's vessel. Sasuke concluded that Momoshiki used Boruto as a means to preserve himself and potentially resurrect himself in Boruto's body. He also concluded that Kawaki is facing the same ordeal with Ishiki Otsutsuki. Shortly thereafter, Amado, the head of Kara's research and development division, arrived at Konoha and negotiated the terms of his defection. 
Sasuke was present during Amato's interrogation, where he learned that the scientist was responsible for providing Konoha with the coordinates to Jigen's dimension. After learning additional information about the Otsutsuki clan's history and practices, Sasuke deduced that the enigmatic clan leader is ultimately the one who gave Jigen his karma. Amato's glasses then began beeping, revealing a holographic projection of Jigen talking with Koji Kashin. They learned that Koji and Amato were working together so that Koji could kill Jigen. As they watched the fight, Amato continued divulging intel on Jigen, the Otsutsuki, and Kama. Sasuke noticed an inconsistency in Amato's explanation over the mechanics of Kama, noticing that Jigen still bore his despite having been taken over by Ishiki already. Acknowledging his point, Amato explained the unorthodox manner of Ishiki's parasitic takeover of Jigen. Sasuke listened on as Amato claimed that despite being able to transcend death with Kama, he could teach them how to kill Otsutsuki. Upon witnessing Koji's flames engulfing Jigen's body, Naruto wondered if Ishiki's end was near, though Sasuke pointed out that Ishiki still had two vessels marked with Kama, indicating that he could reincarnate twice. Sasuke voiced his concern that killing Jigen would make Kawaki Ishiki's sole remaining vessel, prompting Shikamaru to wonder if the entire thing was a setup from the start. Kawaki entered the interrogation room and attacked Amato, but was blocked by Sasuke's sword. Amato assured everyone that it was a misunderstanding and to turn their attention back to the battle. When Jigen's death triggered Ishiki's resurrection in his body, Amato explained this also erased Kawaki's Kama to avoid duplicates, leading Sasuke to realize that without any remaining Kama, Ishiki was vulnerable to permanent death. After Amato was officially made a citizen of Konohagakure, he explained that Ishiki's resurrection was unstable and would seek out Kawaki again to rebrand him. He also insisted that the village be evacuated and Kawaki be with Sasuke and Naruto at all times. As Boruto insisted to fight alongside his father and mentor against him, Sasuke made it clear to his student that fighting such a foe would likely result in death. Before they could settle the argument, they were alerted that Ishiki had arrived in the village. As Naruto ordered Boruto to join the evacuation, Sasuke stayed behind to talk with him. He revealed his knowledge of Boruto recently being taken over by Momoshiki's Kama. Boruto admitted he was less afraid of dying than hurting people should Momoshiki take control of him. But Sasuke swore as his teacher to stop Boruto by any means necessary. He then gave Boruto his precious old Genin forehead protector, making Boruto swear to return it in the end. Arriving to the battlefield and saving Naruto from Ishiki's attack, Sasuke began indiscriminately launching shuriken at Ishiki, who proceeded to shrink them all. When Sasuke launched his sword at Ishiki, he was deceived as it was revealed to be Boruto, who activated Kama and teleported Ishiki and himself to a separate dimension. Sasuke and Naruto soon joined to help Boruto via his space-time ninjutsu. As the Konoha Nin faced down Ishiki, he grabbed Boruto, openly impressed with how far his Kama had progressed in such a short period. Sasuke suddenly swapped places with Boruto for a sneak attack, only for Ishiki to easily rebuff him. Ishiki decided the best way to get Kawaki was to present Sasuke and Naruto's corpses to the village. The fight resumed, with Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork managing to push Ishiki on the defense as he began shrinking all their attacks. However, Ishiki demonstrated a new technique, manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. From there, Ishiki pinned down Sasuke and moved to kill him with his own sword, only for Boruto to jump in the way, causing him to hesitate. Boruto deduced Ishiki couldn't kill him. Boruto explained that previously, Boro noted that Boruto's wielding of a Kama would aid tremendously in Kara's plans, meaning that Boruto's life was invaluable to Ishiki. Sasuke told Boruto to run away as their best bet was to wait out Ishiki's remaining lifespan, only for Ishiki to knock Sasuke out with a hard kick. Upon awakening, Sasuke found a battered Boruto being defended by Naruto, who released another form with Kurama to take down Ishiki. Sasuke observed as Naruto pressured Ishiki and was surprised he could keep track of his shrunken rods, something even his Sharingan had trouble doing. He took Boruto to safer distance from the battle and noticed that Naruto's chakra eventually began to weaken. Ishiki then took advantage of Naruto's chakra connection to Kawaki through the latter's prosthetic arm. From this, he teleported Kawaki to them to rebrand the boy, much to Sasuke's concern. As Kawaki tried to escape Ishiki's rebranding, Sasuke attempted to give a diversion via Ame no Tejigara and a scientifically enhanced smokescreen. After, Kawaki deceived Ishiki with a shadow clone, resulting in the Otsutsuki's death. Sasuke asked Naruto about the drawbacks of his Baryon mode, during which Boruto suddenly stabbed his Rinnegan. Controlled by Momoshiki, he revealed that he planned to feed Kawaki to Ishiki's ten tails, due to the large percentage of Otsutsuki DNA that lingered in the vessel's body. Sasuke assisted Kawaki in fighting Momoshiki and resolved to kill Boruto if necessary. He noticed that Momoshiki had avoided absorbing any chakra-based ninjutsu with the Kama, and deduced that since he emerged when Boruto passed out from chakra exhaustion, replenishing Boruto's chakra could make his personality resurface. While strategizing with Kawaki, Sasuke was hit by Momoshiki's vanishing Rasengan. 
After Kawaki forced Momoshiki to absorb a self-sacrificial technique, Boruto was able to awaken and resist Momoshiki's control. After the exhausting confrontation, Sasuke, Boruto, and Kawaki learned that Naruto was spared at the sacrifice of Kurama's life force. With Sasuke's Rinnegan destroyed and Kawaki's Kama extinguished, Boruto was the group's only hope to escape the foreign dimension. With Kawaki's help, Boruto was able to conjure a portal, which Sasuke pulled a weakened Naruto through. Upon returning, Sasuke and his comrades were relieved to return home victorious. Code Arc Sasuke investigated a set of Code's claw marks placed around the village and found it unlikely to be the place he'd emerged from based on where he'd placed them. Sakura Harano Sakura Uchiha is a Kunoichi of Konohagakure. When assigned to Team 7, Sakura quickly finds herself ill-prepared for the duties of a shinobi. However, after training under the Sanin Tsunade, she overcomes this and becomes recognized as one of the greatest medical nin in the world. Background Sakura is the only child of Mebuki and Kizashi Haruno. She had an ordinary childhood, raised by her parents without any serious tragedy or complications, unlike her team members. When she entered Konoha's academy, a few of the girls in her class started picking on her because of her broad forehead. Sakura tried to combat their teasing by hiding her forehead with her bangs, but this proved to the other girls that it bothered her and caused them to tease her even more. Ino Yamanaka, one of her classmates, saw this and defended Sakura from her bullies and encouraged her to embrace her forehead rather than hide it. Over the following years, Ino's guidance and friendship helped Sakura become more comfortable with herself and develop into her own person. Though she felt indebted to Ino for helping her, Sakura began to feel that she was living in Ino's shadow when she, instead, wanted to be Ino's equal. At some point after she entered the academy, Sakura met Sasuke Uchiha and she developed a crush on him. When she told her friends, she was surprised to learn how popular Sasuke was with the girls. Sakura heard a rumor of Sasuke being attracted to girls with long hair, and she began letting her hair grow to get his attention. A couple of years later, when she learned Ino had a crush on Sasuke, Sakura ended their friendship so they could compete for Sasuke's love, thus beginning a bitter rivalry between them. After they were placed in their teams, Sakura approached Ino, telling her of her liking towards Sasuke. Ino revealed that she too had feelings towards him. Sakura took it to end their friendship, starting their dislike towards each other in the beginning of the series. Prologue, Land of Waves Upon graduating from the academy and being assigned to Team 7, Sakura is initially devastated when she learns that Naruto Uzumaki is to be one of her teammates. She is then immediately afterwards ecstatic to learn that Sasuke Uchiha is to be her other teammate. She tries to bond with Sasuke by stating her envy of Naruto's lack of parents, but this only offends Sasuke who tells her that she's annoying. Sakura is hurt, and on realizing that she says similar things to Naruto, decides to try to be nicer to him. Team 7's leader, Kakashi Harake, tests their qualifications with a bell test, stating that whichever of the three of them takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become Genin. While Naruto busies himself attacking Kakashi, Sakura seeks out Sasuke to see if she can help him. Kakashi finds her during her search and defeats her with an illusion of Sasuke dying. Likewise, Naruto and Sasuke are also defeated. Kakashi explains afterwards that the goal of the test was to use teamwork, to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He's persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. Sasuke feeds him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together, and Sakura does the same. Kakashi sees this, and because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7 escorting Tezuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers who go after Tezuna. Sakura immediately places herself in front of Tezuna to protect him and stands her ground until Kakashi captures the brothers. Tezuna confesses that the assassins have been hired to kill him, but that he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of a Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. When they reach the Land of Waves and are attacked by Zabuza Momochi, Sakura once again protects Tezuna while Kakashi and later Naruto and Sasuke fight Zabuza. Zabuza is ultimately seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tezuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice in order to improve their chakra control, which will help them against Zabuza. Sakura masters the exercise on her first try, thus leaving her in charge of protecting Tezuna while Naruto and Sasuke train and Kakashi recovers from his fight with Zabuza. After a week, the rest of the team joins her, but when they reach the bridge that Tezuna has been working on, they find Zabuza and Haku waiting for them. Sasuke and later Naruto fight Haku while Kakashi fights Zabuza, once again leaving Sakura in charge of protecting Tezuna. 
The thick mist prevents her from seeing how the fight against Haku is going, so she's surprised when Haku suddenly interferes in Kakashi's fight with Zabuza and is killed. When Naruto comes looking for Haku, Sakura asks him where Sasuke is. When Naruto refuses to respond, Sakura becomes worried, but stays put because she cannot leave Tazuna's side. When Tazuna offers to come over with her, she quickly leads him to where Sasuke is and finds him seemingly dead. Overcome with emotion, Sakura knowingly violates the shinobi rules and cries for him. When Sasuke later wakes up, Sakura embraces him, explains that Haku had been killed, and shares the news of Sasuke's survival with Naruto. Zabuza also dies, allowing Team 7 to return to Konoha when their injuries heal via Tazuna's newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. After returning from one mission, Sakura tries to spend some time with Sasuke, who rejects her. This places Sakura in a bad mood, causing her to lash out first at Naruto when he suggests to Konohamaru Saratobi that he and Sakura are dating, and then at Konohamaru when he insults her for harming Naruto. This all attracts the attention of Tsunagakure's three sand siblings who have come to Konoha to take part in the Chunin exams. Sasuke returns and drives these sand siblings off, and later Kakashi meets with them to enter them in the Chunin exams as well. He neglects to mention that they must enter as a team, worried that Sakura might only participate because of Sasuke, and so is glad when she independently decides to participate. Before the Chunin exams begin, Sakura is met by Rock Lee, who asks her to go out with him and offers to protect her with his life. Sakura flatly refuses, being bothered by his eyelashes, hairstyle, and thick eyebrows. For the Chunin exam's first stage, the participating Genin are given a written test with 10 questions. From looking over the questions, Sakura realizes that the questions are too complicated for most Genin, especially Naruto, to be able to answer without cheating. Sakura herself is able to answer the first 9 questions on her own. Before being given the 10th question, Genin are warned that if they answer it incorrectly, they will never be allowed to take the Chunin exams again. Sakura becomes worried that Naruto is too proud to not try to answer the question, and that when he inevitably gives the wrong answer, his disqualification will ruin his dreams of becoming Hokage. She prepares to forfeit on his behalf, but Naruto insists on answering the 10th question no matter what, causing her to change her mind. For their willingness to face the 10th question despite the potential consequences, Team 7 and the remaining Genin pass to the second stage. For the second stage, teams enter the Forest of Death for a 5-day survival challenge. Shortly after the second stage begins, Team 7 is attacked by Orochimaru, who Sasuke and Sakura, sensing his killing intent, realize is far too strong for them to fight. Sasuke tries to surrender in exchange for their lives, but Naruto insists on fighting Orochimaru anyway. Both Sasuke and Sakura are surprised by how well Naruto does, although he is ultimately defeated and knocked unconscious. Sakura pins him to a tree with a kunai to stop him from falling, and observes to Sasuke that Naruto, despite all his shortcomings, isn't a coward. This convinces Sasuke to fight Orochimaru as well. Orochimaru becomes impressed by Sasuke, and before he leaves, he brands Sasuke with a cursed seal of heaven, rendering him unconscious as well. Sakura moves Naruto and Sasuke to a secluded area where she watches over them through the night. In the morning, they're tracked down by Team Dosu, Orochimaru's underlings who have instructions to kill Sasuke. They bypass the booby traps she laid earlier and move in on her, but she's saved by Rock Lee. Lee fights Team Dosu by himself, planning to make good on his earlier promise to protect her, but is eventually defeated. Sakura begins attacking Team Dosu herself, but she is restrained by Kintsuchi, who grabs her by the hair and berates her for how much time she clearly spends on it. Determined to not keep needing the help of others, and motivated by Naruto and Sasuke, Sakura cuts her hair to free herself and starts attacking, persevering despite Zaku Abumi's many counter-attacks. Sakura's courage convinces the observing Ino Yamanaka and the rest of Team 10 to come to her defense. Team 10 fights Team Dosu until they're interrupted by Sasuke, imbued with the power of his cursed seal. When he sees Sakura's injuries, Sasuke breaks Zaku's arms in punishment and threatens to do the same to the rest of them. Sakura is horrified by his actions and embraces him, begging him to stop. Sasuke's cursed seal recedes and he complies. Team Dosu retreats and Team 7, 10, and Lee's Team Guy regroup. When Naruto wakes up, he makes fun of Lee's eyebrows, prompting Sakura to strike him. Before they go their separate ways, Lee vows to Sakura that he will become stronger. Team 7 spends several days recuperating from their ordeal, but they are able to reach the center of the forest in time to advance to the Chunin exam's preliminaries, a series of one-on-one -on -one qualifying matches. Sakura tries to convince Sasuke not to participate because of his cursed seal, but he ignores her, insisting that it's his business and not hers. For her match, Sakura is paired against Ino. They start by trading insults and then punches, surprising Ino because Sakura proves her equal in both categories. 
Frustrated, Ino follows Sakura's earlier example by cutting her hair, a ruse that allows her to immobilize Sakura while she uses her mind-body switch technique. In control of Sakura's body, Ino tries to make her forfeit the match, but she's stopped and exercised by inner Sakura, due to both having used up all their chakra, but exchange one final blow, knocking both out. When Sakura wakes up, Ino informs her that their match was ruled a tie, and that therefore neither of them will continue to the final rounds. Despite this, they decide to rekindle their friendship, though can't help but continue to bicker about Sasuke. Sakura watches the remaining matches, including Lee's match with Gara, during which Lee loses and is badly injured. A few days later, Sakura visits the hospital to see Sasuke, but discovers he's already been taken away by Kakashi. While she's there, she sees Lee training despite his injuries, causing him to fall unconscious as a consequence. She leaves the flower she bought for Sasuke with him instead. Sakura worries about Sasuke over the following month, especially when he's missing for his match with Gara during the finals. He finally does show up, late, and Sakura watches with interest. Konoha Crush Sasuke's match is interrupted by an invasion of Konoha, and a genjutsu descends upon the stadium where the finals are being held, putting most of the audience to sleep. Sakura is able to dispel the genjutsu, attracting the attention of the invading Otogakure forces. She's saved by Kakashi, who instructs her to wake up Naruto and Shikamaru Nara. She does so, though Shikamaru was only pretending to be asleep, and when they're assembled, Kakashi sends them in Pakun after Sasuke, who's pursuing Gara. Oto and Nin start following them, so Shikamaru falls behind to delay them. Naruto and Sakura catch up with Sasuke in time to save him from one of Gara's attacks. When Gara sees Sakura's determination to defend Sasuke, he knocks her unconscious and binds her to a tree. Her bindings dissolve when Gara is defeated, which Sakura assumes she has Sasuke to thank for. Sasuke corrects her when they get back to Konoha, explaining that it was Naruto who saved her. A few days later, Team 7 attends the third Hokage's funeral. Land of Tea Escort Mission In the anime, Team 7 is sent to the Land of Tea to protect Idate Marino as he runs a race. When Team Oboro and later Aoi Rokusho try to stop Idate, Naruto and Sasuke fight them while Sakura remains alert for opportunities for Idate to run to safety. Sasuke is eventually knocked out by Aoi, and Sakura looks after him until Aoi is defeated by Naruto. After Idate wins the race, Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto the Movie, Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow Team 7 is sent on a mission to protect the actress, Yuki Fujikaze, as she travels to the Land of Snow. During the course of the mission, Sakura encounters Mizure Fuyukama several times. She eventually uses the Sakura Blizzard technique to distract him while Sasuke hurls Fubuki Kakuyoku into Mizore, causing their chakra armors to explode. When the Land of Snow is converted into the Land of Spring, Sakura and Sasuke watch it together. Sasuke Recovery Mission Sakura visits Sasuke every day while he's in the hospital, tearfully hugging him once he finally regains consciousness. She continues looking after him until he recovers, but he repels her kindness, angered by his earlier defeat by his brother, Itachi Uchiha. When Naruto comes to see him, Sasuke challenges him to a fight, which Naruto agrees to over Sakura's protests. She watches as they exchange attacks on the hospital roof, but decides she can't let things continue when Sasuke prepares a Chidori and Naruto prepares a Rasengan. She runs between them to stop them, but neither is able to pull away in time. Kakashi appears and flings them apart, saving Sakura. Sasuke storms off and Kakashi, before he follows, promises Sakura that he'll set things right. Sakura takes Naruto aside afterwards and tells him about the cursed seal Sasuke received from Orochimaru, which she'd until now kept from him at Sasuke's request. She shares her concerns that Orochimaru is trying to tempt Sasuke to defect from Konoha, but Naruto assures her that Sasuke would never do that. This comforts her at the time, but she continues to worry and, at night, waits at the village's exit. Sasuke eventually approaches with his belongings, confirming her fears. Sasuke tells her to go home, but Sakura refuses, instead asking why he always pushes her away and reminding him of all the good times Team 7 has had. She tries to persuade him to stay so she won't be alone, but when that doesn't work, argues that his revenge against Itachi isn't worth it. When Sasuke remains determined to go, Sakura tells him she loves him and offers to go with him. Sasuke tells her that she's annoying, just as he did after Team 7's formation. Sakura threatens to scream for help, so he knocks her out. However, before he does it, he thanks her. Sakura is found on a bench the next morning, and when she wakes up, she sends word to Tsunade, the new Hokage, that Sasuke has defected. The Sasuke recovery team is formed to go after him, which Sakura approaches as they prepare to set up from Konoha. Sakura begs Naruto to bring Sasuke back to Konoha, believing that he is the only person who can get through to him at this point. Naruto vows to do so, even if it takes his entire life, and Sakura cries at his dedication to her. Despite his promise, Naruto is unable to bring Sasuke back. 
Sakura visits him in the hospital, and after trying to avoid the subject, tells him that she won't hold him to his word. Naruto, however, refuses to go back on what he said. Touched, Sakura apologizes to Naruto for what he's gone through, and promises to help him personally bring back Sasuke next time. Land of Rice Fields Investigation Mission In the anime, Sakura accompanies Naruto and Jiraiya to the Land of Rice Fields to investigate one of Orochimaru's lairs and potentially retrieve Sasuke. The mission ends in failure. When they get back to Konoha, Sakura, as in the manga, asks to become Tsunade's apprentice so she can better meet the challenges she'll face in the future. Tsunade accepts. Mizuki Tracking Mission In the anime, Sakura focuses on her training, preventing her from helping Naruto with many of the missions he goes away on. When he returns from one such mission, she informs him that she's succeeded in healing a fish. Mix it, stretch it, boil it up, burn, copper pot, burn. In the anime, Sakura helps Naruto and Choji Akamichi rescue Ayame. To save her from the cooking nin, they must prepare the perfect ramen. Sakura contributes by pounding the dough of the noodles into shape. Konoha plans recapture mission. In the anime, Sakura and Ino examine a corpse believed to be that of Geno. They conclude that it's not actually him. Yakumo Kurama rescue mission. In the anime, Sakura helps Naruto protect Yakumo Kurama from the Kurama clan. When Kurena Yuhi is injured during the fight, Sakura heals her wounds. Gontetsu Escort Mission In the anime, Sakura, Naruto, and Lee guard Gontetsu as he's transferred to prison. Sunagakure Support Mission In the anime, Sakura and the rest of the Konoha 11 are sent to Sunagakure to help the Sand siblings in their fight with the four celestial symbols men. Sakura heals Gara during his fight with Suiko. Ino, jealous of Sakura's newfound healing abilities, asks to train with Sakura to be a medical nin. Sakura agrees, but Ino is dismayed when Sakura reminds her that she will be her junior during the course of their training. Naruto the Movie Legend of the Stone of Gelel. Naruto, Sakura, and Shikamaru are sent to deliver Nerugui to its rightful owners. When they arrive at the village where the owners live, they're attacked by Temujin's warriors, who wield the power of the Stone of Gelel. Sakura is eventually forced to fight the wolf like Fugai. She uses metal pillars to reflect Fugai's ear-splitting howl, thus causing the pillars to collapse on her and kill her. Naruto the Movie Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom Naruto, Sakura, and Rock Lee are assigned to protect the land of the moon's prince during his world trip. During the mission, she makes several uses of the medical ninjutsu and increased physical strength she gained from training with Tsunade, the latter particularly in her fights with Karimbana. Sakura struggles against Karimbana during their first encounter because of her ability to turn invisible. During their second meeting, Sakura notices how much perfume she wears, helping her to defend herself. Later in the fight, she breaks a chandelier, scattering glass across the floor that allows her to find Karimbana and knock her out. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friend's Paths In the anime, about two years after Naruto leaves Konoha to train, another Chunin exam is held. Because the participants must enter as part of three-man teams, Ino invites Sakura to be Shikamaru's replacement on Team 10, since Shikamaru is already a Chunin. During the first exam, Sakura, Ino, and Shoji are seated in different rooms and are tasked with getting a combined score of exactly 100 points on their written test despite their separation. Ino telepathically contacts Sakura and Shoji in order to assign them which questions to answer. After the initial testing period is over, they're given a bonus question. Each team must unanimously select one of their members to disqualify from the rest of the exams. Team 10 selects nobody, which is the correct answer, and which qualifies them for the next phase. Those who pass the first exam must reach the Demon Desert within three days in order to participate in the second exam. Team 10 successfully does so, and they're given the same objective as they had in the exam several years ago, obtain a scroll from another team. They wander through the desert for three days, losing their provisions to an Ame team. While recuperating at an oasis, they're attacked by Team Ameno. Ino once again telepathically links with Sakura and Shoji to coordinate their attacks and help them locate their attackers, resulting in the other team's defeat. Once Sakura and Ino heal their injuries, the other team offers them their scroll. However, theirs is the same scroll that Team 10 already has, so they're allowed to keep it. They go their separate ways, agreeing to meet again in the third exam. Team 10 is later attacked by Team Saya. Saya possesses Ino's mind and forces her to attack Sakura. When Choji, meanwhile, begins overwhelming Saya's teammates, Saya possesses his mind instead and she forces him to attack Sakura using his super multi-size technique. Ino is able to release Choji, forcing Team Saya to retreat. Team 10 is afterwards trapped in a sandstorm, during which Ino and Choji are poisoned by a cloaked Mamashi. Sakura escapes the sandstorm, defeats Saya, and then returns to heal Ino and Choji. Team 10 is eventually found by one of the exam's proctors, 
who brings them to where all the other Genin are being assembled. They're informed that the Chunin exams have been cancelled. Reports on the participants' performances will be sent back to their villages, leaving their promotion up to their superiors. When they get back to Konoha, Tsunade promotes Sakura, Ino, and Choji to Chunin. Kazakage Rescue Mission Tsunade informs Sakura of Naruto's return after two and a half years of training. She goes to greet him and is initially glad that he's back, but is quickly disappointed when he gets back into a competition of sexy techniques with Konohamaru Saratobi. Kakashi reforms Team 7 with them and gives them another bell test. Unlike last time, taking the bells from him is the real objective. Kakashi vanishes shortly after the test begins, and Sakura, after determining that he's nowhere above ground, concludes that he's below ground. To force him out, she shatters the earth with Cherry Blossom Impact, surprising both Kakashi and Naruto. Despite their improved abilities, neither Sakura nor Naruto are able to get a bell through conventional means, and it is only by Naruto's threat to spoil the latest Icha Icha book that they're able to lower Kakashi's guard long enough to take his bells. While Team 7 tries without success to find a mission to go on that Naruto won't complain about, word reaches Konoha that Akatsuki has kidnapped Gara, the Kasakage. Team 7 is sent to Sunagakure to lend assistance in rescuing Gara. On their way to Suna, Naruto explains that Gara was kidnapped because he is the Jinjuriki of the One Tail, just as Naruto is the Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails. When they reach Suna, they're informed that Konkuro was poisoned by Akatsuki member Sasori in his failed attempt to rescue Gara, and that none of the village's medics can heal him. Sakura is able to remove the poison from his body, from which she prepares some antidotes, impressing Chiyo. Chiyo, Sasori's grandmother, ultimately decides to accompany Team 7 as they leave to find Gara, helping them navigate the local country. On their way to the Akatsuki lair where Gara has been taken, they're met by Itachi Uchiha, the brother who Sasuke defected from Konoha in order to kill. Although eager to face him, Sakura must leave most of the fighting to Kakashi due to his Sharingan. When Naruto is trapped in Itachi's Genjutsu, Sakura and Chiyo release him. The Itachi is eventually discovered to be an imposter, so they continue to the Akatsuki lair. They beat Team Guy there, who takes down the barrier over the entrance so that Team 7 can get in. Deidara flies off with Gara's body as soon as they enter, and Naruto and Kakashi pursue him, leaving Sasori to Sakura and Chiyo. Chiyo informs Sakura that what appears to be Sasori is actually one of his puppets, Hiruko. She also warns that all of Hiruko's weapons are likely coated with poison. With this in mind, Chiyo guides Sakura to Hiruko unharmed, allowing her to destroy it. With Hiruko gone, Sasori starts using his human puppet of the third Kazakage. Although it initially appears no different from a standard puppet, such that Chiyo is able to fight it with her mother and father puppets, the puppet is discovered to have access to the third's Iron Sand, which has also been imbued with poison. The Iron Sand neutralizes the mother and father puppets and then forms into blocks, with Sakura, with Chiyo's guidance again, is able to punch away. Sasori's Iron Sand world method provides more difficult to avoid and Sakura receives several scratches, causing her to collapse from the poison. She is able to administer the antidote, however, allowing her to destroy the third when it moves in to finish her off. Angered by this, Sasori reveals that his own body is a puppet now, and he goes after Chiyo. Sakura intercepts him and destroys the body, but he's able to reassemble it. Sasori brings out his hundred puppet army, and Chiyo brings out her ten puppet collection of Chikamatsu. While the two sides battle, Sakura moves closer to Sasori and places a seal on him. Sasori is able to transfer his living core into another puppet before the seal connects, sneaks up on Chiyo, and attacks. Sakura shields the attack with her body and is both fatally wounded and poisoned. When Chiyo gives her the final antidote, Sasori attacks Chiyo again, only to fall into her trap and have his core stabbed by the mother and father puppets. Chiyo then heals Sakura's wound. Having guessed that Sakura was able to create an antidote for his poison, something he thought was impossible, Sasori decides to reward her before he dies. He tells her of a spy within Orochimaru's ranks who he had planned to meet in Kusagakure in 10 days. Chiyo collapses once he's dead, but refuses Sakura's offer to take her back to Suna to make another antidote. At Chiyo's request, Sakura carries her to Naruto and Kakashi, who have managed to retrieve Gara. Sakura attempts to retrieve Gara, but the removal of the One Tail has caused him to die. Chiyo uses the One's own life reincarnation on him, bringing him back to life at the cost of her own. As the Jutsu nears completion, Chiyo warns Sakura not to risk her life to protect someone as old as she is again, believing Sakura is too valuable. Gara is successfully resurrected, and a few days later, Team Seven and Guy attend Chiyo's funeral in Sunagakure before returning home. Naruto Shippuden, the movie. Naruto, Sakura, and Lee are led on a mission by Neji Hyuga to escort Shion, the head priestess to the Land of Demons. When they arrive at the Tomb of Morio, they are forced to fight the gang of four, but eventually they drive them off. Sakura later tries to carry Shion to safety, but they're followed by Kasuna, and Sakura is injected with secret anesthesia. Once she recovers, she helps her team defeat Kasuna and his men. Tenshi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission 
With the intel gained from Sasori, Team 7 begins planning to meet the spy in the hopes that it'll help them reunite with Sasuke. Kakashi is left bedridden from his fight with Deidara, requiring Yamato to lead Team 7 as his replacement. The Konoha Council also requires that Sai be a time to Team 7 as Sasuke's replacement. Naruto immediately dislikes Sai, declaring him an inferior version of Sasuke. Sai is happy for this distinction and proceeds to degrade Sasuke for defecting from Konoha. This angers Sakura and she hits him, forcing Yamato to use wood release to break up their fight. Despite this incident, Sakura has difficulty holding a grudge against Sai due to his lack of emotion or interpersonal connections. She therefore tries to mediate between Naruto and Sai, explaining to Sai the brotherly bond that Naruto feels to Sasuke. When this fails to make an impression, Sakura gives up on Sai and puts up with him only because they need his help to find Sasuke. Yamato disguises himself as Sasori and goes to the Tenchi Bridge to meet the spy while Naruto, Sakura, and Sai hide nearby. The spy, Kabuto Yakushi, begins telling Yamato about Orochimaru's organization, but they're interrupted by the appearance of Orochimaru, who teams up with Kabuto to fight Yamato, having intended to kill Sasori. Team 7 comes to his aid, and Orochimaru, recognizing them, taunts Naruto about Sasuke. Naruto is enraged and strikes him, using the Ninetales' power to make his attacks more devastating. The Tenchi Bridge starts to collapse from the stress of his chakra, and Sakura is knocked unconscious in the process. She's saved and revived by Yamato, and is then horrified by the damage that Naruto is causing to the surroundings. Orochimaru is eventually able to force Naruto away from himself and closer to Sakura and Yamato. Seeing the lengths he's going to in order to retrieve Sasuke from Orochimaru, Sakura tries to reason with him, but his version 2 form leaves him unable to tell friend from foe and he attacks her. When Yamato restrains Naruto with his wood release, Kabuto heals Sakura's wound, his thanks to Team 7 for killing Sasori. Yamato is able to suppress the Ninetales' influence, but its chakra leaves his body badly damaged. Sakura heals him, but is upset that it's the only thing she can do to help him. When Naruto wakes up, he can't remember what happened and assumes Sakura's tears are because of something Sai said, which she doesn't correct. After taking a break when Sakura's wound starts hurting, she tells Naruto her wound was caused by Orochimaru. While Sakura works on healing herself, Yamato tells Naruto the truth. When they realize that Sai is missing, Yamato reports that he's joined with Orochimaru and Kabuto. Having placed a trace on Sai, Yamato is able to lead Naruto and Sakura to him, and by extension, Orochimaru's lair. They infiltrate it, locate Sai, and restrain him so they can go looking for Sasuke. Kabuto finds him and releases Sai to help him fight them, but Sai restrains him instead. Curious about the bond that Naruto keeps saying he has with Sasuke, Sai goes searching through Orochimaru's lair in search of Sasuke on Naruto's behalf. When he's gone, Yamato goes through his belongings and finds evidence that Sai has been assigned to assassinate Sasuke. They go after him in order to stop him. When they find him, he explains that he truly does want to help retrieve Sasuke, and in fact has already found him. Sakura and Naruto are speechless to see Sasuke again, but Sasuke reacts with indifference to them. To demonstrate that they all mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all, except Sakura, who prepares to attack him. Sasuke is about to counter her attack before Yamato saves her. He then prepares to kill them, but is persuaded not to by Orochimaru, and leaves without further comment. Defeated, a tearful Sakura tells a devastated Naruto they need to get stronger, and Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the movie, Bonds. During the Land of the Skies attack on Konoha, Sakura heals the injured who are brought to the hospital. Afterwards, Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata Hyuga are assigned to escort Amaru and Shino back to their village. During their journey, Amaru's body is possessed by the Zero Tails. Despite trying to fight it, Sakura is defeated. Naruto leaves Sakura behind as he goes after Amaru. 12 Guardian Ninja In the anime, Yamato leads Team 7 on a mission to the Fire Temple to investigate a series of grave robberies. During the course of the investigation, Team 7 is separated by an earthen maze. Sakura is attacked within the maze by a giant spider, but she's saved by Sai, whose arm breaks in the process. She tends to this injury while they reunite with Naruto and Yamato, but the grave robbers escape. Team 7 returns to Konoha, and when the grave robbers attack the village, Sakura is drawn into battle with Fuen. Sakura pretends to fall victim to Fuen's genjutsu, allowing her to a surprise attack her when she attacks a decoy of her, and end it by smashing her into the ground. Akatsuki Suppression Mission Kakashi assembles Naruto, Sakura, and Sai to discuss their failed mission to retrieve Sasuke. Sakura shares her suspicion that Sasuke's skills have been boosted with medication, as his growth rate is unnaturally high. Kakashi believes the best way to prepare them for another encounter with Sasuke is for Naruto to invent a new jutsu. Once he finally does, after many days of training, Team 7 is sent to help Team 10 in their battle with Akatsuki. Sakura and Sai are sent to provide backup for Shikamaru Nara during his fight with Hidan, while everyone else focuses on Kakuzu. When they locate Shikamaru, however, they discover he's already defeated Hidan. Naruto elsewhere defeats Kakuzu with his jutsu, after which they go back to Konoha. 
Naruto's new jutsu injures his arm after use, which Sakura treats in Konoha. Because he has difficulty using the arm while it mends, Sakura tries to help him eat when they visit Ramanichi Raku, but Sai insists on the responsibility. As they leave afterwards, they're met by Konohamaru, who demonstrates his sexy girl-on-girl -girl technique. In the manga, Konohamaru responds with sexy boy-on-boy -boy technique. Sakura approves, but Naruto is disgusted and violently reprimands him. Sakura tries to make an excuse when she realizes how she reacted, but Konohamaru's suspicions that Sakura is just as much of a pervert as he is are confirmed. However, in the anime, Naruto approves, and Sakura is disgusted and violently reprimands him. Three Tails Appearance in the anime, Team 7 is sent to help Team 8 in their fight with Team Guren. When they come across the Three Tails during the course of the mission, Sakura is assigned to a team responsible for sealing it due to her excellent chakra control. They're interrupted by Team Guren before they can complete the four corner sealing barrier, and Sakura tends to the wounded after the Three Tails goes on a rampage. When Team Guren is defeated, they are recalled to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the Movie, The Will of Fire Sakura is part of a team sent to investigate the most recent in a series of kidnappings of people with Kekai Genkai. During the investigation, Naruto and Sai are injured by strange animals. Sakura heals them, and when they get back to Konoha, forces them to spend some time in the hospital. Hiroko later declares war on the ninja villages, and Sakura is assigned to secure Konoha's borders. When she learns that Kakashi has defected and that Naruto has been imprisoned to stop him from going after Kakashi, she helps him escape and accompanies him. When they, with help from Shikamaru and Sai, find Kakashi, who is under Hiroko's control, they fight Hiroko's chimeric animals, save Kakashi, and ultimately defeat the villain. Itachi Pursuit Mission News reaches Konoha that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru. Realizing this is a good opportunity to try once again to reunite with Sasuke, Kakashi combines Team 7 and 8 into an 8-man squad on the mission to either find Sasuke or his assumed target, Itachi. They split up to look for leads on either Uchiha, because she doesn't have any particular tracking skills, Kakashi pairs Sakura with two Ninken, Shiba and Bisuke. They briefly pick up on the trail of one of Sasuke's new teammates, Karin, but they don't realize this and lose the trail shortly afterwards. Faded Battle Between Brothers after they regroup, Kiba Inuzuka is able to detect Sasuke's scent and they start to follow it. Along the way, they're met by Tobi of Akatsuki, who prevents them from progressing and who is invulnerable to their attacks. Tobi leaves when he receives news that Sasuke has killed Itachi, and teams 7 and 8 try to reach Sasuke before he does. Unable to find where Tobi has taken Sasuke, they are forced to return to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden in the movie, The Lost Tower. Team 7 goes to the ruins of Roran to capture Mukade. When fighting Mukade, Naruto and Yamato vanish, only to reappear immediately afterwards with no memory of what they've just been through. When they leave Roran, they're approached by a girl whose mother met Naruto when he was sent to the past. Though he's unaware of this, Naruto claims he saw the girl in a good dream he had, causing Sakura to pull his ear and call him a pervert. Six Tales Unleashed In the anime, they are intercepted by a new assignment to help the Tsuchigumo clan protect its forbidden technique. Kakashi takes Team 8 back to Konoha, while Yamato leads Team 7 on the mission. During the mission, Sakura helps fight the Magaki group and the villagers who are under Shiranami's control. Once Shiranami is stopped, Team 7 returns to Konoha. Pain's Assault Sakura is present when Naruto is informed that Jiraiya died while investigating the leader of Akatsuki, Pain. She defends Tsunade while Naruto blames her for his death, and then again when Shikamaru tries to get out of helping decipher one of the clues that Jiraiya left behind aware that Tsunade is grieving over Jiraiya. Sakura later then tries to help Shikamaru decipher the clue, but is interrupted by the invasion of Pain. Sakura heads for the Konoha hospital, along the way saving a group of civilians from Pain's giant centipede. She assists with healing the injured once she gets to the hospital, doing as much as she can despite there being more people in need of care than medics available. When Pain destroys Konoha, Sakura and the rest of the villagers are saved by Tsunade with the help of Katsuyu. Tsunade is exhausted by the effort, so Sakura looks after him while Naruto fights Pain. During the battle, Sakura senses Naruto entering another version 2 form as a result of Pain's attack on Hinata Hyuga. She has Katsuyu relay a message to the villagers to retreat to a safe distance while she treats Hinata. Naruto ultimately defeats Pain, and when he returns to the village, Sakura punches him for taking such a risk, and then embraces him as thanks. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha Sakura and Shizune stay with Tsunade as the village starts to rebuild. In the anime, they give Tsunade's various visitors updates on her condition. Five Kage Summit Sakura informs Naruto that Tsunade is in a coma and that there's nothing that can be done to bring her out of it. While they talk, they are approached by Tazuna and Inari, who have come to help rebuild Konoha. They ask about Sasuke, who which Naruto avoids going into detail about so as to spare them and Sakura a discussion about Sasuke's defection. 
After Tezuna and Inari leave, they receive news that Danzo Shimura has become the next Hokage, and that he has ordered Sasuke to be killed as a traitor. Naruto and Sakura approach Sai to ask how they can convince Danzo to change his mind, but Sai is unable to help. Omoi and Karui of Kumogakure overhear them talking about Sasuke, and they ask for information about Sasuke, wishing to kill him for his role in Akatsuki's capture of Killer B. This news upsets Sakura greatly to the point of tears, so Naruto leads Omoi and Karui away to spare her from further distress. In the anime, while watching over a Komoto Tsunade, Shizune confirms that she heard about Sasuke working with Akatsuki, which once again left Sakura on the verge of tears and hoping that Tsunade would awaken soon so the situation with Sasuke could be resolved. Sai later informs Sakura of the abuse Naruto suffered at the hands of Omoe and Karui, as he was unwilling to sell out Sasuke. He also informs her that Naruto has gone to meet with the fourth Raikage to try and get a pardon for Sasuke's actions against Kumo. Sakura cannot understand why Naruto would do all this, so Sai explains how he believes that it is because he has feelings for Sakura, and that he is still trying to fulfill the promise he made to her after Sasuke left the village years ago, which devastated her. Sai adds that his commitment to that promise and by extension Sakura caused Naruto as much pain as Sasuke does. Shikamaru joins their conversation to inform them of the rest of the Konoha 11's decision to personally eliminate Sasuke, so he can't continue to implicate Konoha in his crimes, nor present the risk of a war. Sakura tearfully agrees with this and insists to be the one to inform Naruto. She also made the others swear not to say anything to Naruto before she can, seeing it as her responsibility, while secretly she decides to handle the entire matter herself. Sakura forms a team with Sai, Kiba Inazuka, and Rock Lee and goes to the Land of Iron to search for Naruto. When they find him, Sakura attempts to tell him that she loves him and that because of this he no longer needs to fulfill his promise regarding Sasuke, who she claims that she no longer has feelings for. However, this enrages Naruto, who rejects Sakura by telling her that he hates people who lie to themselves. Sakura then insists rather angrily that it's true and that he should start worrying about himself rather than Sasuke. Naruto still doesn't believe her and informs her that he wants to save Sasuke for his own reasons, not for Sakura. Upset, Sakura departs, but when they're far enough away, she instructs her team to start looking for Sasuke. Her team tells her it would have been better to simply tell Naruto the truth about Konoha 11's decision, and that she's underestimating him by not doing so, but Sakura adamantly said she couldn't do it. When Kiba finally locates Sasuke, Sakura has him give her precise directions to where he is. She then attempts to knock out the team with sleeping gas, but is initially stopped by Sai, who has guessed that she plans to personally kill Sasuke. When he attempts to detain them on Kakashi's instructions, Kiba and Lee engage Sai, giving Sakura a chance to use her sleeping gas. She proceeds to where Sasuke is and announces her desire to join with him, even if that means helping destroy Konoha. To prove her loyalty, Sasuke instructs Sakura to kill the badly injured Karin. Sakura approaches her, contemplating how best to strike Sasuke, but is alerted by Karin that Sasuke is attacking her from behind with Chidori. Kakashi arrives in time to stop him, and, aware of what Sakura was planning, volunteers to be the one to kill Sasuke so that she won't need to, especially when he holds himself responsible for not preventing the situation as his teacher. Sakura heals Karin's injury and, in her unstable mental state, joins the battle. She starts attacking Sasuke from behind, but ultimately can't bring herself to harm him and cries at her own failure. Sensing her, Sasuke grabs her by the throat, takes her kunai, and prepares to kill her with it, but she's saved by Naruto. Sakura is shocked that she came close to being killed by Sasuke, and is further shocked as Sasuke confesses to killing Danzo, and plans to do the same to his former teammates and the village. After briefly fighting, Naruto and Sasuke talk and conclude that they're only suitable to fight each other, which they will do at some future date. Sakura is upset once again that her resolve isn't as strong as theirs, and decides to trust Naruto and Sasuke in fulfilling her dream of Team 7 having a happy ending. After Sasuke leaves with Tobi, Naruto passes out from the poison of her kunai, and a panicked Sakura gives him the antidote. Sakura then uses an antidote to wake Sai, Kiba, and Rock Lee up. After returning to the village, Naruto meets with the Konoha 11 as soon as they're back to tell him his decision, which Sakura defends when some of them accuse Naruto of being unrealistic but is concerned about Naruto and Sasuke's promise to fight to the death. When Tsunade finally wakes from her coma, Sakura goes around the village sharing the good news. In the anime, Sakura is later informed of the upcoming war against Akatsuki from Tsunade, and Sakura, while uneasy at fighting against Sasuke, is given the task to keep a watchful eye on Naruto during the war. Naruto the Movie, Blood Prison When Naruto is accused of trying to assassinate the fourth Raikage, Sakura is surprised and the only member of Team 7 to argue for his innocence. Despite this, he's imprisoned in the Blood Prison. Sakura is later part of a force sent to the Blood Prison to rescue Naruto, and while she's there, helps capture the escaping prisoners. Naruto is badly injured during the ordeal and Sakura is unable to heal him, forcing Ryuzetsu to save him instead with her Dragon Life reincarnation. Sakura then tries and fails to revive Ryuzetsu. 
When they get back to Konoha, Sakura asks Naruto if her earlier surprise was convincing, as the entire thing was staged. Power. In the anime, Team 7 is sent to investigate the attack on Tonika Village. They encounter Kabuto Yakushi and are forced to fight his reincarnated forces while he escapes. They fight Kabuto and his forces several more times, during one of which Sakura is knocked out by the Ninetales Naruto clone, but Kabuto is ultimately driven off. Road to Ninja, Naruto the Movie Sakura and the rest of the Konoha 11 successfully defend Konoha from an Akatsuki attack. When they return to the village, Sakura's parents, Mabuki and Kizashi Haruno, embarrass her with their concern for her safety. She meets with Naruto later to complain about her parents' protectiveness. As they talk, they're attacked by Tobi, who uses the limited Tsukiyomi to send them to a Genjutsu world, where their dreams come true. Naruto has his parents, and Sakura doesn't have hers. She enjoys it for a while, especially because her parents died saving the village and thus Sakura gets special treatment from the villagers, but eventually she starts to experience the loneliness of not having parents that Naruto has known for his entire life. Sakura is eventually kidnapped by Menma on Tobi's instructions and the Genjutsu world's Akatsuki is hired to rescue her. Sakura then saves Naruto from Menma, who in turn saves her from Tobi, thus breaking the limited Tsukiyomi. Back home again, Sakura rushes to her parents and hugs them, glad to be back. Paradise Life on a Boat In the anime, Tsunade sends Sakura, Ino, and Choji Akamichi to Benisu Island to pick medicinal herbs. Although the locals initially try interfering, Naruto is able to convince him to help instead. Fourth Shinobi World War Confrontation When the Fourth Shinobi World War begins, Sakura is added to the third division of the Allied Shinobi forces. Before the army is mobilized for war with Akatsuki, Sakura heals Might Guy, whose exhaustion mystifies her. The 3rd Division is called to assist the Surprise Attack Division, and when they arrive, Sakura recognizes the reincarnated Haku and Zabuza Momochi amongst the Surprise Attack Division's attackers. When Zabuza asks her how Naruto is doing, Sakura replies that he's well. Zabuza and Haku are forced to attack the 3rd Division, so they take up defensive positions, having encountered them before. Sakura advises those near her to take a Manji formation, when casualties start growing, Sakura heals the wounded. Sakura is eventually reassigned to the logistical support and medical division's compound to heal the wounded that are sent there. During the night, three medical nin are killed despite major precautions they took to secure the location, placing everyone on high alert. Sakura is approached by Morio during this time, who she recognizes as someone she healed earlier. He gives her a love letter, but she turns him down and explains that she's in love with someone else. He wishes her luck with her beloved and then leaves, but Sakura is saddened when she thinks about Sasuke. Neji Hyuga visits her after Morio leaves to discuss the suspected killer. When, during the conversation, Neji proves unaware that Tonton is a pig, Sakura recognizes him as the imposter and attacks him. The disguise disappears, revealing a white Zetsu. From the Zetsu's comments and previous reports she's read about its abilities, Sakura is able to determine how its substitute technique works and alerts the allied HQ. She and Shizune later perform an autopsy on the Zetsu's body and discover its wood-release capabilities. In the anime, during the following day, the medical division is attacked by several reincarnated shinobi and a scroll of dead allied forces is stolen. Sakura joins a team to go after them, and most of the reincarnated shinobi are sealed, but Hayate Gekko escapes with the scroll. She goes after him and fights him until Yugao Uzuki arrives to finish him off. Later, security at the medical division remains high, with nobody having an effective way of identifying disguised Zetsu. Two Zetsu eventually bypass bodyguards assigned to Sakura, though she is saved by the arrival of Naruto, whose Ninetales Chakra mode allows him to find and eliminate all the Zetsu. Fourth Shinobi World War Climax With the Zetsu army defeated, the allied Shinobi forces are sent to assist Naruto in his fight with Tobi. Along the way, Sakura vows to be there to help Naruto. When they arrive, Sakura heals Kakashi and Might Guy and then joins in the allies' attack on the Ten Tails. The attack fails, and many die in the Ten Tails counterattack, including Neji, which shocks and hurts Sakura. However, Naruto is able to give protective version 1 like cloaks to most of his allies in time. When Naruto is injured, saving everyone from Tenpenshi, Sakura heals him and encourages the other allies not to give up hope, even in the face of the Ten Tails tailed Beast Ball. They're saved by the arrival of the reincarnated fourth Hokage. The fourth thanks Sakura for healing Naruto, his son, and asks if she's Naruto's girlfriend. When Naruto suggests this is true, Sakura headbutts him and tells him to focus on the situation. Naruto complains she just gave him more injuries, and she retorts she will heal him again. Sasuke arrives shortly after the fourth, intent on joining the allies so he can protect Konoha. Sakura is surprised by Sasuke's sudden arrival and asks him of his intentions, and is dumbfounded, as with the rest of the Konoha 11, by his declaration that he will be Hokage. Naruto and Sasuke prepare to fight the Ten Tails, and Sakura, as she says she's not weak and will assist them as a member of Team 7, joins them. 
The now reunited Team 7 charges into battle with the Tentails army of clones. After charging her strength of 100 seals, Sakura is able to defeat many at a time and boasts that she's finally caught up with her teammates. Because there are too many Tentails clones, Team 7 each performs their own summons. Sakura summons Katsuyu and has it adhere to all the allies nearby so she can heal them remotely. While Naruto and Sasuke fight the Tentails itself, Sai asks Sakura if she trusts Sasuke. Sakura says she's happy he's back and she does trust him. Sai believes her words are truthful, but knows her smile is fake. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki When Tobi, real name Obito Uchiha, becomes the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, Sakura can only watch from a distance as Naruto, Sasuke, and the reincarnated Hokage fight him. Obito eventually recreates the God Tree, which absorbs the chakra of many of the allied shinobi forces. Sakura instructs Katsuyu to heal them, but Katsuyu explains that its divisions suffered the same fate as the shinobi they were attached to. To do what she can, Sakura runs over to Shikamaru and tries to start healing him. It is ultimately Naruto who saves Shikamaru and the others, remotely restoring the version 1 cloaks thought absorbed by the god tree. Tsunade then arrives, congratulates Sakura for the work she's done, and requests her help in summoning in an even larger segment of Katsuyu. Katsuyu dissolves across the battlefield, allowing Tsunade and Sakura to constantly rejuvenate everyone as they unite against Obito. Although Obito is defeated, Madara Uchiha and another Zetsu still remain. The prolonged fighting exhausts Tsunade and leaves Sakura and Shizune with little chakra to spare. When Gara brings Naruto to them, in need of emergency life support following the removal of the Ninetales from his body, Sakura boards his desert suspension to lend whatever support she can. When her normal medical ninjutsu fails to do anything, Sakura makes an incision in Naruto's chest and manually pumps his heart to keep him alive, while pleading for him to live because he is so close to achieving his dream. Gara brings them to the fourth Hokage so he can seal his half of the Ninetales chakra into Naruto but the chakra is intercepted by Black Zetsu. When Madara, the Ten Tails new Jinchuriki arrives, Kakashi uses Kamui on Sakura and Naruto to get them to safety in Kamui's dimension. They are shortly afterwards joined by Obito, who has decided he wants to help Naruto. Though wary of Obito, Sakura allows him to seal the Nine Tails chakra he took from Black Zetsu into Naruto, thus saving his life. Naruto goes back to fight Madara when he regains consciousness, leaving Obito with Sakura. She calls Obito an enemy for killing many of her comrades, but she's willing to help him as thanks for saving Naruto. Obito asks Sakura to destroy his Rinnegan, explaining it's the only way to guarantee Madara doesn't use the infinite Tsukiyomi. Before she's able to do it, Madara arrives in Kamui's dimension and Obito sends Sakura away so Madara can't kill her. She explains what happened when she regroups with Team 7 and tries healing Kakashi after Madara stole his eye, but Naruto instead gives him a new one. As they wait for Madara's inevitable return, Sakura questions Sasuke about what he meant when he said he would become Okage, but receives no answer because they have a war to worry about. Sensing Madara coming, Kakashi reminds them of their first lesson as Team 7, the importance of teamwork. When Madara is brought back by Black Zetsu using Obito's body, Sakura launches the first attack. She is stabbed with a truth-seeking ball and is saved by Naruto, who grabs her, and Sasuke, who cuts the rod Madara stabbed her with. Sakura is saddened because she thinks Sasuke is not concerned about her. Madara, now in possession of two Rinnegan, ascends into the sky and despite Naruto and Sasuke's attempt to stop him, casts the infinite Tsukiyomi. Kaguya Otsutsuki strikes. When the world around them falls to the infinite Tsukiyomi, Sasuke uses his Susano to shield Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi from its effects. Sakura asks what's happening, but is saddened when Sasuke tells her she doesn't need to know because she can't do anything about it. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world in trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts, and that only Team 7, as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, who transfers him from Obito's body to convert him into Kaguya Otsutsuki, Black Zetsu's true master. Kaguya, the origin of Chakra, now has access to the Chakra supplies of everyone trapped in the infinite Tsukiyomi. She wants Team 7's Chakra as well, so she transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Kakashi grabs Sakura, ties himself to an unconscious Obito with a scroll, and pins Obito to a wall in order to save them. Sakura is sad as Sasuke explains to Naruto that he only saved Sakura and Kakashi earlier because they happen to be near Naruto, and he's willing to sacrifice his comrades if it means ensuring that he and Naruto will survive to save the world. However, Naruto retorts Sasuke still saved them subconsciously, and Sakura is thankful to Naruto for this. The heat causes the scroll to burn up, but Naruto sends a shadow clone to catch them. Because only Naruto and Sasuke can defeat Kaguya, they are forced to watch from a distance. Sakura is mortified when Naruto uses his sexy reverse harem technique on Kaguya, and then mortified again when it works. 
Kaguya eventually relocates them to her ice dimension and then banishes Sasuke to another, separating him from Naruto. When Obito regains consciousness and is caught up about what's been happening, he offers to help retrieve Sasuke and requests Sakura's help. Naruto's collaborative clone attack forces Kaguya to retreat to her desert dimension, where Obito secretly follows, taking Sakura and a Naruto clone along by sinking his Kamui to it. Kaguya, believing the clone to be the real one, and that he's alone, attacks it and manages to dispatch it before returning back to the ice dimension. The plan ends with Kaguya seeing an alive Naruto in the ice dimension. With Kaguya out of the way, Obito begins piercing through her various dimensions with Kamui while Sakura heals the stress this causes to his body. They finally locate Sasuke, but Obito is unable to keep the portal long enough for Sasuke to run into it. Sakura collapses from exhaustion, but is caught by Sasuke, who explains he used Amino Tejikara to switch places with Sakura's flak jacket, before thanking them. Obito teleports them back to the dimension where Naruto is and sacrifices himself to save Naruto from Kaguya. Despite his death, Obito's spirit is able to briefly return to allow Kakashi to use Susano, which he uses to save Sakura from one of Kaguya's attacks. When Kaguya creates an explosive truth-seeking ball to finally kill them all, Kakashi, realizing that this is their last opportunity, forms a plan of attack. Kakashi pierces through her. Naruto uses Shadow Clones to exhaust some of her countermeasures, and Kakashi uses Kamui on the rest. Sasuke moves closer to her in order to place a seal on her, and when Kaguya tries to escape, Sakura punches her. Kaguya is defeated, the tailed beast balls are removed from her body, and she is trapped alongside Black Zetsu with six paths, Shibaku Tensei. As Sakura and Naruto panic over how they're going to get back home, the Sage of Six Paths summons them all back from Kaguya's dimensions and congratulates them for their victory. The Sage of Six Paths explains how Naruto and Sasuke can end the infinite Tsukiyomi, but Sasuke has plans before that starting a revolution by killing the Tailed Beasts and Five Kage, which he believes will change the world for the better. Sad and angry, Sakura pleads with him, acknowledging that there's literally nothing that she can do to change his mind, but asks if there's some part of him that cares about her and is willing to return to her. He once again tells her that she's still annoying before knocking her out with a genjutsu. Kakashi scolds Sasuke for this by saying Sakura's love for him is only hurting her heart. When she finally wakes up later that night, Kakashi tells her that Naruto and Sasuke have gone to have their last fight. They locate Naruto and Sasuke the following day at the Valley of the End, both having lost an arm and unable to move. As she heals them, Sasuke tries to speak to her, but she tells him not to so she can concentrate on healing them. Guilt-ridden, Sasuke apologizes to Sakura for everything he's done, and after exclaiming him with criticism, she tearfully accepts his apology and Team 7 comes back together for good, smiling and laughing. Blank period. After the war, Sasuke is pardoned for his crimes based on the good word of Naruto and Kakashi, who has been selected to become the 6th Hokage. Sasuke leaves Konoha to wander the world on a journey of redemption, and Sakura asks him to wait until his prosthetic arm is finished, but Sasuke declines. Sakura then offers to come with him. He again declines, explaining that his journey is one of atonement and that she has no part in that, leaving Sakura disappointed and gloomy. He then pokes her head, promising to see her again, and thanks her, and Sakura blushes at the realization that he is returning her feelings. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky A year after the end of the war, Sakura is part of a Konoha platoon sent to the Blood Prison in anticipation of an attempted jailbreak by the Ryuha Armament Alliance. When they get there, Sakura helps collect passengers ejected from the approaching Tobishachimaru and then, after the Tobishachimaru crashes nearby, heals the survivors. Shikamaru Hiden, a cloud drifting in silent darkness. Two years after the end of the war, Naruto talks to Sakura about Shikamaru Nara's recent cold behavior. She reminds him that Shikamaru is working hard in preparation for Naruto someday becoming Hokage, causing Naruto to wonder if he's worth whatever trouble Shikamaru is going through. When Shikamaru later goes missing in the Land of Silence, Naruto and Sakura join a combined Konoha and Suna coalition sent to rescue him. By the time they arrive, Tamari is in combat with a brainwashed Sai. Sakura punches Sai away from Tamari and then heals Tamari's injury. After Shikamaru is saved and his mission is completed, Sakura is part of a force that stays behind to help the Land of Silence stabilize. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the end of the war, Sakura notices Hinata Hyuga working on a scarf to give Naruto for the Rinne Festival. Sakura encourages her but warns her that Naruto may not have a real grasp of the love Hinata has for him. To that end, Sakura orchestrates some opportunities for Hinata and Naruto to spend time together but due to Naruto's lack of understanding about love, none of them work. Shortly afterwards, Hinata's sister, Hanabi Hyuga, is kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki, and they're assigned to a team sent to rescue her. They follow Toneri's trail to a cave, and when they enter it, they are trapped by a genjutsu. In the movie's novelization, Sakura quickly identifies her dreams of Sasuke as just that, forces herself awake, and wakes up the rest of the team. 
At the end of the cave, they find the Gatekeeper, the creator of the Genjutsu, which Sakura, Shikamaru, and Sai join forces to destroy. When they exit the cave, they find themselves in the middle of a vast landscape. What they later learn is the interior of the moon. While resting after a day of exploring the nearby ruins, Hinata voluntarily joins with Taneri, and Naruto is badly injured by Taneri while trying to stop her. Sakura spends three days of around-the-clock care to heal him, during which time Naruto talks in his sleep indicates to Sakura that he now shares Hinata's feelings. When he wakes up, Naruto visits Sakura as she recovers from her exhaustion, thanks her, and expresses his fears that Hinata fell in love with Taneri. Sakura reassures him that Hinata's feelings for him are too strong to change so suddenly, and that she must have had some reason for going with Taneri. She further says she believes Naruto's crush on her was due to his desire to defeat Sasuke, whom she loves. When Sakura is ready, they storm Taneri's castle. Sai and Sakura go looking for Hanabi, while Naruto and Shikamaru go looking for Hinata. While rescuing Hanabi, Sakura finds the tattered remains of the scarf Hinata made for Naruto, which she gives him when they regroup. Taneri is defeated, Naruto and Hinata express their feelings for each other, and the team returns to Konoha. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love, riding upon a spring breeze. After the fourth Shinobi World War ended, Sakura assisted with healing those injured and displaced by the conflict. Although the adults recovered quickly and were put at peace by the end of hostilities, children struggled to recover from the stress of the war and the deaths of those they knew. In order to help them with this, Sakura and Ino Yamanaka opened a clinic within the Konoha Hospital that would assess and treat children's mental health. The program proves very successful, in part because Sakura works tirelessly to make it so, a dedication that worries her friends. Two years after the war ends, Sakura and Ino travel to Sunagakure to help the village lay the groundwork for its own mental health clinic. Along the way, Ino tells her about the romantic relationships that their peers, Ino included, are getting involved in, causing Sakura to wonder about her long-distance relationship with Sasuke. In Suna, Sakura and Ino are called before Gara, who informs them of a man matching Sasuke's appearance and chakra signature that is evidently planning to destroy Konoha. They insist it has to be someone disguised as Sasuke, but can come up with no practical explanation for the man having Sasuke's chakra signature. Hoping to keep Sasuke's apparent plans a secret, Gara asks Sakura to personally inform Kakashi of the plot against Konoha. Sakura and Ino do so as soon as they return to Konoha, and Kakashi shares their belief that it is an imposter. When, several days later, rumors of this imposter's actions start to spread, Kakashi sends a message to Sasuke to ask if he knows anything about it, though Sasuke doesn't reply. Sakura becomes concerned about this and confides in Naruto, who hypothesizes that Sasuke finds the rumors too ludicrous to give them any attention. Naruto's words put Sakura at ease. She meets with Tsunade to discuss possible ways of mimicking another person's chakra signature, and comes up with a theory of somebody extracting Sasuke's chakra from his skin and hair samples that have been gathered in large amounts. Sakura runs into Sai afterwards, and she tells him her theory, which, based on information he came across during his own unrelated investigation into Kido Sumiki, believes to be true. Because they are all evidently working on the same case, Kakashi makes a team. Ino dubs them Ino Sakusai. While returning from interviews regarding Kido and his personal Anbu, Sakura comes across what is apparently Sasuke being arrested. She realizes after she approaches that it's a Genjutsu, but is injected with a drug that renders her unconscious before she can get away. Sakura wakes up to find herself bound and imprisoned. She tries to break out, but the drug she was injected with hinders her strength and chakra. Kido comes to visit her soon afterwards, explaining that he wants to draw Sasuke out with news of her kidnapping due to their romantic relationship. Once he's captured Sasuke, he'll kill Sakura to strengthen Sasuke's Sharingan, in turn making Kido's planned synthetic Sharingan more effective. Sakura keeps Kido engaged in the conversation while she gathers enough chakra to break free. Having finally seen the Sasuke imposter, she tells Kido of its many minor flaws that make it inferior to the original. When she's ready, Sakura breaks out of the basement, through the floors above, and finally onto the roof with a single cherry blossom impact. Outside, she meets Sai and Ino and teams up with them against Kido and his men. Sakura is drawn into a fight with the Sasuke imposter who chokes her using one of Kido's synthetic tailed beast cloaks. Sakura breaks free, and as she beats him unconscious, warns him to never impersonate Sasuke again. She regroups with her teammates and decides to find the rest of Kido's henchmen, but find them defeated by fire and genjutsu, and they realize that this is Sasuke's doing, and he had just disappeared. Although saddened he didn't at least say hello, Sakura is happy that Sasuke does care about her enough to rush back to the village to save her. After turning Kido over to Ibiki for interrogation, Sakura resumes her duties and decides to wait for Sasuke's return, which she believes is imminent so she can talk to him. The final page implies that Sasuke returned to the village to be with Sakura, as he says, I'm home, Sakura. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. While looking for a present to give Naruto and Hinata for their wedding, Sakura finds a picture frame she thinks would be perfect. 
Eno finds the exact same picture frame at the exact same moment, and their fight over who will buy it causes both of them to be expelled from the store, neither of them able to purchase the picture frame. Eno blames Sakura for what's happened, insisting Sakura's unnatural strength and large forehead make her uncouth and, more particularly, unlikely to ever be married. Sakura is deeply insulted by the accusation and challenges Ino to a cooking competition to prove that she would make a good wife. Sakura and Ino make their own soldier pills. Sakura puts pudding, Ino's favorite dessert, into hers so that Ino will have no choice but to approve of her recipe. When she meets Ino the next day, however, she finds that Ino wants to use Choji Akamichi as an impartial judge. Choji samples each of their soldier pills and finds them so delicious that he starts putting them into his mouth by the handful. He soon collapses to the ground with blood running from his nose. Both suspect that the other poisoned their soldier pills, so they sample them in order to identify the poison and thus save Choji. Neither can taste poison, but they do taste their favorite desserts. Ino loves the pudding in Sakura's, and Sakura loves the Anmitsu in Ino's. Choji gets up soon afterwards, having recovered from his blood sugar overload, and he praises both of their soldier pills. Sakura and Ino reflect on their like-mindedness and how their competitions always push each other to be better. They therefore decide to go shopping together, helping each other find a better gift than the picture frame. Sakura later attends Naruto and Hinata's wedding by herself, but thinks about Sasuke traveling elsewhere. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise Sakura is summoned into Kakashi's office, along with Naruto and Sai, about the disappearances of Kumo and Kiri Shinobi. Sakura informs Kakashi that she had been doing some research on her own, and she discovered several Konoha Shinobi have disappeared, including a family friend of Ino's. When Kakashi tells him that Sasuke is investigating the disappearances, Sakura reacts with anxiety at the mention of his name due to her being frustrated towards their long-distance relationship. Konoha is attacked, and Sakura and the others discover the attackers are the missing shinobi who are under a genjutsu. The ringleader of the assault is Ino's family friend, Taidachi. Sakura helps Naruto, Sai, Hinata, Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji deduce that the shinobi will explode upon being injured, so they come up with a new strategy. Shikamaru uses his shadow imitation technique, and Hinata uses her gentle fist to render them motionless. Ino tries to use her mind-body switch technique on Taidachi, but falls under a genjutsu trap. Aoba saves her, but both pass out. Sakura heals them, as well as the rest of those injured in the attack. When Sakura learns Sasuke captured the ones responsible for the events and helped change their ways to repent, Sakura, although being tired of waiting for Sasuke to come home, is proud of him for how much he's accomplished to redeem himself. Sakura is mentioned in a letter written by Naruto and given to Sasuke while he's on his journey. In it, Sakura compares his current duties of protecting the village from the shadows to that of his childhood dream of joining the Konoha military police force. It is Sakura's words in the letter that compels Sasuke to decide to return to Konoha and be with her. The end of the novel strongly implies that they reunited sometime afterwards, as Sakura says, Welcome home, Sasuke. New Era When Sakura and Sasuke begin dating, they had their first date overlooking the ocean, though it only lasted for two and a half minutes. Four years after the war, Sakura, now pregnant, accompanied her husband Sasuke on his traveling, as she refused to leave his side. When she went into labor, Sasuke brought her to one of Orochimaru's hideouts and had Karin help with the delivery. Sakura gave birth to their daughter, Sarada, and returned to Konoha with her family. Afterwards, Sakura and Sasuke raised their daughter together for some time, but he left the village on a mission to investigate Kaguya, leaving their daughter with few memories of him. When Sarada asked about Sasuke, Sakura assured him that he loved Sarada. Promising that he'd come home after completing his mission, Sakura poked her forehead. Eventually, she became director of the medical clinic and its top healer. She also began giving separate lessons to Genin in medical ninjutsu. At the time Naruto became Hokage, Sakura watched his inauguration with Sarada. Later, Sakura attended a Five Kage summit with her husband, who informed the Kage about uncovering evidence of Kaguya forming a new White Zetsu army in order to face some greater threat. Agreeing to keep this information secret and wanting to safeguard the future for their daughter and the new generation, Sasuke continues his wanderings as he tries to find more information using his Rinnegan to inspect other dimensions. Academy Entrance Arc in the anime, as the village began getting constant attacks from an unknown culprit, Sakura treated a Konoha purification plant worker who had his chakra drained in the Konoha hospital. When the culprit behind the attacks was revealed to be Sumire Kake, a unit was deployed to apprehend her. The rogue student unleashed Nue onto the village. While Kakashi organized the unit to defend from its attack, Sakura worked with a unit to treat the injured. Sarada Uchiha Arc in the anime, Sakura is about to go on a trip with Ino, but as Sakura begins to leave, she realizes that a patient's teddy bear, which she brought home with her so that she could sew it, has not been picked up yet. Sakura promised to return the bear that day, but Sarada promises that she will do it for her. Later, Sakura and Ino go to the seaside cliff where Sakura and Sasuke went on their first date. Ino asks Sakura if Sasuke contacted her. Sakura says no, wondering what Sasuke is doing at the moment. 
Later that night, Sakura arrives home and asks Sarada if she returned the teddy bear, with Sarada commenting it was easy. Sarada asks Sakura how her trip was, and Sakura calls it wonderful. As Sarada's graduation from the academy approaches, Sarada starts asking Sakura about Sasuke with greater earnest. Sakura struggles to answer questions about Sasuke's childhood in order to hide his past from Sarada, leading Sarada to question if Sasuke and Sakura are even married. This upsets Sakura and she punches the ground, which then inadvertently destroys their house. Sakura faints from the realization of what she's done. She later wakes up to find herself in the care of Shizune, who informs her that Sarada has left the village to look for Sasuke, and also tells her about Sarada's doubts on her parentage. After chuckling at her daughter's recklessness, Sakura goes after her. Sakura arrives in time to save her family from Shin Uchiha, rupturing his organs in the process. Sakura apologizes to Sarada for not being more open with her, but Sasuke insists that he's to blame. A creature then teleports her and the two Shins to his hideout. There, Shin holds her hostage and asks her to transplant the organs from his injured son into him, which she refuses. While Shin is performing the surgery himself, Sakura is disgusted about his philosophy regarding his clones, and declares that he has no idea what it's like to be a real parent. When the surgery is completed, Sakura reveals that she was pretending to be a helpless hostage to get information on Shin for Sasuke, and she begins fighting him. When Sasuke arrives, he saves Sakura and pulls some scalpels out of her, and she thanks him. After the clones stab Shin, Sakura stands in front of Sarada as they prepare to attack, but Sarada launches herself towards them and subdues them with her strength. With the fighting done, Sakura hugs Sarada and expresses relief that she is alright, before confirming that they are biologically related. Sasuke accompanies them back to Konoha and spends some time with Sakura and Sarada, even posing for a family photo that their home had been missing. Sakura and Sarada see him off as he leaves Konoha again. When Sarada becomes sad, Sasuke hugs her and pokes her forehead, promising to return as Sakura looks on with a smile. Sakura then gives him a prepared lunch and hopes for a kiss in return, but he departs without further comment while smirking, depressing Sakura as she waves goodbye. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day During the new Konohagakure holiday, Parent and Child Day, Sakura had to spend much of her time at the hospital. Later that day, she found to her shock that Sasuke had returned to the village. He discussed with her his problem in connecting with Sarada. Sakura noted that having spent much of Sarada's life away and only hearing stories about Sasuke and his various exploits, Sarada had probably become disillusioned at who Sasuke was as a person and his attempts at being a doting father seemed lame. Ultimately, Sakura suggested that he should approach Sarada more like Sasuke's relationship was with his father and brother back in the day, just enjoying the time they have together and talk about their goals. Later that night, the Uchiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. Graduation Exams Arc In the anime, Sakura noticed Sarada's lack of excitement over going camping, and her complaints about Boruto reminded her of her own complaints about Naruto during their academy days. When Sarada's class began preparing for the Genin exams, Sakura joined her daughter to discuss her progress and future goals with Shino. Versus Momoshiki Arc Several months later, when Sarada leaves to train for the upcoming Chunin exams, Sakura sees her off. Before she goes, Sarada notes that Sakura must be happy since Sasuke has come back to Konoha, to which Sakura replies that Sarada must be the happiest. Later, during the exam's final matches, Sakura watches with Tamari and Ino, cheering loudly when Sarada wins her first match. The finals are interrupted by an attack from Kinshiki and Momoshiki Yotsotsuki, who proceed to destroy the stadium. Sakura punches the falling debris above her, causing a shockwave strong enough to destroy it to protect herself and the other spectators. After Kinshiki and Momoshiki kidnap Naruto, Sakura heals Hinata, who is badly injured in her failed attempt to save him. When Boruto prepares to join Sasuke in rescuing Naruto, Sakura carries Hinata to him so she can reason with him. However, seeing Boruto reminds Hinata, like Sakura, of a young Naruto, so she allows him to go. Naruto is successfully rescued, and life returns to normal when he gets back to Konoha. As Sarada and her team leave for a mission, Sakura watches them with Sasuke. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc in the anime, when Mitsuki seemingly betrayed the village by attacking two gate guards, the village was put on lockdown. Sakura was in charge of treating the injured men. As one of them began to recover and show signs of regaining consciousness, Sakura gave the report to Yurito to be delivered to the Hokage. Meanwhile, Boruto and Sarada left the village without authorization to find Mitsuki. When Hinata was worried about the consequences of their children's actions, Sakura insisted that they knew what their actions could lead to, but still had faith that it would be okay. Later, Sarada joined Boruto in retrieving Mitsuki, who had apparently betrayed the village. When the Genin returned, an angry but relieved Sakura hugged her daughter as a welcome. Time Slip Arc After Sasuke helped in delivering Shukaku safely back to the village, he was given some downtime. While Sakura was happy to have her husband back, she was dismayed by how little time he had spent at home. Regardless, she decided to make his favorite dinner to welcome him home. 
Meanwhile, Sasuke and Boruto were sent back in time to shortly after Sasuke's defection, past Sakura bumped into the two. Fearing changing the future from interacting with his future wife, Sasuke decided to keep his distance. Sakura noted how similar Naruto and Boruto were, which the two bluntly denied. Later, Sakura joined her friends in helping Boruto and Naruto clean up a bathhouse to make up for the commotion that Naruto and Jiraiya caused there. Days later, as Sakura was returning home for another grueling session of training with Tsunade, she bumped into adult Sasuke. He quickly apologized and rushed off, dropping a piece of paper in the process, a letter from Sarada. Sakura looked at the contents. While it was revealed to be a letter with the message smeared too much to read, Sakura made out Sasuke's name written on it. Suspecting that Boruto knew something about Sasuke, she decided to confront him about it. Boruto, nervous about being found out, simply said he knew a different Sasuke than the one she knew. While seeing that he was hiding something, Sakura decided to drop the subject with Boruto, instead finding the stranger's teacher to ask him directly. She later found the mysterious man battling an unknown assailant alongside Boruto and Jiraiya, who was after Naruto. When Sasuke's efforts proved futile thanks to his continued fatigue and the foe's strange abilities, he tackled the man into the river with him. While the man emerged unharmed but fuming at Sasuke's interference, Sakura fished Sasuke out of the river and hid him while using her new medical ninjutsu to treat him. Eventually, Sasuke awoke, accidentally addressing her by name. As she began to ask him questions, her efforts to heal Sasuke overtaxed her and she fainted. Sasuke gently laid her down before going to help his allies. Days later, after Urashiki was defeated and Sasuke and the others were discharged from the hospital, Sasuke and Boruto were ready to leave. Before they could, they were approached by Sakura again, still determined to learn the stranger's connection to Sasuke. As Sasuke fumbled to find an excuse, Jiraiya chimed in, giving an elaborate story about how they were avid fans of him and wanted to train under him, hence the injuries. Sakura ultimately accepted the story, finding the traveler strange. Before leaving, Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase Sakura's memories, along with everybody else in the past, of the recent events to protect their timeline. After Sasuke and Boruto returned to the present, Sasuke found his wife sleeping at the table waiting for him. After she awoke and greeted him, she decided to make him some food, to which Sasuke warmly thanked her. Kara Actuation Arc In the anime, when Team 7 was defeated by Deepa, the Genin were brought back to the village for emergency care. As Sakura worked on Boruto, Shizune worked on Sarada. After a successful operation on both Genin, Sakura voiced her complaints for the mental impact of the defeat on them. Three days later, Sarada and Boruto disappeared from their respective rooms in the hospital. Sakura, however, quickly deduced that the two would meet up with Konohamaru and Mugino, who were ready for a mission to investigate Kara. To her relief, however, the children merely wanted to voice their trust in the older ninja to handle the mission while they would stay behind and commit themselves to grow stronger with hard training. Later, as Sarada sought intense training from Sasuke, Sakura watched from afar with concern for her daughter. As she continued to observe the grueling conditions her daughter was going through, Sakura confronted her family. She voiced her concern that Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she couldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother baby her so refusing to see why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. Alone with her husband, Sakura admitted that as a mother, she couldn't handle the thought of Sarada being injured again like she did. Likewise, she feared the path that Sarada could potentially walk if she were to acquire the Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke insisted that as parents, they have to prepare Sarada as much as possible for the world, and that she is as strong as they were back then. Unable to fully accept Sasuke's view, Sakura was left depressed. Later that night, Ino and Hinata decided to take Sakura out on a girls' night to talk but they insisted that as mothers themselves, they too feared for their children's well-being, but they have had to have faith that they were strong enough and could endure. Ino insisted that Sakura, as a child, had drive that pushed her forward, and Sarada inherited as much from Sakura as she did Sasuke. Ino's words managed to cheer up Sakura. The following day, Sakura decided to oversee Sarada's training personally. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. She forced Sarada into a sparring match with her, quickly overwhelming her. She pointed out Sarada's biggest flaws. Sarada's chakra control was still underdeveloped, quickly burning through it in her various actions and unleashing it randomly when attacking. This affected both her combat performance and development of her Sharingan. Sarada's second problem was that her resolve was still too frail, fearing defeat. Determined to break past her limits, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic the movements and general timing of Sakura's attacks to reach a standstill. As Sakura criticized her recklessness, she was proud to see her inner strength was like Sakura's, deciding to put Sarada through the same grueling training Tsunade did to improve her chakra control. Kawaki Arc While buying flowers at Yamanaka Flowers for Sasuke's imminent return, Ino disapproved the idea of a husband who was almost never home, to which Sakura responded that she only wanted him to return to the village safely despite feeling lonely at times. 
When Sarada came to ask Sakura about her forehead seal, she explained it and revealed that it had existed since the age of the Sage of Six Paths. She also revealed Sasuke was returning home when Ino suddenly trembled upon sensing a sinister chakra near Naruto, much to Sakura's shock. Sarada left the shop, telling Sakura that she was going home. Later, when she was on her way back from the flower shop, Sakura found an injured Sasuke who teleported behind her on the road, again shocking her. She took him to the hospital and proceeded to heal him, saving him from his critical injuries. As Sasuke and Naruto made a full recovery, Sarada and her team were treated as well due to making a daring rescue of Naruto. Sarada explained to her parents how during their battle against Boro, it was only thanks to a strange new evolution of Boruto's Kama that they were able to defeat him. She noted that Boruto not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sasuke, but Sakura told her daughter to rest. Later in the anime, after Ishiki Otsutsuki was defeated at the cost of Sasuke's Rinnegan and Kurama, Sakura aided Katasuke in testing Naruto's body for any remaining traces of Kurama and its capacities, only to find none. While Sakura was dismayed to admit this, Naruto firmly chose not to wallow over it, feeling that Kurama would ridicule him for it. Chunin Re-Examination Arc In the anime, Konoha held another Chunin exam. Sarada was one of four Chunin promoted by the end of it, much to Sakura and Sasuke's joy. Satsuna Uchiha Satsuna Uchiha was a member of the Uchiha clan during the reign of the second Hokage. He was also a member of the Konoha military police force. Satsuna was an Uchiha shinobi who had doubts about the second Hokage. He planned to reclaim power from the Senju clan, Shisui Uchiha. Shisui, renowned as Shisui of the Body Flicker, was an Anbu from Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. Graduating from the academy during the Third Shinobi World War, Shisui was placed on a Genin team alongside his best friend. Immediately after the war ended a year later, Shisui witnessed his friend die on a mission, consequently awakening the Mongekyo Sharingan as he felt responsible. A year later, he met a five-year-old Itachi Uchiha whom he became best friends with while the two formed a brother-like bond. A year afterwards, Shisui began drawing attention as a Genin, garnering the name Shisui of the Body Flicker for his usage of the Body Flicker technique. Two years later, living with his parents as a Jonin and breadwinner for the family of three, Shisui's bedridden father stopped recognizing him due to his decline of health from falling ill as a result of him losing his leg in the past world war. Acknowledging that everyone dies someday, Shisui was prepared for his passing. In the anime, Team Shisui was assigned a long mission, in which they were tasked with chasing away Kirigakure forces being led by Ao. The team completed their mission after Ao realized that they were facing Shisui and had his team retreat. When Itachi began to act oddly, Shisui was instructed by the Konoha military police force to monitor Itachi because the younger Uchiha's position in Anbu was instrumental to the Uchiha's future status in Konoha. Unbeknownst to the clan, Shisui in reality sympathized with Itachi, not wanting the Uchiha to go to war with the village. As the Uchiha continued to grow angrier and more violent from the distrust of the village due to the suspicion of their involvement in the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, Shisui approached Hiruzen Saratobi, revealing the truth to the third Hokage. Trusting Shisui, seeing as he is Kagami Uchiha's descendant, Hiruzen allowed the Uchiha to spy on his clan for the village. Shisui was perplexed that the clan could not deter the coup d'etat that they were planning and soon became greatly concerned with the consequences that would follow their actions. Ultimately, it was decided that Shisui would use his Koro Amatsukami on Fugaku Uchiha to subtly end their coup d'etat plan. Later, as Shisui prepared to make his move, Danzo Shimura, believing that simply manipulating the Uchiha's leader wouldn't end the conflict and that he would eventually try to manipulate him as well, chose to take Shisui's eyes for himself in the desire to protect the village in his own way. While Shisui effortlessly subdued Danzo at first, the ruthless elder caught Shisui off guard by using the forbidden Izanagi with another Sharingan already in his possession to break free and steal Shisui's right eye. As Danzo and his men surrounded Shisui to take the left eye, he managed to escape. Fearing that Danzo was right in Shisui's inability to stop the Uchiha's revolt and that the elder would continue to pursue his left eye as well, Shisui entrusted it to Itachi telling him to protect both the village and the Uchiha name. Shisui wrote a suicide note telling his clan he cannot follow through with the coup d'etat, but his clan's narrow-mindedness made them unable to understand this, preventing them from understanding his desire for peace and reconciliation. The contents of the suicide note also made it appear as though he had crushed his eyes when jumping off a cliff into the Naka River to kill himself in order to prevent conflict from arising over his eyes within the clan. At the same time, he was able to erase his existence, leaving no corpse behind. In the anime, Shisui was also hoping to use his death to awaken Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan, and succeeded in the goal. 
Having been a core member of his clan, his suicide demoralized and lessened the Uchiha's fighting power. Throughout his lifetime and even in death, Shisui influenced Itachi greatly as a friend in teaching him self-sacrifice and how a true shinobi must protect his village from within its own shadow. This possibly influenced Itachi in his future actions, to the staving off of a possible civil war within the village that may have escalated into a world war. Shisui's effort to erase his very corpse was successful, as even Kabuto Yakushi noted that he was unable to locate it in an effort to reincarnate Shisui for the Fourth Shinobi World War. Despite leaving a note claiming that he was tired of carrying out the clan's duties, the police suspected that Itachi had murdered him and used his Sharingan to forge the suicide note, since suicide was very unlikely for someone of Shisui's character. Using Shisui's death to his advantage, Itachi later told Sasuke Uchiha that he did kill Shisui to awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan, and forged the suicide note, all in an effort to motivate Sasuke to kill him as repentance for his crimes. Even years after his demise, Shisui's powers and actions left their mark on the world. While Danzo used the eye he stole for his questionable agendas to maintain their village, Itachi kept Shisui's other eye to honor his friend's final request to protect the village and their clan's good name. Inserting the eye into a body of a crow, Itachi made final arrangements to implant the bird in Naruto's body, as a countermeasure against Sasuke if he ever learned the truth behind the Uchiha clan's demise and attempted to destroy Konoha. However, due to the immense power that Shisui's eyes held, they were eventually destroyed to prevent them from falling into enemy hands. Danzo destroying his eye in his final moments to keep Tobi from acquiring it, and a reincarnated Itachi after Koro Amatsukami was used on him incinerated the crow. But Itachi also stated that above all else, Shisui wanted someone to inherit his will and ideals, believing Naruto to be that someone. Taiko Uchiha Taiko Uchiha was a character in Jiraiya's novel within Tsunade's Infinite Tsukiyomi Dream. Taiko and his fellow comrades notoriously established order in Konohagakure under the orders of his lieutenant Sasuke, with Taiko enjoying the villagers fears a lot. However, when he violently attempted to arrest an old woman, he was interrupted by the Hokage's son, Naruto Uzumaki. Seeing his lieutenant being intimidated by his old friend's duly acquired strength, Taiko tried to ask him about what to do, to which Sasuke ordered him to act more independently. Soon, Taiko and his fellows realized that letting the Hokage's son go led to the police force losing respect among the villagers, so they took it upon themselves to break into the Hokage's home to settle things, which ended in a failure and was deemed by the police force's leader Fugaku an idiotic behavior. All the while, Taiko assured to have acted for the clan's sake before being brought into custody. Some time later, while Konohagakure was imprisoned by Nagato, Taiko was ordered to secure the civilians alongside the rest of the police force. Tajima Uchiha Tajima Uchiha was a member of the famed Uchiha clan during the war-torn era, preceding the era of hidden villages. Initially a father of three sons, Tajima lost three of them in battle against the Senju, and was left with Izuna and Madara at the time of his introduction. He made an appearance on the battlefield alongside his son Izuna after finding out that his other son Madara was meeting with Hashirama Senju on a regular basis. Thinking along the same basis as his nemesis, Butsuma Senju, he and Izuna attempted to take advantage of Madara's meeting with Hashirama to eliminate another Senju. When he was greeted by Butsuma and Tobirama Senju, the Uchiha noted that they thought along the same lines as he prepared to draw his Tonto. Tajima tried to attack Tobirama, intending to use his death to shake Butsuma's resolve so he could gain an advantage over him, but his attack was foiled by Hashirama. After Madara admits to being weaker than Hashirama when Tajima asked his son whether or not he was ready to join the fray, the Uchiha reluctantly retreated, and though he was not able to gather any intel on the Senju in this endeavor, Tajima was pleased nonetheless that this situation had allowed Madara to awaken his Sharingan. Teka Uchiha Teka Uchiha was a Konohagakure shinobi from the Uchiha clan and an officer of the Konoha military police force. He, Inabi, and Yashiro questioned Itachi about the suicide note that was found with Shisui Uchiha. After presenting Itachi with the alleged suicide note that Shisui had written, asking him to request that the Anbu investigate the matter as well. As the men began leaving, he warned Itachi not to hide anything, as they also had connections within the Anbu. The men were then attacked by Itachi, and fed up with him, they asked Fugaku to issue the order for them to arrest him. However, after Itachi apologized, and Fugaku offered up the excuse that Itachi had been worn out by his duties, the men left. Tekka and the rest of the clan were later killed during the Uchiha clan downfall. In Book of Dark Knight, Tekka sensed the disappearing chakra signatures throughout the clan's compound. Before he could leave his home to investigate, he was confronted by Itachi. He attempted to catch Itachi in a genjutsu, but was overpowered by the much stronger genjutsu of Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan. Itachi stabbed Tekka in the stomach and watched him die. Teaki Uchiha Teaki Uchiha was a citizen of Konohagakure and a member of the Uchiha clan. 
Teaki, along with his wife Uruchi, were the owners of the Uchiha Senbei shop, a renowned shop within the Uchiha compound. His shop had been in the family since the rise of Konoha. The recipe of the Senbei that gave the shop its fame was a secret passed down through the generations that was closely guarded by Teaki. He encouraged Sasuke to be a great shinobi on his own, instead of emulating his older brother Itachi. He and his wife were later killed during the Uchiha clan downfall. Uruchi Uchiha Uruchi Uchiha was a citizen of Konohangakure and a member of the Uchiha clan. She and her husband were renowned as small bakery owners located in the Uchiha compound. She was one of the many people in the Uchiha clan who encouraged Sasuke to be like his big brother, Itachi. She and her husband were later killed during the Uchiha clan downfall. Yakami Uchiha Yakami Uchiha was a member of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan and the Konoha military police force. As a member of the police force, he assisted Fugaku Uchiha in his duties. That's all that's known about Yakami. Yashiro Uchiha Yashiro Uchiha was a member of the Uchiha clan and the Konoha military police force. Yashiro, alongside Teka and Inabi, went to question Itachi about his absence from the clan meeting that was kept the night before. He then told Itachi that they had no intention of treating him any differently because he was an Anbu and his father Fugaku had stated that he would watch over him. As Yashiro questioned Itachi about Shisui Uchiha's death, presenting Itachi with Shisui's alleged suicide note, telling him that they had analyzed and confirmed the handwriting to be his, he stated that he hoped that more evidence would turn up. As Itachi accosted them for their words, Yashiro cautioned Itachi that he would not go unpunished if he betrayed the clan, before being violently attacked by Itachi. As Yashiro questioned Itachi about how he had changed since becoming an Anbu, Fugaku appeared and accosted Itachi for his actions. Fed up, the three men asked Fugaku to issue the order to arrest Itachi, but after Itachi apologized, Fugaku claimed that Itachi was simply worn out from his duties and the men left. In Book of Dark Knight, Yashiro was a major conspirator in the Uchiha clan's plans to overthrow Konoha's government. He secretly received information from the masked men, which he fed to Fugaku in order to encourage him towards a coup, unwilling to take any of the responsibility for himself. On the night of the Uchiha clan downfall, Itachi snuck into Yashiro's home, killing his parents, his wife, and his son. Yashiro fled to save himself. When Itachi caught up, Yashiro tried to place the blame on the masked man, causing Itachi to reveal that the man was now helping him wipe out the Uchiha. Realizing he had been manipulated by the man, Yashiro offered to call off the coup, and when that didn't work, he begged for his life. Itachi used Tsukiyomi on Yashiro, causing him to experience days of torture in mere moments. When Yashiro was no longer able to speak coherently, Itachi cut off his head. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.